welcome to the exhilarating world of RC racing at Mid-America Outdoors, where passion, precision, and cutting-edge technology converge to create an experience like no other. As the engines roar to life, these skilled drivers showcase their unwavering dedication and mastery of the miniature racing universe. The technological advances in RC cars have revolutionized the racing landscape. From advanced suspension systems to precision engineered motors, every aspect of these miniature machines is meticulously crafted to provide unrivaled performance on the track. Speaking of tracks, the design of the RC racing circuits are a marvel in themselves, and today's track is no different. Featuring hairpin turns, high-speed straightaways, and challenging obstacles, this elite track here in Jay, Oklahoma is the largest it's ever been, providing the perfect canvas for drivers to showcase their prowess. Add in the fact that there's $30,000 on the line, and there's sure to be some adrenaline-fueled drama. So gear up, charge your batteries, and get ready to witness the heart-pounding action as the best RC racers battle it out for all the glory and a whole lot of green here at Visions Off-Road presented by A-Main Hobbies and HPI Racing. It is race day, ladies and gentlemen. Ken Stout with you here, Mike Garrison sitting alongside, and Scotty Ernst down there uh, with all of our drivers. A beautiful overhead shot there of that racetrack. Hey, you ready to go, brother, man? We have a lot of money on the line, baby. Well, we are ready. We are ready. <laughs> we saw some great racing yesterday in the qualifying action, and now uh, it's main day. It's it's the big day. The big money's on the line. The racers are ready to go. Are we ready to go? Yeah, you. Uh, I'm ready to go, man. I'm, I'm, I've had a couple cups of coffee. I need to step away from Fire, the coffee pot, right? Fired up. <laughs> Good stuff as well, man. Looking forward to this one. Uh, can't wait to get get the cars out here and find out how this all shakes down. Three A mains will be settled here today, as we talked about. Thirty thousand dollars in total purse, five thousand dollars to win the overall, another five thousand dollars for a bonus, fifteen hundred to win an A main. I mean, a lot of money up there, and they're going to be scrappy for sure. Oh, absolutely. We were talking to some of the drivers this morning, and like they said, you know, it's like yesterday. Yeah, we're kind of playing nice, trying to make sure we get our qualifying positions in and all that. But as we just talked about, the punches are coming out today. They're going to do what they got to do. Uh, and it, the gloves are off. It's it's serious racing, serious business today for the money on the line. Now the third member of our team is Mr. Scotty Ernst. He has been busy all weekend long. What do you got for us, buddy? All right, thank you very much, Ken and Mike. I appreciate it. As you said, the stage is set. I'm coming to you from your track side, and no doubt about it, Mike said the gloves are off. Elbows are going to be out for sure today with all the money on the line. Big money for the invite division. Some of the best in the world, some of the top ten ranked, including the number one ranked driver, Dakota Fenn. They're all going to be going at it for big cash, and we're going to bring it to you lap by lap, play by play. We look forward to it. Back to you, Ken and Mike. Thanks a lot, Scotty. Yeah, and we'll find out how Dakota Finn does. He's yet to stand on top of the box for any of our qualifiers here that we've seen out here so far this weekend. So <laughs> he uh, definitely has plenty of competition, no doubt about that. Absolutely. I'm not going to say that he uh, has had a bad week so far by any means, but uh, definitely not uh, not what we quite expected out of Dakota Finn, the, uh, the newly crowned Roar U.S. national champion. As you can see, a great shot there. And off to the left, you see all those hay bales there. That's our A-Main Hobbies HPI Racing Try Me Track, which was packed with people yesterday uh, getting to not only watch the RC action, watch some of the best in the world. They grab a uh, controller and, and get after it themselves. Track is a little bit larger than it was one year ago, the debut of this particular event, as you can see there. You can see the demo track off to the left-hand side. That was actually just below that on the other side of that building there that, uh, of course, HBI and uh, A-Main Hobbies is taking care of. So they've extended our track over to that area, so it is a fair amount larger. Uh, something that uh, was announced there earlier this morning as you take a look at the big track out there. That is where the uh, Travis Pastrana and Nitro Rally Cars will be competing. They already had UTVs out there this morning a little bit earlier for the weekend. Uh, Mid-America Outdoors, this is the complex that we are at, 1,600 acres. And that track just built here literally a few weeks ago, designed by Travis Pastrana. But uh, Mid-America Outdoors had their side-by-side -side battle going on out here Tuesday. Wednesday, unfortunately, rained out. Thursday and Friday, all of that has been settled. The Pro-Light trucks are out there, the Pro-Turbos, the Pro-NAs. So they are all battling the entire time. What you can't see here, I mean, you look way in the back over there, but uh, way out in the back over there is a pond 
where they were doing some jet ski uh, stunts back there a couple of nights ago. There was also side-by-side rock bouncers doing some racing back there. There was a bull riding rodeo off to the far right-hand side, top right-hand side of your screen. They actually had bull riding over there. Then it was followed up by a concert with Tim Montana. Way out in the back on the left-hand side behind the trees, Ultra 4 has been throwing down. I mean, it is going on. And never mind, we haven't shown you the lazy river in the pool yet. So there's there's any something here for everybody. It's an incredible complex. Well, looking at the RC track here, our track builders this weekend from the Dirt Racing, Joey Christensen, Aaron Webb, they built this RC track based off of the big track behind him. You can see the rally cross track back there. So the RC track kind of mimicking the big rally cross track in the back. Just a phenomenal facility all the way around. Fantastic job to uh, to everybody at all these different events for putting this all together. Of course, the Robinette family for bringing this to Jay, Oklahoma, and this, uh, this mecca of motorsports. All right. Uh, Scotty is down with Spencer Rivkin. He is ranked 14th in the world and 5th here in the U.S., certainly one of the players out here this weekend. Scotty? All right. Thank you very much, Ken. We're here with Spencer Rivkin, team associated driver from Surprise, Arizona. Spencer, all on the line right now. Three main events coming and a whole lot of money on the line. Yeah, no, I'm sure uh, we're all pretty excited for it. Um, it's The track's been really, really fun to drive on. It's super, super close. Um, yeah. Last year was pretty nuts. I'm sure this year is going to be even crazier. So I'm glad that you guys have a lot of cameras around the track for the spectators to see behind the camera. And yeah, my stuff's working good. Uh, everyone's enjoying themselves. They're putting on a good program. It's beautiful out. Uh, no complaints. This event is unlike other ones that we do in our hobby uh, with the money on the line and the lap races. Does that uniqueness make it even, does it elevate it more to the prestige of it? Well, I mean, of course. I mean, when you start putting money on the line, everyone starts getting a little bit more greedier, a little bit um, more elbows out, so to speak, um, which is fine. Um, it does add a lot more chaos, I think, but I think it's fun at the end of the day. It's sure there's money on the line, but we all do it because we like it and love it. I'm um, sure money's cool, but at the end of the day, we race each other every week, so we don't want to make any enemies. Um, yeah, I think it'll be fun. All right, best of luck to you. Yeah, thank you. All right, there you go. Spencer Rivkin, team associated driver, one of the top in the world, get ready to have a throwdown here at Visions. Matt Kiyu, Ken and Mike. Yeah, he finished up sixth overall here a year ago. He was on the podium at the 2023 Roar Nationals this year, the two-time world champ, two-time uh, eighth-scale uh, national champ. I mean, he's a player, no doubt. Absolutely, and there's the big lazy river that you're talking about, <laughs> the pool, the playground, the whole Later today, yards. what do you think, man? Uh, that's what I, I'm saying. Tubing. If it goes quiet on this broadcast, you guys know where to find us. We'll be in the lazy river. <laughs> that is exactly right. Uh, plenty of eats and drinks there. So, yeah, it's a great place. Uh, by the way, on the located on the left-hand side, those are cabins that people rent out and stay on the property at. There's a whole bunch more other than those. The better part of a 1,000 uh, motorhome spots uh, will be at this place as well, a lot of those with hookups. So people come out here and make an entire week of it for sure. Well, it looks like we're getting set to go here. A good shot on the driver's stand of our first main event here for the day. This is going to be our open e-buggy C-Main. These drivers getting set to go here. Yeah, we're going to work our way through the alphabet soup, if you will. Kind of like the chili bowl, if you will. And of course, uh, the alphabet soup there starts off with like a M or N main with some 350 midgets at all battle for that uh, prestigious win in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and of course we're about an hour outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma, but yeah, enough cars here to work our way back down and have a C-Main here in the open e-buggy category. Once again, let's get it back down to Scotty Ernst. He's with the man that is ranked number one in the world, the Phenom. Scotty? All right, we're here at Trackside with Dakota Fan, ranked number one in the world. It's main event day. Everything's on the line. Yeah, now's the, now's the day to make it happen, and uh, it's not a crazy long race, but we have a little bit of time and a pit stop and stuff, so I think just going to try to uh, stretch it there in the beginning and uh, come in a little bit later and just try to get a little bit of track position, position. With the way this track is designed, you're flat out, full throttle all the time. Fuel economy is going to play a part. Yeah, definitely. Um, everyone's been struggling on mileage. I think everyone can make it fine now. It's just everyone's going to be coming in the same lap, so if I can uh, go a couple laps longer and uh, try to make up some time, put some hot laps down, and uh, maybe get up a couple positions higher. You have a unique uh, situation here with your wife being your mechanic down in the pit lane. That's got to be uh, add a special uh, specialness to this event. Yeah, it's cool. We uh, normally don't just come out here ourselves. Normally it's, uh, it's a whole group, so it's cool just to have a 
have a small group, just me and my wife, and uh, just hanging out, having a good time. And, uh, yeah, well, uh, she knows how to get it done in the pits. So. All right, best of luck to you. Cool, thank you. All right, so there you go. You got number one ranked in the world. He's ready to go with his wife, Chloe. That's the team for TLR here at Visions. Back to you, Ken and Mike. I've got to tell you, man, if I'm starting deep in one of those A mains and I can make it without a fuel stop after lap one, I'm coming in, topping off, I get completely out of the pack, and then I rip as hard as I can on a clean track, provided nobody else to, you know goes with that same uh, strategy, if you will. But that is certainly the, something that's going to play into effect here with that mandatory pit stop. Really curious to see how that goes because you want some clean track. So the undercut and the overcut, as they refer to it in IndyCar anyways, will certainly be a big part of the strategy out here today. Well, looking here at our open EBC main lineup, we've got Cole Ogden starting first, Garrett Martin starting second, Tyler Noon third, Graham Hill, Reggie Tongue, Creed Nally, Jacob Vigil, Santos Rodriguez, Barry Rowe the third, and Shelby Parker starting your top ten. These drivers getting set to go, taking some warm-up laps here, getting all checked in. Jonathan Noon, Scott Brewer, Trey Ford, and Blake Everett finishing up the grid here. This will be a five-minute race here for these drivers. And, of course, uh, the difference here will be electric cars. All the uh, all the hardcore fans certainly understand that. Anybody that's chiming in and uh, watching here for the first time, they have both electric and nitro-powered buggies out here as they'll roll across here and find their starting positions on the front straightaway. Well, the top three finishers out of these lower mains will be bumping up, so your top three will bump up into the B main, and we'll see them race once again. Yeah, so as you talked about the C main here, then they'll bump into that B main, and of course the goal is to get up into the A main, which will be the overall winner. <clears throat> Taking care of the starting positions there, as you can see. These cars, uh, as we talked, uh, chatted with, with Dakota Fend a little bit, and uh, the E cars, just a tick heavier than the Nitro cars. The Nitro cars may be a bit more... Uh, adjustable as well as you were documenting because of the brake bias that is available, if nothing else. So maybe you can dial the car in a little bit better, but uh, don't think for a second that these things aren't quick. I mean, they are right there in lap times. Absolutely, absolutely. The uh, the e-buggies, are, are they've really come on the scene here in the past 5, 10 years or so. And uh, quite frankly, the, they're, the maintenance level of an uh, electric car compared to the nitro buggies is so much easier. So on a local level of racing, you'll see, tend to see a lot more electric cars these days than you do nitro cars, kind of depending on where you are in the country. But uh, electric buggy is definitely uh, definitely making a name for itself. So I've got a chance. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me have it. One of those nitro engines. I'm sure I could ball that up pretty quickly. Good look at the driver's stand there. All the drivers getting set to go here. Once again, this is our open e-buggy C-Main. Top three finishers out of this one will be moving on to the B-Main. We'll see them race again. There's Graham Hill, the Miyako driver. Everybody in position, and our starter will be Sean Miller. All the cars lined up on the grid. Looks like Cole Ogden going to be sitting this one out, not going to run that e-buggy here today. Yeah, interesting, right? We constantly talk about track time, seat time, but um, maybe wanting to just focus there on the nitro car. Oh, a little quick jump of the start, but checked up. I don't think he advanced anything. Oh. In fact, if anything, might have lost a little bit. Trouble step right out down. of the gate. We've not talked about that step down. It's provided plenty of challenges for a lot of different drivers there as we keep an eye on it here. Well, it looks like it's going to be Garrett Martin out front leading the way. I believe that is going to be Graham Hill. May I oh. oh, Graham making a mistake there. Tumble. Oh, boy. Everybody getting bunched up now. Yeah, so important, too. I mean, this is a C-Main. If you don't get up into the top three, like you were talking about, your weekend is done right here in this particular category. Well, here they come back around on that left-hand side. Garrett Martin started out front. He's still out front. Tyler Newton in the number two spot. Reggie Tongue up in the number three spot. Reggie Tongue, a big mover there as he started a good bit deeper than that. So, nice job for him on that opening lap. Now everybody's settling in just a little bit. Carrying enough speed, you can really pitch him in. There's a left-hander we were talking about that was a bit rough a day ago. Certainly has been groomed. A lot better right now. 
The step down will develop a hole as well as they land those uh, better part of seven-pound buggies down there on the dirt. Yeah, and Reggie's in a tricky spot right now because he's in a bump spot here in the number three spot. He looks like maybe just a tick faster than Tyler working his way around the track, but does he take the risk of trying to get by Tyler, or does he just settle in where he's at? they got a pretty good, comfortable lead over Vigil in the number four spot. All three are going to be bumping up. There you see Reggie whipping it big over the side double there. And just yeah, I say that. Yeah, but I felt like he lost a little bit of uh, time whenever he did that. He so. did. He did. I was going to say. Another bobble right there. Tyler starting to stretch it out just a bit on him here. Yeah, certainly uh, with Graham Hill back there behind him, he needs to stay on point. But I do agree with you. I mean, that's something where you want to monitor the, you know, that spacing behind you. No point in putting yourself in a danger zone. If they give it to you, they make a mistake, you take it, okay, that's great. But if not, keep your nose clean and just finish this thing out. Just about three minutes left inside of this one. Well, Reggie Tongue, he's got Graham Hill trying to close the gap up there behind him. Last time by the line, Reggie had a 29-1. Graham had a 28 28- Four. So Graham. Three quarters of a second are the better part of. Three quarters of a second. That is a chunk. Reggie went a little wide there up on top of the berm. Here comes Graham Hill in the yellow, black, and white. Mayako buggy onto the right side he goes. Yeah, it's a good battle here for this transfer spot. Reggie Tongue better get on point here and see if he can pick up a little bit of a little bit of distance. Running a dump, couple different categories as well. Reggie's had a lot of seat time out here. Of course, as you mentioned a couple times there, Mike, former NFL player. Really good at catching cars when they run off the track. He's very good at catching cars when they <laughs> run off the track. Midair, there he is right there, Reggie Tongue. Techno RC driver, running for Beach RC and J Concepts as well. And you said uh, former safety position, correct? I believe, yes, uh, former NFL safety. I saw him go uh, running across the infield just the other day. He still has some pretty good moves. It looks like uh, Graham dropping back just a little bit from Reggie now. So, Reggie, a little bit of breathing room with a minute 45 left to go. Reggie in the pink and white buggy. Graham in that yellow, black, and white up for the double they go. Garrett Martin uh, out to a 2.7 second lead on Tyler Noon. First and second, kind of on cruise control here in this one. Reggie getting a little bit of that back. He put a 28, uh, 28-8 on the board with a 29-7 by Graham Hill, so everything that Graham gained, he lost there in uh, the next couple of laps. So that gap staying about the same here. Clock counting down here, just about down to one minute. And this C-Main. There's Tyler Noon, our second-place driver, as he works his way on the left-hand side of the track. Yeah, top couple of guys here have yet to make a bobble, doing a really nice job here, staying consistent. Reggie trying to uh, close that gap up, maybe just a little on second once again. Looks like Graham has dropped back a bit. Graham is now going to be yeah, 1.7 seconds back, which as we do, maybe more than that now. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened to Graham that lap around, which we talked about yesterday. 1.7 seconds in everyday life is not very much, but on the racetrack, especially a fast track like this, that's a lot of time to make up. Yeah, in many cases, insurmountable, right? I mean, uh, it's just the way this sport is separated by hundreds and tenths of a second. 15 seconds left to go here. We're looking at our race leader. That is Garrett Martin. He started in the number two spot. Cole Ogden sitting this one out, so I guess technically you'd say he started in the number one spot. He's looking to go for a tone-to-tone win here into this one. Putting together a nice clean lap. Clock down to zero. This will be it. He's got one corner to go. Well, Garrett Martin has done it. Open E-Buggy C-Main win for Martin. He's moving on to the B-Main. Here comes Tyler Noon and Reggie Tung. That's your top three right there. Garrett Martin, Tyler Noon, and Reggie Tung moving on to the B-Mains. There's all the drivers coming off the track. A good shot at pit lane there. There's Garrett Martin's techno buggy taking the win. Tyler Noon taking second, Reggie Tung third. Graham Hill just shy of the bump spot taking fourth. Barry Rowe the third, routing out your top five there. There's our results from that one. Martin Noon, Tung, your top three, bump it up to that B main. We'll see them again, Ken. Yeah, congratulations to those top three. Great job there. Graham Hill uh, getting close here a couple times, just could not uh, finish it off. But everybody from fourth place on down, their weekend is done here at 2023 Visions for this particular category, an e-buggy. 
loaded up with great, great drivers. So um, great to see them come out here and, and have some fun. And as we talked about, a lot of times they would use this category for some seat time, if you will, track time, if you will, uh, to get out here and, and really get honed in on the nitro side of things as well. So uh, a lot of the players in there will still be alive, just they'll have to do it with a nitro buggy. Some highlights here from that last race. Of course, Garrett Martin there, you see, jumping out to that early lead. Had a little trouble right off the bat there. Never looked back after that, though. Start to finish win. We will take a quick break here. We'll be back as we are off and running on race day. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. conditions. Maxxis Tires. Tread victoriously. Speedsport has been America's motorsports authority since 1934. Get news, results, and commentary from experts in the business covering all forms of motorsports from flat track to nascar and everything in between bookmark speedsport.com on your mobile device now or follow speedsport on social and be sure to subscribe to the speedsport daily speedsport is your one-stop shop for all things racing on two wheels and four And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2023 RC Racing and Visions Off-Road, brought to you by A-Main Hobbies and HPI Racing. It is race day here, big money up on the line. We've been talking about that because it is worthwhile. Of course, uh, we are working our way through our mains as we speak. We had the e-buggy C-Main, and now this will be the Sportsman e-buggy B-Main. Yes, yeah, so another group of guys here. Top three out of these guys going to be going to that Sportsman E-Buggy A-Main. Lining up here in this one is going to be Jason Morey, Francis Sosi, Ian Morey, Brian Johnson, Steve Collins, Peyton Lamb, Jeff Crane, Justin Turner, and Jake. Everybody working uh, their way in. A little warm-up session there if you've just joined us or maybe you're watching for the first time. They give them uh, a little bit of time there for a couple of warm-up laps and then pull them into their starting positions, as you can see outlined, marked there. On the front straightaway, the driver is just up there on the platform, just below on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. That is pit road. That's elevated as well. And there's a look at the drivers elevated up one more story. It is a perfect area. They, uh, they're at least in the shade and able to see that entire track. Very, very good. So it's an awesome place. Now this is going to be a good race here between these sportsman drivers as they all want to make it up into that sportsman A main. They are off and underway here. Jason Morey going to be leading us out. Oh, man, a couple of cars way up there high off into the tubes there in turn oh, number one, and no. the chaos continues. Jason Morey making a mistake there. 
The sportsman categories are interesting. There's no doubt, especially the outlap whenever they're racing. Oh, a little overshot that one a bit and landed in the end zone. I believe that is going to be Sosing that took over the number one spot. Wait and see when they come around here. Maury dropping back to the number three spot. No shortage of contact, that's for sure. Not intentional. Oh, that was Ian Maury. So Jason and Ian Maury, father, son. Ian starts third on the grid, moves up into the number one spot. Now, oh, tumbling there. That was Peyton Lamb in second. So now it's Ian and Jason, one and two. Pretty cool when they get out there in the dust area and you see them hit the throttle. All four tires digging hard. Another pass back there. Made in the back, I should say, after that left-hander. So, Maury and Lamb Maury, uh, as you talked about there, but the position's ever-changing very quickly. Yeah, Jeff Crane in the number four spot right now. Justin Turner in that five spot. Goodlett, Johnson, Sosing, and Collins rounding out in our field here with 3.50 left to go in the B main. Top three drivers out of this one bumping up to that A main. We'll see those drivers again. Yeah, so, uh, so Ian and Jason both with a shot at moving up into that A main as it stands here currently. Peyton Lamb there in third. That may have been Peyton right there in third. I could be wrong. Trying to get it. Oh, gathered back up and then did not clear that double. Went for another ride. Ended up inverted. As the Morris continue on here, doing a nice job. And I think a situation there where uh, Jason, by the way, has taken over the point. And Ian now in second place. Ian trying to get it gathered back up. There's still a lot of racing time here with three minutes to go. And we've talked about it here. We've watched the progression of the sportsmen where they kind of settle in. And towards the end of yesterday, you could see them getting in a rhythm, getting in a groove, doing a nice job. But then when you throw in the, uh, the tension of a real race, and the pressures that it takes to move up in the A main, that changes everything again. So not quite as skilled as our open and invite drivers, and it doesn't take much to get offline here. Uh, Jason Morey doing a good job right now. He's back to the front here. He started the number one spot, leading us out. Ian Morey in the number two spot. The father-son combo there. Justin Turner in the number three spot, that final bump spot. But he is only 1.3 seconds ahead of Goodlett right now. So we're looking at that battle for first and second. They've stretched it out here about eight seconds over third. Yeah, both in a really safe position. No reason to push it here. Just run within your limits. The real battle, as you talked about, is back there for that transfer position to Justin Turner and Francis Sosi. Right now, Ian's following, uh, following Dad around, waiting for Dad to make a mistake and take over that number one spot. Boy, that's tricky. That'd be a long car ride home if you uh, you tangle up with Dad and take him out. And <laughs> yeah, you take both of yourselves yeah, out of exactly, that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would not be a good moment. Stranger minute, things have happened, though. The yes, indeed. Minute 35 left to go. Here we're looking at Justin Turner in the number three spot, I do believe. He works his way on the left side. You see Francis Sosing trying to close the gap up on him with only a minute 25 to go. Oh, trouble there. Yeah, Sosing has closed up. He was five seconds behind, now about three seconds behind. Massive gap between second and third, about 10 seconds. Sosing with a little uh, buffer as well, back to fifth with another three-second gap. Really the best race on the track goes back to uh, sixth and seventh, separated by a half second, but neither one close to a transfer spot. One minute left to go here in this one. I believe Sosing may have just changed up into that number three spot, if I'm not mistaken. I think Turner dropped back to the four spot just so we switch back over here. Yeah, Sosin, uh, no question. I mean, closed way up in there at one point across the stripe there in that previous lap, just a half second back. So Sosin, as you talked about now, does, as they get things sorted out just before that double, but Sosin does jump up into that final transfer spot. About 25 seconds left to go here in this one. Jason Moore, Ian Morey. Oh, trouble there for Jason. So Ian Morey now taking over the number one spot. Jason in second. I believe that was a lap car there with them. So that is not a battle for position. And you can see that left-hander once again starting to rut up. It's getting a little bit rough. The first ones to find it, it seems, will be the the sportsmen. They get a little bit offline or or just can't get around those ruts. The pros seem to be able to drive around. You see them get up on the bike and upset the cars. Well, time is going to expire. Here they come down the front stretch. Ian Morey is going to do it. He's going to take the win here in this one. Jason Morey second. 
We'll see if Francis can come around and lock in that third and final bump spot into the A main. Oh, it's a battle right here. These two drivers, oh, trouble right there. That is going to be Francis Sosing taking it in the number three spot. Justin Turner having all sorts of trouble over the double there as he tries to reel him in. When we talk about this being a family sport, that's uh, one of the things that's so cool about it. So, I mean, right there, making a, making a memory, right, for Ian and Jason both uh, transferring up into that A main. Congratulations to them. They'll both be smiling. Great moment. Francis Sosin staying very, very determined. Was a good bit back there behind Turner for a while, but stayed focused and took that final transfer spot. Yeah, Justin Turner rounding out uh, the top four there, followed by Brian Johnson, Peyton Lamb, Jake Goodlett, Jeff Crane rounding out the field here in this one. Steve Collins not out there. And once again, we'll give you a quick little highlight reel here of what we just saw, that B main for the Sportsman E-Buggy category. Just getting warmed up here with a lot of big races yet to come. We're here at Mid-America Outdoors. We'll take a quick break here, and we'll be back with more racing. Stay with us. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. The rest of the market has been trying to follow our lead ever since. But a head start is a head start. Run with us. Welcome back to Mid-America Outdoors. We're in Jay, Oklahoma, just outside of Tulsa. 1,600-acre complex here for Mid-America Outdoors. Jason Robinette, Gala, his wife, and the entire staff here have invested millions and millions, and they allow us during this massive weekend, really it's a week-long event uh, known as Visions, to build a world-class RC track as well. As you can see, a lot of work goes into this. We appreciate everything that Joey Christensen and the Dirt Crew do. Uh, also had some rain that came in yesterday. It put them to the test here once again, but boy, what a beautiful, beautiful racetrack. Yeah, these guys did a fantastic job. This racetrack designed based upon the uh, the big track, of course, that we see the uh, Nitro Rallycross cars on. And uh, as always, Joey doing a fantastic job and his crew. And like you say, yesterday the rain came in a bit. We thought, I thought we were going to be down a lot longer than we were, but the track crew got the track right back up and going, and we were uh, running before we knew it. Yeah, of course, the sun came out here as well, and in Oklahoma it does not take long to dry things out. So we were able to get in most of the program. We had a couple of qualifiers left over that we tagged on to the front of today's program, and uh, other than that, it all went really, really well. So 
A good event here once again. They had some practice time on Thursday. We did qualifiers a day ago, finished those up this morning, and, of course, today is race day. B-Main for the Open Nitro Buggy category will be next on the list. And, Ken, this is going to be our first longer race of the weekend, a 20-minute race here for these drivers. Top three out of these will move up into the open Nitro Buggy A main. Some stiff competition all the way down here in the B main as well. We've got eight drivers in this one. Yeah, of course, uh, as you know, I'm pretty new, pretty green to this style of racing. I've been around a lot of racing the past 25 years in my career, but pretty new when it comes to RC racing as we take a look at our lineup here courtesy of visions off-road what are some of the longer distances or times i should say for racing in this industry how long do they go well the longest race you're probably going to see is a world championship race which is an hour long and i tell you what an hour long race up there and you're pitting every you know say seven to eight minutes that's there's a lot going on for an hour long race but typically you're going to see you know in a regional race or something like that uh, or sportsman class open class like this 20 30 minutes is a it's a pretty standard nitro main for for an a or b main and i would have to think given the the fact that i mean we have world ranked drivers out here so they're going to work a lot of strategy in especially in an hour-long race like that obviously as you talked about 20 minutes here they're going to need to make pit stops but do they uh, do they work the math on that strategy to know if you're starting in the back of the pack maybe you have an option to come in and pit early or pit late and get out of the traffic oh absolutely absolutely they've got uh you know the pit crews and the teams and all that kind of stuff they really think that kind of thing out because that could be a big part of it and and uh, try to keep from getting bunched up in the field and a lot of times it's kind of on the fly you know you'll see these guys if they're kind of caught up in traffic and they're trying to get through traffic but they're struggling a bit pit crew will bring them in and and make a pit stop it gets them out of that mess and then uh, when they come back out of pit lane they'll either be uh, clear track is the idea behind it yeah, one of the questions uh, that popped up online is Ty Tessman here. The answer to that is yes. Ty Tessman is here. Of course, uh, great job last year. Finished second overall, currently ranked sixth in the world. So an absolute shooter when it comes out here. We'll have a shot at that, the big money here a little bit later on today. The reigning champ is the wizard, Jared Wiggins. Uh, you did mention... Uh, A little bit earlier, though, unfortunately, one of our drivers uh, has laid up a bit sick. And Jared Tebow, I believe it is. Yes, indeed it is. So will not make the call. Was here uh, all weekend long, but will not make the call here today. So we wish him the best. Hope he feels better very soon. That looks like uh, one driver having a little bit of trouble there in the warm-up session, trying to get the car back started. Not now, not now. Yeah. (laughs) And again, this warm-up session uh, has come to an end, so they'll bring them back around here, top them off with fuel, and get them on the starting line. You can see all the mechanics, the pit crew headed out there. Basically how these nitro buggy starts work, if you are new to RC or just joining in, they bring them over here to our our pit crew. The pit crew is going to hold them there, and those are called starter boxes. Basically those boxes have a big wheel on them that comes underneath the chassis and actually hits the flywheel and that wheel turns over the engine and gets it started so they're sitting on the starter boxes just in case they were to uh the engine dies or anything like that you see they're going to top them off with fuel just before the race gets started they will set them down and quiet basically what that means is the cars go down and everybody sits there and then when the flag goes up we're off and underway see part of our staff over there outside of the fence with the cameras so uh bringing you some great live streaming action we will also cut this into a tv show that will air on speed sport one in the near future and that's a big flag right there that that is a real big flag (laughs) so we'll have a checkered flag here we'll know exactly where that finish line is we are ready to go racing though cars are all running ready to set them down they'll hit the throttle and it is on 20 minutes and length here we go A great shot right there as we get off and underway here for Open Nitro Buggy B Main. 20-minute race, top three drivers going on to the A Main. Surprisingly fairly clean start here. I was just going to say, I mean, in comparison to the sportsman uh, race that we saw just a moment ago, the chaos not near as bad, but that is the difference in skill level right off the bat. These guys are able to hit their marks. Well, it looks like Blake Everett starting the number one spot. He's going to be leading us out here in this one. Rodriguez second. Oh, trouble there in the infield. No sooner did I say that, a couple of them go inverted, right? I said guys, by the way, don't want to uh, exclude Katie Roxbury, who came across the stripe in third. 
Yeah, Katie in the number three spot. In that oh, 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 up in the bump two up spot. In the second round. Yeah, nice job there. Oh, more chaos there right there at that transfer spot. So now it will for sure be on there for that third and final spot. Yeah, Barry Rowe jumps in there into third place, and Rodriguez right behind him, less than a second. Vigil, by the way, three-tenths behind him. So, yeah, good battle right here for this final transfer spot. Long ways to go. Yeah, a lot of racing left to go for these drivers. Just getting started, but like you say, Barry Rowe, the third, up into the final transfer. Rodriguez in that number four spot. Oh, good pass right there. I believe that was going to be Vigil. Oh, Vigil oh going and he goes jumps up right two. up in there. Wow, gets a twofer, right? Wow. Just when I was thinking it might be a good time to pit, get out of the chaos and run some good clean laps, but does a great job, picks his way right back forward. Well, only two minutes into this one. A little more than 18 minutes left to go here. Blake Everett is trying to check out early on. He's got a 2.3 second lead over Katie Roxbury in second. Rodriguez showing in third. Vigil in fourth. Barry Rowe in fifth. Vigil now up to the number three spot. I'd be curious to know what the pit window is for these cars. Uh, I do know that we talked to Ryan Mayfield towards the beginning of the weekend, and he felt like a seven minute hit would be right at the edge because they're on the throttle so long this track is very fast and wide open throttle a good portion around these uh, this track so they're burning a lot of fuel yeah these drivers definitely going to make two pit stops here in this one i'm going to venture to say just to be a bit on the safe side probably going to go right around the seven minute mark a few drivers might be able to go a little bit further than that but they're probably not going to push it we did see brandon rose run out of fuel during his qualifier yesterday so uh, with two laps to go, right? I mean, so that's how close it is. You know, Blake Everett still out front here. We're looking at Katie Roxbury in the number two spot. Oh, Jacob Vigil in the number three spot. Jacob making a little mistake there, spins it back around. As he's trying to close the gap up on Katie for the number two spot. Katie Roxbury, mechanic and pit for Jared Wiggins, her boyfriend. Of course, last year's Visions RC champion. He's a big part of the uh, Techno RC program as well. There you see Katie up on the driver's stand. Yeah, super cool that she's in uh, in that or in the sport as well as a driver. So I'm sure they have a lot in common, a lot to talk about. Good guy to bounce some setup off of as well. Who knows? We may call, we call him Jared Wizard Wiggins because of his setup knowledge and all that, but maybe it's actually coming maybe, from Katie. Maybe it's her, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's not going to let the secret out. Well, Blake Everett still out front here in this one. Roxbury still in second. Jacob Vigil in third. There you see Jacob in the all-black buggy, white wheels, white wing, black and purple it looks like. On to the right side, closing up the gap on Katie a bit. Katie making a little Ooh. waffle there. Yeah, got away with that one, didn't she? That is second and third. Both drivers in the bump spots right now. Barry Rowe, the third, is going to be 3.4 seconds back from them in fourth. A little bit wide there. A couple of those turns there for Katie. Going to kind of open up the door. Vigil can keep keep the pressure on. Flown that thing sideways a couple of times as well. Vigil coming after her now. Again, you need to be careful here. You want the spot, but you don't want to risk losing you know, and falling out of the top three, that might be the opening he was looking for, and we'll make the pass there. Both of them still in a transfer spot, but now Katie falls back into third. That is the final transfer spot. And all over Vigil now, looking to get back, and Vigil with a bit of a bobble. They just got to be smart here and not take each other out. Katie is putting the pressure on right now. She is. Uh, she said, yeah, you can go on by, but I'm going to stay right here. Right behind you, if you make one little mistake, I am taking that right back from you. And it's funny because she was not oh. driving that good when she was out in front of him. She was feeling the pressure, but very good at applying the pressure. So something she'll work on, and unfortunately a little. Well, a five. bit of a bobble right there, and that will create some gap. Yeah, 520 down and 1440 to go here in this one. Blake Everett out front, Jacob Vigil in second, Roxbury third. Rodriguez, Barry Rowe the third, Scott Brewer, Creed Nally. Dennis Remington looks like he is not out there. 
We're going to start seeing some pit stops here before too long. That could shake things up a little bit, but right now everybody kind of settling into their own pace. Yeah, coming up here on the six-minute mark, and Scotty Ernst, you said that uh, Katie has, has some fans down there, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you guys were talking about Katie Rockbear. There's a family of four up here, and the young ladies were watching the pink car. I told them that's Katie, and they started cheering for her. And uh, when, she, when she crashed, they were like, oh, what's happening? So it's uh, cool to see the, the young kids up here cheering on Katie. You never know who the inspiration is going to be, right? I mean, Katie inspiring those young ladies. So who knows, maybe future invite drivers, right? There we go. Well, Katie working her way into a bit of traffic here, it looks like. And like I say, that may be Blake Everett right there ahead of her. It was. That, well, that was our race leader. He is coming in for fuel now. Looks like he is in the pits. Yeah, so Vigil uh, crossing the stripe there in first. Katie Bar Roxbury back up in the second. And Blake Everett last time across the stripe. Blake in and out of the pits there with an 8.6 second pit stop, it looks like. Comes out in the number three spot. Yeah, pretty cool. Great uh, timing system here, courtesy of Brandon Roder. You appreciate uh, everything that he does. There's a look at the pit stops. Come in. A quick refill. As you mentioned it before, eight seconds. The uh, 7.9 seconds now for Barry Rowe. The quickest we have seen so far inside of this one. Oh, great shot right there from the uh, the chest cam there. I believe that was Rodriguez coming in for fuel. Ooh. Uh-oh. So that was Rodriguez, as uh, you documented there, Mike. So Jacob Vigil going to be out front. He has not made a pit stop yet. Katie Roxbury making her pit stop last time around. Yeah, coming up on the eight-minute mark here, about 15 seconds away. So getting some decent mileage there. Oh, I may be mistaken here. Look at that last lap there for Jacob at a 38-1. So he may have made a pit stop on the last one there. Out to a good lead here. Car flying beautifully there. Nose that thing down. Got back on the throttle as we put Jacob Vigil's mug shot up there, if you will, in first place. Nice job. Scrapped his way back up after getting in a little bit of trouble. Falling back to third. Oh, it looks like one car flaming out there. I believe that was going to be Scott Brewer back there in the number six spot. Scott having some troubles here in this one. Tough luck for him. Yes, indeed, that is Scott Brewer. Trying to get that thing refired. Back to our race leader here, Jacob Vigil. Leading the way. Katie Roxbury in second. Blake Everett or was our race leader. He dropped back to the number three spot after the pit stops. Santos Rodriguez going to be 11 seconds back from him right now. So everything pretty spread out here. Yeah, as you would expect in these longer distances as they get a little bit of room to work. Coming up on the halfway mark, about a minute from the halfway mark. 20 minutes, the total run time here for this particular B main in the open nitro buggy category. Again, the top three to advance into the A main. All the bump ups from the, uh, from the open category into the invite category took place one day ago. We the four of those, by the way, were Camden Line. Caden Fuller, Brandon Rose. Brandon Rose, who really had to scrap to get in. That was so close a couple of times that finally found it on uh, the third time was a charm, and then Ethan Mechanic got in on time. Yeah, quite a battle between them. Uh, Ethan Mechanic and Spencer Heckert. Tied on points yesterday, came down to the uh, the overall pace between the two, and Ethan Mechanic was the final driver to bump up into that invite. We'll keep an eye on Spencer Heckert in the open class. Oh, oh no, Katie Roxbury tumbling right before the drop away. Well, she had about a, uh, a six-second spread between her and Blake Everett, and then another seven seconds to Santos Rodriguez. So she should still safely be in a transfer spot. 9.30 to go here in this one. Vigil out front with an 8.3 second lead. He is checked out. 
He is on cruise control. Oh, oh. same spot for Katie. Blake Ever going to go on by up into the number two spot. So Katie dropping back to the three spot. Still in the position to bump up into that A main, though. Yeah, she's still in a good spot there. Just settle down, take a breath right, and get back in the groove. And looks like she has managed to do that pretty quickly. Doesn't matter if you're in second or third. Just as long as you stay in there, and she'll bump right back up into second. A good job there for Blake Everett. Had a chance to run up in there and probably tagged the back of her. Said, no, nope. be back out of the throttle here just a little bit. Regroup. Oh, a little mistake there for Blake. 8.30 left to go here for these drivers. There goes Roxbury down the front stretch on the right-hand side. You see Sean Miller cheering her on. She stays far away from that outside tube that time. <laughs> so I'm not hitting it again. Two laps in a row is enough for me. So getting back into their pit window here once they get down underneath seven minutes, I would think uh, somewhere in the six-minute range and safely, six to seven-minute range, safely come back in, do that final pit stop, and then finish up your race. Now it looks like one car there in the pits. Braxton Coley looking at that one. Might have been, I think that might have been Creed and Alley that is now out of this race. So we're down to six drivers here in this one with 7.30 to go. Oh, your race leader tumbles on the front straight. Oh, no. He is upside down. Had a pretty big gap, though. Near 12-second gap over Katie. Should be fine here. Thing you got to worry about as it gets closer and closer to the, uh, the pit stops. You go upside down like that. Get a little air in the line. The engine flame out. That would be bad. Everything seems to be okay here as, and you talked about it, uh, getting back into this pit stop window Ooh. now. Under oh. seven minutes to go and again trouble. Oh, Jacob says, I'm going in the pits. I need a break. There goes Katie Roxbury. So Katie going to take over the lead now. She'll have one more pit stop to go. Yeah, safely inside of their window now to come back in fuel up and make it to the end. And this track uh, starting to develop some character now. Here comes Katie in for her pit stop. She's in and out. Vigil, by the way, pit stop time there in nine flat. See if we get a time here for Katie. Looks like Katie is out of the pit. Yeah, they haven't all popped up for us, so we get uh, we get some random times there on pit road. There's first and second as they work their way back around. 5:50 left to go in this one, so no more pit stops for these two drivers. They're going to try and cruise their way into a bump spot now. Rodriguez is up into the number three spot. I don't believe he has pitted just yet. He has pitted, I am being told. So now uh, Rodriguez taking over the number three spot away from Blake Everett. And look at this, Kenny Roxbury trying to take away the number one spot here from Jacob Vigil. All over and all. Katie's got the inside. Jacob says, all right. I think Vigil playing that one smart right there. You want to keep the pressure on. If you can get the spot, you take the spot, but did not want to crash each other. Whoa. And Katie with a little bit of a, a bobble there opened up the door. Vigil now coming right back after her. This is a great race for the lead. It really is. This is fantastic. Jacob doing everything that he can. Oh, oh. gave her a little bump there. He checks up, lets her have it back. Yeah, when you take a look at the invite drivers, you know, a lot of that stuff, I mean, they, they get pretty upset about that because they are so precise. Here, I think they're just racing their hearts out, so nothing intentional. As they drop down, they head on the left-hand side right now. Katie run a fantastic run here in this one. Vigil in the two spot. Rodriguez. Oh! oh! Katie comes up short on the double. She's still going to stay in the number two spot. That's going to allow Vigil up into the lead. Here comes Blake Everett now. 
in the number three spot. I do. Oh, no, that's Rodriguez up at the number three spot. Do not know what happened to Blake Everett, but he was running up front for a very long time. And now with only four minutes left to go, he has dropped back considerably here in this one. In the top three there within five seconds of each other. As you can see, those second and third getting pretty close. Still both safely in a transfer spot. A uh, pretty big gap, though, back to fourth place between Rodriguez and Everett, as you talked about. Nine and a half seconds there. Katie airing that thing out. We are down under four minutes to go. Oh, watch out, Katie. Wearing that tube out up there. Here Bang comes that thing a couple times. And that hole developing there in that left-hander, we saw that develop one day ago. So soft spot over there, something that the drivers will have to deal with. And we saw the some of the open drivers, uh, certainly the invite drivers, recognize that hole and able to drive down underneath it or out around it. Well, it's something you talked about yesterday was tire wear, and I got a feeling with a longer race like this, a 20-minute main, I know the track has changed considerably since the start of this race. You can see a lot of dust on the surface, starting to lose a little bit of traction here and there. And I would imagine some tire wear, and then these tires are uh, losing just a bit of their grip as we get further and further into this one. Katie with a quick bobble right there. Opens up the door. Wow, she went really high there up again. I thought Rodriguez might get underneath her right there, but did not. She gathers it back up and gets a little bit of distance. And again, this is a battle for second and third place with the top three transferring in. Santos doing exactly what you had mentioned earlier. He's playing it safe. He literally came to a complete stop there. He was like, hey, you get your car back under control. Let's not take anybody. Oh, else. Rodriguez takes himself out, though. He's back on his wheels. Yeah, still safe. He has a lot of room here, as we talked about before. Nine seconds back to Blake Everett there in fourth place. Of course, that will uh, get chewed up there to some degree now, but still in a safe zone here to make it as we get down to two minutes to go. Oh, a great view of the track right there from our drone cam. I wasn't sure. Was that Santos that just went for that big ride again? We'll have to see when they come back across the finish stripe uh, if, in fact, that was him. Minute 45 left to go here. Jacob Vigil, he is out front looking to win this one and move up into that A main along with Katie Roxbury in the two spot. Santo Rodriguez in number three spot. Blake Everett in the four. Rodriguez still with a nine-second buffer there. Should be fine here to go. Doesn't have any real big moments. Just three seconds back to Katie Roxbury there between second and third. Near ten-second spread between Jacob Vigil and Katie Roxbury between first and second. Vigil One worked, minute. Worked his way through that infield here. Down the front stretch. Fast lap on the track of the entire race was actually set by Creed Nally, who is out of this one with a 28 flat. 45 seconds left to go here for Vigil, Roxbury, and Rodriguez. Boy, pretty cool to hear the throttle control out of some of those players down there as they spin these things up the better part of 44,000 rpm oh no katie is looking up at the sky that she's not good out. katie roxbury has oh. flamed out with under a minute to go she is not a happy camper here oh so tough to take here under a minute to go and flames out no chance at making the transfer into the a main after all of that work Did he go out here and finish this thing up like a trooper, though? Getting back out there. It's going to be close. She may have had a lap on Barry Rowe. Barry's up into the number three spot. Time is going to – oh, Barry gets it. He is going to cross the line there. There's Everett. Dang. That is some tough luck for Katie Roxbury right there with only 22 seconds left to go. Runs out of fuel, it looked like. And she is out for the bump. So Jacob Vigil going to take it. Santos Rodriguez taking second. Barry Rowe the third. He just cruising along back there. Has no idea what's happening. 
And now he is bumping up to the A-May, and there you see the disappointment on Katie Roxbury. Yeah, and Scotty being the uh, tough guy that he is, it looks like he, yeah. <laughs> he grabbed her for an interview. Good luck with that one, my friend. Wow. That, that is, I mean, that's an absolute heartbreaker. She did a wonderful job the entire time, and kind of curious when she pitted. I'm trying to go back and think of when she was, but I wanted to say around the seven-minute mark to go, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and there you see the race results right there. So Jacob Vigil, Santos Rodriguez, and Barry Rowe III are going to be bumping up to that A main. Congratulations to those drivers. Blake Everett, Katie Roxbury, Scott Brewer, and Creed Nally falling just a bit short, but still a fantastic weekend for them here at Visions Off-Road from Mid-America here in Jay, Oklahoma. All right, Scotty, we know you're up there. Uh, let's hear. All right, thank you very much. We're here with, she's still smiling with Katie Roxbury, and that was tough. You had a great run. You were patient. You were competing for the lead. Tell us what happened. I ran out of fuel, I think. I, I don't know if I just didn't keep it running long enough like I should have. I just crashed off the double off the front straight, and it just flamed out. So it sucks. I mean, I was up there. I could have gotten the bump. At least I know I could have been there, you know. But now I get to take photos and do social media for our team. So, I mean, I'm excited either way, really. It oh, sucks, that, but it's all right. Oh, yeah, that's the right attitude. These young uh, the young girls were over here. They were cheering for you <laughs> when you were uh, passing and, and winning. So And you got a big day with uh, worrying about Jared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, it's all about Jared now, and it's all about the team and Mayfield and, you know, getting the team ready for the invite races, and I'm excited. It was right. it was good. <laughs> All right, well, great job. Thank you, Scotty. All right, some tough luck for Katie there, but positive attitude, that's what it's all about. She's still got a big day taking care of the team. Back to you, Ken and Mike. Thanks a lot, Scotty. I think that's exactly what you said a little bit earlier on in that race is they get low on fuel. If you go for a tumble like that, it can flame out. Unfortunately, it sounds like that, that what happened. Yeah, it sounds exactly like what happened, and uh, like you say, congratulations to those other drivers, though, making their way up into the A-May. We'll take a quick break. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back to Mid-America Outdoors. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2023 Visions Off-Road event here. We are RC racing at the highest levels, world-ranked competitors coming out here, $30,000 in total purse. Of course, if you can win this, uh, including the three A mains, and come up with the lowest score for that, it's a $5,000 check to you. If you can win all three of them, it's substantially more. It's a big payday. Yeah, it's a big payday for all these drivers. And uh, like you said, we've got some of the best drivers in the world here this weekend at a fantastic track built here at Mid-America. It just it couldn't be any better. The weather's great. The track's great. The drivers are great. It's going to be a fantastic weekend of racing. And, of course, we will have our first invite race that's coming up here next. And if we're going to talk about the invite race, we have to go back to 2022 and talk about our reigning champion. The wizard, Jared Wiggins, out of Mesquite, Texas, ended up first overall. His three A-mains one year ago, he finished up sixth, first, and fourth. 
It was right down to the wire at the very end, and we had the chance to speak with him a little bit earlier this weekend. Hi, I'm Jared Wiggins. I'm 22 from Mesquite, Texas, and I drive for Techno RC. Last year coming here to Visions, um, you know, I always want to race and I always want to try to run at the front and do the best I can. Um, ended up getting the win. Uh, there was a little bit more than I had expected. You always hope for that. You always try to train for that, plan for that. But uh, to get it was really something, and it was uh, definitely a special one. Last year winning Visions was my breakout race. I've um, been looking to, to win a race at the, on the highest level for a long time. I've been able to make a lot of finals, compete a lot, but uh, to get that win was, was really something and uh, gave me more confidence and I think it's helped me have a more successful year this year and hopefully continue that momentum into the 2023 Visions. Having Katie at the races here, uh, being my mechanic down in pit lane is awesome. Um, I mean, we uh, you obviously want to have that bond with your significant other, but having someone that I can trust down in pit lane, um, kind of you know fueling the car, making those decisions when we need it, is uh, it's, it's really helpful and something that uh, couldn't do without her. Who's the best driver here? Well, there's it's honestly pretty hard. Um, everyone here, there's so many pro guys here now that can win a race or compete at the highest level, but uh, Dakota obviously he's had a, had a good past couple of years and he's ranked number one right now so by the numbers for sure Dakota um, but yeah I mean it's just everything's so close all the time um, but Dakota has probably been uh, the star of the last year or so. So a word there from the reigning champ who won the Roar Nats warm-up and the icebreaker in Nitro Buggy. was second there at Lone Star. And uh, take a good look at the drivers that are up there. And, of course, Katie, who was just out there as well a moment ago, did such a great job right to the very end. And, unfortunately, a mistake and, and a flame out there. But um, great, great people. Great to have them back out here as well. Scotty's down there digging deep. What do you got, Scotty? Uh, thank you very much, Ken. Everything you saw locked and loaded down here. The uh, mechanics got the cars fueled, fired, ready to go. They're just getting waiting to call from Jimmy Babcock. He'll give them a couple minutes of warm-up, and then it is absolutely game on. Back to you, Ken and Mike. Thanks a lot there. You can see all the cars are uh, fired up and running. Once again, the starting positions have been outlined here. So let's talk about this, uh, let's talk about this invite race, the distance, and... What will happen here? This will be three different A mains. It will be the best low, or I should say the lowest score. So if you finish first, 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 you can score three. That is correct, yeah. And we got, uh, this is going to be a 30-lap race for these drivers. Here you can see the uh, the lineup here. Ty Tessman going to be starting first on the grid for this one. Ryan Mayfield will be starting second. Mason Fuller third. Jared Tebow, unfortunately, uh, fell ill and is not going to be here. So that spot will be empty. Spencer Riggs will be starting fifth. Camden Lime, Joe Bornhorst, Cole Ogden, Felong Win, Dakota Fend, starting the number 10 spot. Of course, then followed up by last year's champ, Jared Wiggins, Adam Drake, Caden Fuller, Brandon Rose, and Ethan Mechanic. Those top, those last three drivers there are bump-up drivers we saw from yesterday. Along with Camden Lime. So uh, as they get their warm-up warm -up laps in here, let's give you the format of what we started off with here, which they all did a pill draw. And, of course, that set up their starting positions for their heat races one day ago. Where they finished in that heat race determines the starting positions for today. Everybody, according to that pill draw, had a chance to start either in the front, the middle, or the back of each one of those three heat races. So it's a very fair format to give them an opportunity to start in the front of one of these A mains and have a fair chance at winning this thing. So it's uh, it's a pretty cool format, as we documented here. If you win the... Uh, if you win the overall, you get $5,000. It's $1,500 to win one of these races. And, of course, if you can sweep them all, it's another bonus 5 k So great money up for grabs here. Uh, then we had our bump-in drivers that filled out the field. Those uh, came out of the open category. So if they won their open race, they bumped up in. And then we had one fourth driver, which, which you documented before, came in here on time. So great, uh, great battles out here one day ago to set these fields. Yeah, and you see these drivers are taking some warm-up laps here. It was interesting to see 
only a few laps in. A couple of drivers came into the pits. Uh, there you see Cole Ogden coming out of pit lane there, just making some fine-tuning on their engines, uh, maybe leaning out, reaching up just a little bit. Perhaps I haven't seen anybody change tires or anything drastic just yet. So just fine-tuning adjustments. This is going to be, again, a 30-minute race, which basically the organizers figured out is going to be roughly kind of right at the 14-minute mark, maybe just a bit less than that is how long it's going to take. So there is a mandatory pit stop. Everybody has to make at least one pit stop here in this one, if not, uh, you know, more than that. So nobody can try and go the full way. That kind of takes the uh, the guessing game out of the, the fuel. If anybody's going to go the whole race without a pit stop, that takes that out of it. So everybody's going to make one pit stop at least, if not more. Ty Testman, one of the players we're going to need to keep our eye on Ty as he will start off there in the first position out of Cypress County, Alberta, Canada. Currently ranked sixth in the world, seventh here in the U.S. Finished second overall one year ago here at Visions. A seventh, a third, and a first place finish in the last A-Main. Former world champ racing for 18 years and the 2023 MAO sponsored Dirt Nitro Challenge champion. So he's a solid player. Uh, for sure. Father of Gord builds her own engines, so great stuff, man. Great to have Ty Tessman out here. Well, this is going to be an interesting start on this one. Let's get it down to Scotty. All right, thank you very much, guys. We are right here, trackside. The grid is getting set, and these guys ready to battle for some serious hard cash. Starting position is very, very important, and it all is coming down to our first final. Get a number one start is going to be Ty Tessman from Canada, rocking the X-ray. He had a number one starting spot, finished second overall yesterday, and it is going to be on him to lead the field here in final number one. Back to you, Ken and Mike. Thanks a lot, Scotty. Ryan Mayfield there in second. Mason Fuller. Uh, Spencer Rivkin will be back in there towards the front. Camden line. Our bump-in driver as well. Joe Bornhorst also in here. Cole Ogden. So that is the first seven positions as we take a look at our starter and Sean Miller. He's excited. We're excited. A-Main number one, ladies and gentlemen, for the invite category. Here we go. 30 laps in distance. They're on the gas. Well, this could be an interesting start here because Ty Tessman and Ryan Mayfield, you may remember last year, had a little bit of a scuffle on the racetrack, and they are starting one and two here in this one. They got Mason Fuller right there behind him. Ty Tessman right out of the gate with a clean start here. Already a couple car lengths on Mayfield. Yeah, he got a great start, didn't he, to drive away from Mayfield like that. And Mayfield with plenty of pressure back behind. Now gets a little bit of a gap. We'll see if he can close up a bit on Ty Tessman. They will cross the stripe there as they started with Fuller and third Rivkin and fourth Camden line with a great start here as well up in the fifth. Yeah, line putting their pressure on right there on Rivkin as they come back around on the left-hand side there. You see Mason Fuller, the orange and yellow HB Racing buggy chasing down the techno of Ryan Mayfield. Oh, Mason Fuller tried to show a wheel on Mayfield there. Mayfield closes the door on him. No contact made. And Mayfield with nothing for Ty Tessman right now. We talked about it earlier in the week. He did make a chassis change from a year ago. So one of the techno drivers, as we were talking to Wiggins, both of them there sharing a little bit of information, now gets a little bit of a gap over third place and Mason Fuller. Yeah, and Ribkin playing nice right there. He had the inside line on Mason Fuller. He checked up just a bit early on in this one. He's going to be putting the pressure on him, though. I got a few feeling here in just a few more laps as we get closer and closer to the halfway mark of this one. Those passes aren't going to be quite so gentle. Great shot there from our drone as well. Mayfield now getting a little bit of breathing room with that battle there. Oh, man, that battle there for third is absolutely on. And, Ken, that hole you talked about coming out of that 180 back there in the back left corner, it's getting deeper and deeper, starting to catch these guys up just a bit. You saw a, catch, a couple of them there. Mason Fuller getting spun almost all the way around. So third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, all separated by about a half a second. We knew this would be a close battle, and for sure it has developed that way. Yes, indeed. Mason Fuller went up on two wheels there. That caused Rivkin. He let out just a bit, came up short on that big double on the right side. Now we got Camden Lime up in the mix here. Lime, the bump-in driver from the open class, followed up there by Joe Bornhorst. Yeah, worth mentioning that Lime, $1,000 richer. Each one of those bump-up drivers, with the exception of the fourth one, all receive a check for $1,000 as well, part of that $30,000 purse. And look at this battle continue on here for third. Keep an eye on Rivkin right oh. here. Rivkin once again checks up. He is playing it smart, playing it safe right now. Rivkin has put the pressure on Mason Fuller, but now he's got to move, start moving forward. We've only got 25 laps left to go. 
He's got Camden Lime right there behind him in the number four spot, five spot. Yeah, I mean, all of those Fuller, Rifkin, Lime, all separated by just a couple of tenths of a second. Any small bobble there, and they'll take advantage of it. They did say that they felt like passing was going to be difficult here, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Everybody able to be very fast. The lap time separated by just small margins of a second, and it just does not provide a big opening. So if they make a mistake, they can take advantage of it. Other than that, it's pretty difficult. Yeah, coming back around to the front side here, Ty Tessman going to be out front leading the way here in this one. Ryan Mayfield still in second, four in third, Ripken in fourth. Well, you can see that hole out there uh, really upset Mason, really redirected Mason Fuller's car, had to run a bit wide there where the car was going, able to hang on to the spot, dealt with it. But, boy, look at this battle, man. I mean, the pressure right there provided by Ripken. Looks like a little bit here in this one. Mason Fuller maybe closing up just a little bit on Ryan Mayfield up at the number two spot. 22 laps left to go here as they head on to the right-hand side of the track. Mason Fuller in the orange and yellow right behind him. Oh, little oh. trouble there for the line. Landed a little bit short, didn't he? Through the drop away they go. Back around on the left side. Ribkin last time by the line. Ribkin with a 27-4. Mason Fuller with a 27-4. Yeah, the difference there, .6. So we're talking about a half a second. But when they're both running point fours, a half <laughs> second's a lot, right? <laughs> That's a lot, a lot, yes, for sure. And look at this, fastest lap on the track right now is a 27.011 by our 11th place driver, last year's champion, Jared Wiggins. And Wiggins may be out of this race. He just now crossed by with 34 second laps. So I don't know exactly what happened. May have made an early pit stop, as you talked about, Playing the, playing the uh, pit strategy The undercut game, game right? Yeah. And, and get out of the thick of it and see if you can get back in there, get some clean air, and just rip off some laps and pick up a bunch of positions here. 20 laps left to go here for this one. Ty Tessman still going to be out front. We're looking at Ryan Mayfield there in the number two spot. Tessman, the x-ray driver out of Canada. Ryan Mayfield, the Techno RC driver out of Arizona, working his way, inching it closer and closer to Tessman. But Tessman has held strong since the start of this one. Yeah, so five minutes in the books there. So as you talked about there, Wiggins coming in here somewhere in the about four and a half minutes into this race. Ripken really putting the pressure on Mason Fuller now in the number three spot battle for third and fourth. Here it is right here. Fuller in the orange and yellow. Spencer Ripken in the blue and purple. And he has been right there for a while now. Just cannot find that opening. But, oh, man, and he tags the tube on the inside, able to keep going, but loses a little bit of distance. Here they come through the drop away. we still got Camden Lime right there behind them in fifth, followed by Bornhorse Drake, Ogden, Keelong Win, and Rose rounding out your top he ten. right there, man. Here comes Ripken. He's going to try and set him up right here. He's going to go wide cut under. Not going to be quite close enough. Fuller blocking that inside line. Ripken's car really rotating nicely. Look at that inside line. Does he have it there? there? It outside in. Oh. Spencer Ripken, a very talented driver. He's no stranger. He's a multi-time national champion. Trying to pull out every move that he can think of at this point. And again, buys himself a little bit of room, but look right there behind Ripken as well. Camden Line all over him. As those two get the race and he closes the gap. Here they come back down the front stretch now. 16 laps left to go here for these drivers. Mason Fuller in the orange and yellow, the HB Racing driver. Rivkin and, oh, oh, Camden Lyon putting it in the pipe there. Oh, wow, and I mean, lost a lot of distance as well. He was right in the thick of it there inside of the top five. He'll lose a couple of spots now. More importantly, a lot of distance. Back onto the front side of the track. Looks, oh, oh, Fuller, trouble coming into pit lane. That's going to cost Fuller big time right there. Rivkin on the wall. Right at the seven-minute mark for all of our leaders coming in here to top off. Wow. That could that could be uh, exactly what Spencer Rivkin needed there as they come out of pit lane. Rivkin being to be in third. Look at There's, the chaos there as well. And you can see some of the crew members looking up, trying to talk to their driver. We talked about that a year ago. Some of them with radio communication now. There's Adam Drake right there as he works his way around. He's just ahead of Ty Tessman. So Drake is now leading this race. Adam Drake, the legend, out front leading the way here in this one. I don't think Adam Drake has pitted yet. 
Ty Tessman in that number two spot. He has made his pit stop. Here they come back through the infield now. Taking a look at some of the pit stops as well. Some of them down in the six-second range, 6.5 seconds. Scotty, you're watching some developments uh, on the track as well. By the way, I want to tag this. Feelong win with a very quick pit stop of 5.9 seconds. Scotty? Absolutely, guys. It was absolute chaos down here with many of the top guys having trouble as they came in or exited out. There's a huge divot on the downside of the pit lane, and uh, the guys had to jump over that to avoid it. It was chaos, and that's going to be some of the make-or-break sections of this race. The pit stop's so important. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it can be devastating. Great eye there, Scotty. Yeah, for sure something that uh, that was upsetting a couple of those cars, and coming off pit road like that, you're on the pipe, and Man, you get up there on the tube, launch yourself up over the tube, and find yourself at the back of the pack. Well, Ty Tessman looking comfortable out front here in this one right now. And one thing I'm noticing about Ty's car that I haven't seen this weekend on a lot of the other cars is he's running a Lexan wing instead of the solid plastic wing. He's running the lightweight Lexan wing on the back, the clear. A little bit different wing setup than we've seen on uh, a lot of the other drivers. Mason Fuller looks like he may be back up at that number two spot now. Ryan Mayfield has dropped to third. Spencer Rifkin in fourth, Adam Drake in fifth, Ogden Bornhorst. Look at that battle right there, third, fourth, and fifth. Here they come back around. That is Mason Fuller leading that parade there. Dakota Finn back there in tenth place. We were chatting about wings a day ago with his, and a couple of holes drilled on the back of his, so he has some options there to either plug the holes up or to uh, leave them open. The wing technology always advancing here as we watch these two continue to go at it. And again, the gap between these drivers very, very tight in many cases. Yeah, Fuller going a bit wide there. Ryan Mayfield looking for the inside line. Mayfield dives in. Oh, gives him a bump. Let's him have it back. Oh, oh gets around the outside. All three of them separated here by just a tenth or so. Rivkin right there behind him as well. All three of these drivers very talented. There's Mason Fuller right there. Fuller with a great race here so far. He's really... Been biding his time, driven a good race. No contact has been right there behind a couple of people and stayed out of them. But to give up that spot right there, I mean, Mayfield, we talked about him a number of times. He's just relentless, man. When he gets behind somebody, he's brutal. Yeah, Mayfield back up at the number two spot. Only eight laps left to go here for these drivers. Ty Tessman out to a three-and-a-half second lead in this one. Tessman just getting it done. We talked about him winning here in the last A main, so he would go back to back A mains here going back to 2022 if he can hang on here towards the end. Eight laps to go. Well, and obviously, Ken, the winner of this one is going to be the only one that has a shot at that uh, $5,000 bonus for the clean sweep. So Ty Tessman setting himself up good here if he can hold on to this one. A little bobble there for, Ryan, or, uh, for Spencer Ribkin as he drops back a bit there from Fuller. Fuller putting the pressure on Ryan oh, Mayfield, man. though. Mayfield with a bobble there. Uh, one of those holes that's in the track. One of the undulations and ruts that are developing here. And yeah, plenty of pressure right there on Mayfield from Mason Fuller. Trying to get back around him. Takes a look at the inside. Does not do it. Fuller's going to try and dive underneath him here. Keep an eye after the drop away. This is going to be where Mason Fuller's going to try and make his move. Fuller's going to sweep wide. Yeah, he goes outside of that hole that was oh. right there. And feeding a little bit of Mayfield's medicine right back to him. Here they come Here back. he comes. Fuller's got the inside. Oh, oh Mayfield Fuller goes for a big ride. Tumbling. Wow, Mason Fuller sends Ryan Mayfield tumbling. And I got a feeling that is not <laughs> going to set well. well Ryan see how Mayfield. that shakes down here. We know how it worked out last year with Tessman. Five laps to go here. So Mayfield got into Fuller a little bit earlier and kind of checked back up and let him kind of have the spot back. And uh, Mason Fuller did not return the favor. That's no doubt. We'll see if we can get a replay here. I'd really love to see that one just one more time for clarification. There was also a fair amount of dust there. Winding things down, though, with just four laps to go. Might wait till uh, we see the checkered flag here and then see if we can't bring that back up, courtesy of Amsoy on our replay team. Well, so Spencer. Mason Fuller right now in second place, and Spencer Rivkin up into third. Yep. Mayfield back to fourth. Rivkin working his way up into the uh, the mix here. Rivkin, four laps left to go. I don't know if he's going to have enough time to catch Mason Fuller and make a pass on him. I have no doubts that Rivkin can catch him at this point. It's making the pass on this track that uh, I don't know if he's got enough time to do it. 
And Fuller starting to drive away now just a bit. The better part of the second between oh. second and third place. Big mistake for Fuller right there. Rivkin oh. goes to the inside. Rivkin makes the move now. Spencer Rivkin up into the number two spot. Late here with just a couple of laps left inside of this A main number one. And Fuller giving up a very critical position here from second to third. Right back there, applying pressure. See if he can get it done here. A little bit of time left. Two laps to go, and uh-oh, Ryan Mayfield is close yeah, again. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking Mason the entire Fuller. time. If he gets close, <laughs> it's going to be on here, and we've got a lap yet to go, a lap and some change. Oh, oh. boy. Here we go. You Everybody. know he's got red in his eyes, man. Everybody keep an eye here on Ryan Mayfield, Mason Fuller. This should get interesting. Oh, Mayfield tumbles at the end of the front stretch. So I think Fuller is at least safe on the track. Yeah, I don't think Mayfield lost the position there. Had a little bit of room. Fuller now falls back a little bit from Rivkin as well on this final lap. Well, this driver right here has no idea the chaos going on behind him because he checked out early on. Checkered flag, ladies and gentlemen. Ty Tessman, your invite. Nitro Buggy A main number one winner. He'll have a shot at the overall. Goes back-to-back and A mains here going back to last year. Rivkin hangs on to second, Fuller and third. Mayfield does keep that spot in fourth despite that wreck there right at the very end. Adam Drake, great to have him out here making his debut at Visions. Will end up inside of the top five as well. Uh, Great battle here as we anticipated. And Mayfield walking off there hoping for better results just did not happen. He'll have to dig deep here in A main number two. Yeah, what a race right there. Congratulations to Ty Testman kicking it off with a win. Spencer Rivkin doing a fantastic job as well. We talked about him even in uh, early qualifying yesterday. Rivkin just kind of quietly sneaks in there, puts down the fast laps, and there he is showing what he's got, finishing up second. There you see your race results. Mason Fuller third, Ryan Mayfield fourth. Adam Drake, how about that from uh, way back on the grid, coming up into the number five spot. Joe Bornhorst, Cole Ogden, Dakota Finn, Fee Long win, and Caden Fuller rounding out your top ten. All right, once again, we will get it down to Scotty Ernst. He has one of our podium finishers. Thank you very much, Ken. We're here with Ty Taspin and Ty. That was an absolute race to the end there. You got able to use advantage of the pole, pull away, but, man, that was a long race. Yeah, it sure felt like a long race, even though it was only 14 minutes. Um, my car felt the best it's been all weekend, so it was super easy to drive, had good pace. Uh, just kind of built that gap and tried to maintain it. Tried not to slow down too much because you can get yourself in trouble if you try to be too cautious sometimes. So just trying to keep a good pace, trying to be easy so I could conserve fuel just to make sure I made it. Um, but, yeah, my tires worked awesome. Car ran great. Engine ran awesome. So couldn't be happier with the first first race of the day. When you were out front, obviously you had a clean track in front of you, but could you see in your peripheral the, the battle that they were having behind you? Yeah, for sure. I, could, I was always paying attention to where I was, gaining or losing. Uh, it seemed like kind of like five minutes in or so, Mayfield caught back up to me a bit, but then I was able to bridge the gap or expand the gap a bit, and then they all battling back there, which obviously slows down the pack. So I just get a nice, comfortable lead and try to make the best of my starting positions. And, yeah, it's happy with how it started. And I um, just want to thank all my sponsors for all the great support again over the years. They've always been behind me. My parents have been behind me from the start with all his love and support. Uh, most importantly, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, best, uh, best congratulations to you. Uh, Joey's got a big check here for you. $1,500 goes to Ty Tessman. He finished off 2022 with a win in A-Main number three, and he's starting out 2023 with a win in A-Main number one. Congratulations, Ty Tessman. Let's get Spencer Rifkin up here. <coughs> Spencer, much like Ty said, it was only, you know, a 14-minute array or, you know, 30 laps or so, but it was uh, it was a beast. It was insanely hard just to stay focused. You don't want to cause any chaos or pile-ups. Um, Ty, Ryan, Mason, and myself um, basically started 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. Um, yeah, it just being clean. Mason and Ryan kind of seemed to get into it, so I'm not sure if they're going to do a booth review on that. Um, yeah. Uh, starting fifth, got second, so got some positive points there. Uh, congrats to Ty, he drove a flawless race from first. It, it's it's this this layout's very difficult to pass, so you got to basically either boot someone and you have to check up or wait, or you got to make the decision of having you guys make the call if you want to reverse it or not. So, uh, yeah, there's money on the line. It's fun. My cars are feeling good. Tires are working. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day, Saturday afternoon, so uh, I'm not complaining. 
All right, best of luck in the next one. Yeah, thanks. All right, there you go, Spencer Rifkin, Team of Sozin. Let's get HB, uh, Mason Fuller up here. Mason, that was a hot and heavy race there. Take us through it. Yeah, I mean, at the start, uh, what was it, Tessman, Mayfield, Rifkin, we were all just neck and neck, I guess, and then you can't really, it's really hard to pass on this track, so for like the first 20 laps, we were just all one, two, three, four, just trying to pull away from the rest of the pack. You had a bit of contact there with Mayfield. Uh, what's your thoughts on it? I mean, I think he went wide, and then I just took the opening, and I, I guess, I don't know. I'll have to rewatch it. Copy that. Well, best of luck to you in the uh, next two rounds. Thank you. All right, there you hear from the top three. Ty Tessman taking final number one. It's going to be interesting in the next two finals. Back to you, Ken and Mike. Nice job there, Scotty. Our top three finishers there. They did find that, uh, that footage there, so we're going to bring you a replay here. Courtesy of Amsoil, I'll let Mike walk us through that. He's the seasoned guy sitting beside me here in the booth. But uh, as you talked about before, it's on. Uh, we just heard Fuller talk about how difficult it is to pass. So let's watch what happens here. Yeah, let's take a look here. So Ryan Mayfield rotates there. Mason Fuller gets it. Man, I tell you what, that's a tough call. That is a tough call. It, it, Ryan Mayfield rotated. He was up ahead of Mason Fuller. Fuller tried to kind of get in there. I... I I don't know where to go. I'll where. help you out, man. I'll throw my opinion in there yeah, because you know, yeah. we'll lock the door so Mayfield can't get to yeah, us. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but honestly, I thought he went a little bit wide. He did open up the bottom, and I think Fuller saw the bottom. He saw that hole in the bottom. I don't know that he went in there intentionally to hit Mayfield, but um, Mayfield pitched it in there. If you want to say he backed it in, carried a little bit of momentum, but washed up just a little bit high. Let's watch it here one more time. Maybe I'm wrong, but he's got to run. Fuller's got to run right here. Let's watch Mayfield. Fuller down on the inside. Mayfield pitches it in, backs it in slides up way high right there and look at all the room down on the bottom he's got to come back down i mean that is a typical racing incident that happens in every short course off-road race and guess what every single one of them are tough to call you want to call it a racing incident i guess you could probably go there as well but the bottom was certainly open for a brief amount of time yeah it may feel the uh, tough luck for him there but it, uh he's working his way back we'll see uh, we'll see how it ends up uh fantastic run for all those drivers so exciting stuff! The games are already on. The clubs are up, baby. Have started. Fireworks. <laughs> the have money started. is up for grabs. That's why we do this, right? We love every second of it. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back to Mid America Outdoors. Agile and strong, the pit bull is perfect for the job. The pit bull is the first and only lift that can be used in the pits and in your garage. Elevate your racing with a handy. Back here to 2023 RC Racing at Visions Off-Road, brought to you by A-Main Hobbies and HPI Racing. Throwing down the invite, 
A-Main number one already in the books. Two yet to go. They are 30-lap events, and they are loaded with excitement and the best in the world doing the racing. One of those drivers inside of that is young Mr. Brandon Rose. He, uh, he scrapped inside here. He put on quite a show throughout a couple of the heat races one day ago. Was really close to making it in as a bump-in driver on two of those. In fact, flamed out with just two turns away. He was going to bump in. Finally got it done on his third try. And as part of the big show, we had a chance to speak with Brandon a little bit earlier today. Hi, I'm Brandon Rose. I'm 19 years old. I've been racing for about 12 years, and I'm from Houston, Texas. This is definitely my best year of racing. I joined S-Works for 2023, and it's been nothing but a great success having a team, having teammates, supporters, and just the best car in the market. Yeah, 2023 has been my best year yet. Traveling around with all the best drivers in the world has been an absolute blast. I mean, I've been places I've never been before. If it wasn't for RC, I would have never been, so... The competition level is just at an all-time high, and I live for it. Yeah, I like to say I get a little emotional on the driver's stand. I mean, I love racing. I'm here to win. I want to win at all costs. That's the goal at the end of the day. And that's the same thing for all the other drivers. I mean, if they're having a bad run, you'll see them say some things they probably don't mean or slip up a little bit, but that's just how it goes. We're all here to win. The best driver here, hmm, that's a tough one. I'd like to think it's myself, but not everyone else obviously thinks that. I would say raw speed you got to give it to Dakota. He's had an amazing year, and he just seems to be the one we're all kind of chasing right now. So great to have Brandon Rose out here, and as we talked about, really put on a great show just one day ago. Did some, uh, did some great racing. Glad he was able to bump in. Well, it looks like, Ken, we are off and running with our next race. This is our open e-buggy B main here in this one. And I believe that is going to be a feel long win leading us out here. Ethan Mechanic in second. Joshua Vigil in third. Pretty clean start here for these drivers here in this one. Yeah, a lot of the big players uh, out here, again, with track time. The combination is very close to their Nitro setups as well. Did see a mention there online. Curi uh, curious what happened to Tebow. And unfortunately, Jared Tebow uh, came down with, uh, with an illness there. He got a little bit sick between yesterday and today and unfortunately has uh, has not shown here today. So we wish him the best. Hope he gets better soon. Yeah, tough luck for Jared Tebow. Is, uh, he looked really good in practice and in qualifying yesterday. It looked like he had the buggy working well. I think uh, he looked confident on the racetrack, and obviously being his uh, his retirement year, it would have been uh, would have been pretty cool to see him out there running with, with the big dogs one final time here at Visions, and uh, yeah, best of luck to him. Well, maybe he puts this one on the list to come back and, and take another stab at that's it. Right, a, that's right. That's right. A limited schedule into 2024. So let's get back to the racing here with Philong Wen, the young uh, young man doing a great job here. Uses the joysticks to operate his buggy, which is a little bit different than everybody else. So we kind of keep an eye on that. Fun to watch as well. Josh Vigil and Ethan Mechanic currently in the top three. Adam Drake inside of the top five along with Camden Lime. Yeah, there's the young Philong win right there, only 12 years old, the youngest driver here this weekend. And we saw him uh, lay down some extremely fast times yesterday and uh, doing a fantastic job also in the invite nitro division. Fee out front lead the way here in this one. Yeah, Fee bumping in uh, last year as well, picked up a $1,000 check. Currently, uh, as you just mentioned, I believe, uh, running quick time here at 27.22. A number of the cars in the 27 range. And look at this, man. A great battle going on up here at the front. We got a three-wide battle here. The one that uh, keep an eye on is Adam Drake in the blue and orange in the back there. Yellow wheels. He's just playing it confident. He knows he's done this a long time. He knows exactly how this goes. He's going to let these two guys battle out and sneak in just like that right there. Adam Drake makes his move up to the number three spot now as he chases down Ethan Mechanic. And gets some pressure right back at him. Nice little uh, charge right there into that right-hander. Gaps it back out. That car is hooked up. Definitely has some steam. No question about that. But these guys separated by one or two-tenths of a second. Now a little bit larger there, about half second. Yeah, Ethan Mechanic that last time by with a 27-4 fast lap on the track. It's Fee Long Win. He is now four seconds ahead of Ethan Mechanic. Fee Long Win with a 27.073. A pretty cool. Oh, wow. Just about a oh, tumble there for laid Joshua up a bit Vigil. short, didn't he? Yeah, making a mistake there. That's going to allow, I believe, that's Camden Lime up into the number four spot now. And this is a B main, ladies and gentlemen. Open e buggy B main. So the top three once again trying to transfer in. Camden one spot out. Drake one spot in. 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. Looking at this B main lineup, I'm a little confused at how this is a B main. This <laughs> well, is, looks I like looked, an A main lineup. I honestly to me. had to read it twice before I said it. I'm like, <laughs> it says it on timing and scoring. I'm gonna go with it. You're absolutely right. This would be an A main anywhere else, right? Well, Adam Drake down the front side, onto the right-hand side of the track. He goes Drake up into the number three spot, chasing down Ethan Mechanic in second. Top three drivers spreading out just a bit here with only one minute left to go in the B main. Top three drivers going to be bumping up to the A main here in this one. Feel long win. Ethan Mechanic and Adam Drake on their way to the A main if they can hold on to it. But Camden Line, we can't count him out. The S-Works driver. Yeah, we saw some big changes there just a couple of laps ago as – we keep an eye on them and look at uh, Adam Drake there. Guys working the controllers. Here they come back around the left side. That big hole you're talking about, Drake, diving to the inside of it. Last time by the line, Camden Lyme with a 27-4. Drake with a 27-5. That's what I'm 30. so impressed with, the the skill, the ability that these guys have to you know, really put these cars within inches every single lap. There are a lot of ruts there on the outside of that left-hander. These guys able to... Set up, rotate the car a little bit earlier, drive down underneath them, come back through here. Here's where that hole is, and either go all the way through it, both tires through it, that's okay, uh, around it, under it, but you don't want to tag it with the right rear and launch the car. Yeah, and Felong win here. Time is going to expire. All he's got to do is make this corner, and he's got it. Felong win, your open e-buggy B main winner here in this one. He'll be bumping up to the A main along with Ethan Mechanic, and there's Adam Drake, so... Top three drivers win, Mechanic and Drake moving on to open e-buggy A-Main. Great battle, great race, as we would anticipate with that level of drivers. And a couple of those guys just fresh right out of that uh, that previous race as well, so warmed up, ready to rock and roll. Yeah, see those drivers coming off the track there. Looking at the tire choices there as well to see what they were going with. Philong went up there up top. As we look at our 2023 Visions results, Ethan Mechanic, nice job up there inside of the top two. Adam Drake, Camden Line, Braxton Coley, Spencer Klein, Vigil, Martin, Heckert, and Tung, unfortunately not able to advance into the A main. Well, just another fantastic race. That one seemed very quick after that. Uh, I know, the, right? <laughs> At both the 20-minute 20, the 20 20 minute race and then we saw the 30-lap race and yep. now a quick little hit here with the e-buggies. All right, let's get it over there to Scotty. Thank you very much, guys. You got one of our favorites here. We got a little bump. Fee, Fee, that was a, a quick race compared to the long nitro races, but you were able to keep Ethan and Adam behind you. T- tell us about that run. Nothing. Just Nothing to say. It was It was easy. It was hard. What do you think? Uh, well, I just got to stay consistent because I have Ethan and Adam right behind me. And I hit a big rut, so I, like, flipped over. And I lost it all the time, but I still bumped, so. Well, good job. Congratulations. Go get ready for your nitro. Okay. Thank you. All right. This is a little kid, 12 years old, from Louisiana. <laughs> Love he is it, man. absolutely phenomenal. We watched him come on the scene a couple years ago. He ran second at one of the biggest races this year, earlier in Las Vegas at the Silver State, and he's running with some of the best in the world. It's always great to see Little Bump doing well here at Visions. Back to you, Kenny Mike. Yeah, yeah, man, that's great stuff. I love the first question. Yeah, I got nothing. (laughs) He had plenty, though. He just had to think about it there for a second. Good stuff, man. Congratulations to that young man. He is very, very talented for sure. We saw, um, you know, Ryan Mayfield, he gets heated on both sides, right? I mean, he's just super competitive. But we saw him go up and uh, and shake his hand yesterday and congratulate him as well for a job well done. So it was super cool to see the other side. Yeah, absolutely. And a little bump getting the nickname from all of his bump ups that he did a few years back at the dirt nitro challenge he just kept bumping 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 all the way up into the sportsman a main as we talked about yesterday and now he's running with the best of the best and once again look what he's done he's bumped up he's bumped up into the a main so he's keeping the name alive there little bump only 12 years old (laughs) that's good good stuff man there's a beautiful overhead shot a lot of asphalt has been put down here since last year that is the lazy river off to the left hand side big pool over there just a little bit further to that Coconuts back up in there, a uh, establishment there where you can have some beverages and listen to some music. Off to the left-hand side will be that track. There's the over-under, that bridge up over the top, and then the under there as well. So Travis Mastron, a key part of that one, way off in the distance there. You can see all the motorhome parking as well. 
A shot to the left where our uh, bull riding and rodeo took place. Big concerts back in there. Looks like they are, uh, they're working that track. That's a huge step up, by the way. You go underneath that bridge, and then you, you tag that step up and sail up over that hill. Travis Pastrana has some uh, great footage that's out there, I believe, on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken, as they were burning this track in, getting it sorted. Good look at the S's there that they were competing on for the past couple of days and will compete on here a little bit later today as well with the Nitro Rally cars. Looks like the track is in great shape. Yeah, and like you say, just a fantastic facility. 1,600 acres. It just seems to never end. I mean, I yeah. found last night we found a new entrance we didn't even know existed that was on the other side of the park. I mean, you can come into this place from all different angles and every every which way. So it is wild to be here for sure, and uh, it's awesome to see that RC Racing is a part of it. Yeah, if you uh, want to make some plans to come in here and enjoy some racing, well, a lot of people were pulling in on Sunday and Monday of last week. Uh, this week, I should say, the, a, a number of days ago, and we had cars on track as early as Tuesday as they were uh, practicing and qualifying out here Tuesday evening and Wednesday as well. We started racing. Well, I should say we got a lot of rain Tuesday night, so Wednesday they shut the track down for short course off-road, but there was still a lot of racing going on around the complex. Sportsman Nitro Buggy coming up next. It is the A-Main, so this one will be important for sure. Yeah, Sportsman Nitro Buggy A Main, a 30-minute race for these drivers. Only six of them. They'll all be very close, that's for sure. It should be a good one to watch. Yeah, we've been talking about the Sportsman coming out here and uh, watching these drivers just get better literally throughout the week itself. They just continue to get track time, and uh, they settle in. Of course, the sportsmen's out here, to put this all in perspective in comparison to, uh, I'll use myself here, would absolutely destroy me. They would dominate. So they're very talented, but certainly working on their skills to try and get up to the level of the open drivers and slash invite drivers as we take a look at our starting grid there, as you just talked about, Mike. Uh, Just six of them here in this A main. Getting their warm-up time, about 40 seconds left inside of this warm-up session. But the sportsmen are a lot of fun to watch because there's no shortage of chaos. (laughs) And just when you think somebody has a nice big lead, they'll do some stunt driving, and you have a new leader. So uh, it's just the way it goes. Yeah, the cool part about RC racing is, is it doesn't matter whether you're young, old, talented, not. It's uh, it's something everybody can enjoy, and, and we've seen that here this weekend. We've seen some uh, some kids over at the Try Me Track. We've seen some uh, well-aged individuals over there as well having a good time. Of course, that uh, the demo and all that set up by our title sponsors, A-Main Hobbies and HPI Racing. Don't forget to check out amainhobbies.com for all your RC racing needs. As we're getting lined up here, getting set to go, Sportsman Nitro Buggy A Main. 30 minute race here for these drivers. Yeah, a year ago, those both of those roads right there that you see the cars traveling on outside of the track here were all gravel and dirt and rock. And uh, Jason Robinette, Gala, his wife, and the rest of the staff here have been actively very busy at paving. A lot of uh, a lot of this complex, so people can get around without stirring up dust and dirt. Matter of fact, I heard three asphalt companies at one time going 24/7 out here. So uh, wow, millions and millions of dollars have been spent literally since March at this complex. Looking for our green flag here to turn them all loose. Sportsman Nitro Buggy A Main. That is uh, Sean Miller out there communicating with the crew members. I believe that's, is that Brandon Rohde back in there doing some work? I believe it is. I catch him. I caught him working. He is relentless, actually. He, uh, he not, he's nonstop. Appreciate everything Brandon does. Off Here and we go. away. Sportsman Nitro Buggy, A main. Pretty clean start here for these top six drivers. 30-minute race here for these guys. 
Dylan Bontrager, Michael Forrest, Nicholas Logan, John Cayleys, Francis Sosing, and Blake Grimmington. We saw Dylan Bontrager. He was dominant yesterday in qualifying. And as we talked about, no shortage of chaos already. <laughs> A number of cars tumbling along here. But I'm really curious to see what the fuel mileage is for the sportsmen. Of course, as we talked about before there for the invites, the, the opens, they can probably stretch it about seven minutes or so and still be in a relatively safe window. But for the sportsmen, can probably go a little bit further. Why? Because they're not on the throttle as hard as the invite drivers. So curious to see when they decide to pit these. And, wow, a couple of them taking some really big hits. Yeah, trouble there. It looks like uh, I believe that was going to be Michael Forrest, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they come back down the front stretch right now. Dylan Bartray are going to be out front leading the way. Right out of the gate with a 29-2. Nicholas Logan in the number two spot. Michael Forrest in the three spot. Sosing, Kaylee's in, Remington. Oh, little uh, bump and grind right there. There's our race leader, Dylan Bontrager. And he is checked out already. 3.2 second lead over Nicholas Logan in the number two spot. Yeah, you mentioned it before. Went in a couple different categories here throughout the weekend. And he really started to settle in yesterday. Strung together some great laps, and looks like he is already on his game here when it counts this morning. So a bit of a tumble there as they get back going on to the left-hand side. Nicholas Logan up into the number two spot now. Yeah, I saw one of the cars here uh, go for a bit of a ride, but landed back on all fours as we'll give you another replay here. Ooh. Boom, and stick the landing. Hit the throttle. Here we go. That was a hard hit on the left rear, too. Yeah, surprising how tough these cars are. I would really think that they would be uh, damaged after some of the things that go on out here, but they just continue to charge forward. Very impressive. Well, it's Montrager out front. Nicholas Logan in second. Francis Sozing in third. Michael Forrest in fourth. John Cayley's and Blake Remington. They worked their way on the right-hand side. A couple people there in the chat asking uh, approximately uh, how much seat time do some of these sportsman drivers have exactly, and uh, it definitely kind of ranges. You know, a lot of the – I've talked to a couple of these. One of these drivers, I can't remember which one it was, it, this is their first year racing, and they said, yeah, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go big, so that's why I'm going to Visions, you know, and then uh, you got a couple other sportsman drivers that uh, – have been in it for a couple of years, and, and uh, it ranges. You know, you got guys that are pretty serious about it, some that are just weekend warriors that just want to do it for fun, and so it's kind of a mixture. Dylan Bontrager doing a great job here as he continues charging on. The crew members down there as well, ready to go here as soon as their drivers decide to bring them in, and they need to fuel them up. So long, uh, I mean... About halfway there, only three and a half minutes worth of run time here, so they should still have a fair amount before they need to come back in and top these things off. Yeah, Bontrager out front right now with a 15-second lead. Uh-oh. Sounds like in the background here, a car stuck wide open. That's not what you want to hear. <laughs> So with just six cars out here, um, traffic not a huge issue, but it only takes one, right? And you can get right in the back of somebody. Oh, and a flame out. So tough break right there. Oh, Dylan Bontrager, our race leader. Yeah, I mean, just flamed out. I mean, it should be out of fuel there. We're only four and a half minutes in. And there you see him working frantically to get Dylan back going again. Tell you what, if anybody can make this up, if you're going to flame out in a race, this would be the time to do it. He is back going once again. Yeah, tough, tough break. Had a great race going there. So Francis Sosin says thank you very much. Jumps up into the lead, followed up by Michael Forrest and then Nicholas Logan. Bontrager is going to drop deep down into the pack here into the fifth position out of six cars. Yeah, and on to the backside of the track there, Francis Sosing. Sosing definitely uh, 
he's got it. Oh, trouble there. Sozing's had a full weekend. He's been out uh, doing some photo work as well and taking some cool pictures that we've seen on uh, on Facebook as well as oh. racing, coming with a whole crew. Laying up just a little bit short and really launches those cars. I wonder if something's broke there in the steering. He's really struggling steering that thing. Here they come back around. And as we could uh, tell, the track's starting to get a little bit of dust on top. It's starting to get slick. And it's only going to get worse here for these guys. It's obviously, there's not going to be any water going down in between the racing. Francis Sosing out front. Michael Forrest in the number two spot. Nicholas Logan in third. John Cayley's in the four spot. So Bontrager, he right now looks like he's going to be a lap back from the leader. Can he make up a lap in 23 minutes? With the speed we saw yesterday, I mean, I think he could feasibly do that. We'll see. It's a lot of racing left to go, 23 minutes. We're going to start seeing some of these other guys making their pit stops here before too long as well. Yeah, that could change everything as they come in here and, uh, and make their pit stops, open up the door for, uh, for Bontrager to get back up in the hunt here. Just really curious what happened there, you know, for it to just flame out for no reason. It seemed like no reason. You know, and last year the track, as we had talked about, had a lot more rocks in it and things like that. And every once in a while, if you got a bad luck day, you get a rock up in the flywheel or something like that. But there's not. They did a great job. They brought in all new dirt this year. There's no real rocks in the track. And uh, so could have been something got up in the flywheel. Could have just been a fluke incident. Who knows? Oh, more trouble there. It flame out again for Dylan Bontrager. So he's definitely got something wrong there with that car. And that's pretty well going to seal the deal, I think, for Dylan. I don't think he's going to have a shot at coming back, at least up into the top for this one. Pit stops have begun. Well, that's Francis Sosing there. In and out of pit lane. What a difference. So we saw in the uh, in the invite race, we saw like a gun type of device. Yep. You know, putting the fuel down in, and he went with the bottle and the tube. He decided to go old school, go with the bottle. And, you know, I got to say, it. Uh, there's young Philong Wynn as he's working his way back towards the driver's stand, it looks like. When it comes to pit strategy and pit things like that, I mean, there's, there's no doubt that I think the fuel guns and the fuel sticks are obviously faster than the bottle, but... Some pit, uh, you know, pit crews and things like that, they just feel more comfortable with one or the other, and they can actually may not be faster than, say, a fuel stick, but more accurate. They just feel like they get the tank full and uh, a little safer than, than maybe a fuel stick or a fuel gun. Yeah, I mean, i got to say, they, they did it amazingly quick. Yes. I thought it was going to be a lot slower. Yes, they did. Once again, that step down, that uh, really provided some – some troubles for a number of the cars here a couple of days ago. Now it seems like most people have it kind of sorted out. Very possibly a, uh, a damper setting just to try and stick that. And it was developing holes, and the cars were rebounding, flying back up in the air, and they would try to set them in the air to make the right-hander. That immediately follows that, but now it doesn't seem to be much of an issue at all for anybody. Oh, and there's a race leader right there, Francis Sosing. in the green and white. Working his way through the infield, up and over the double, back around to the front side, down the front stretch he goes. And about uh, nine minutes complete inside of this 30-minute race. Back onto the left side there. That whole left side of the track, if you're just tuning in, is obviously new for this year. Last year, if you watched uh, the Visions broadcast, quite a bit smaller track last year. And... Uh, Definitely different than what most of these uh, world-class drivers are, are used to racing on as far as size-wise. So this year, the track quite a bit bigger. They took over where the A-Main Hobbies uh, demo track was last year and made the track quite a bit wider. And now the A-Main uh, A -Main track has their own setup out there in the parking lot next to the pits with HPI Racing. Francis Sosin uh, inheriting that lead after... Dylan Bontrager having some mechanical issues there with a couple of flame outs. And since he's gotten up front, has been spot on driving a great race. Yeah, everybody spread out quite a bit here in this one. Francis Sosing with a 16-second lead over uh, Michael Forrest. Michael Forrest is 16 seconds ahead of Logan. Oh, I just Garnet. said that. He yeah. <laughs> flew that thing, stuffed the nose, and then got into an incident with another car. Then goes down the step down, spins it around again. 
having all kinds of issues here on this next lap. Did I jinx him? Well, hopefully he got that out of the way there. It <laughs> looks like Dylan back on the track now. Dylan Bontrager, the green and pink. He had a, Sozin had about a 15-second gap there over Forrest. But, boy, he used up a bunch of that. Nineteen and a half minutes left to go here in this one. Four is still in the number two spot. Logan in the three spot. Kaylee's Remington and Bontrager. I'd be curious to know what happened exactly with Dylan's car for it to flame out twice like that, and uh, now he's back out there. So be curious to see. Maybe after the race we can catch up with him and see exactly what went wrong. So Sosin uh, doing having that troubled lap there did lose about five seconds, but still plenty of room here with a 10-second spread between himself and Michael Forrest. And then it goes uh, another 18 seconds back to Nicholas Logan. So Forrest with a lot of breathing room as well. Down underneath the 20-minute mark here, so a third of the race complete. Yeah, and this is a tough one. You know, only uh, six drivers entered into our Sportsman Nitro Buggy Division here this weekend in this A main. Back through the infield they go. Now up and over the double now, back around to the front side here. Fast lap on the track of this race was your race leader early on, Dylan Bontrager with that 28.3. Next fast lap is a 29.5 by our current leader. Oh, play a little cat and mouse here. Back and forth they go. Oh. Well, Francis Sosing out front still. Michael Forrest coming in for a pit stop there. May see another pit stop uh, here. Not that lap for our leader. As he's going to go on by that time around. Forrest in second. Logan Callies in fourth. Remington and Bontrager. 12.45 down, 7.15 to go here in this one. And once again, Scotty Ernst busy at it. What do you got down there for us, buddy? Troy from A Main Hobbies. We're here at the HPI Racing A Main Hobbies. Try me track a bunch of kids having fun. Troy, this is your second year doing this. It's just an absolute blast giving the racers here at Visions a chance to have some fun on the Try Me Track. Absolutely. The, the A Main Hobbies HPI uh, Try Me Track is a lot of fun for the kids and adults alike to come and try out some cars. We're running the HPI jump shots out here, stadium trucks, short course, monster trucks, kids, everybody's having a fun time. And then when the pros come up, we we actually hold up the track, the try me track, and have all the kids watch all the pros run, and that's great. Absolutely. I've watched it here over the last couple of days. Really cool. And like you said, big kids too. I see some parents here uh, doing some laps on the track. That kind of cool to see them racing with their kids. Absolutely. Yeah. Moms and dads uh, wheeling right with their kids, holding the transmitters, uh, maybe sometimes doing a little heat race battle, family heat race battle. So that's a lot of fun. For all the folks that are seeing RC for the first time, and there's a lot that will see this broadcast, what can you tell them? Where do they go? Where do they look for some of these products? Well, you can find everything everything you need at amainhobbies.com. We carry everything. We carry all the radio or the RTR kits, uh, planes, boats, but also all the parts you would need. So anything RC, amainhobbies.com has it. And this weekend we're featuring the HPI Racing, which they got everything from rally cars to touring cars to big eight scale to massive monster trucks. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. They've got everything here, HPI, 
They've got short course trucks, monster trucks, stadium trucks, drift cars, rally cars. They've got it all. Absolutely. It's uh, great to have you here again supporting the event. We thank A-Main Hobbies and HPI Racing. Just The kids are just here having a blast. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming over. Absolutely. This is all part of the experience we have envisioned. Kids here having a blast on the hay bales, jumping it, flipping it over, just having a blast. Under the sunshine here in Jay, Oklahoma, having fun here at Visions. Back to you, Ken and Mike. Well, yeah, absolutely awesome to see all the kids and uh, adults alike enjoying the A-Main Hobbies booth up there with the HBI Racing vehicles as well. Awesome to have them on board. Back on the racetrack now. Francis Sosing still going to be out front leading the way here in this one. Sosing out to a 19-second lead over Michael Forrest. So Sosing starting to check out here with 14 minutes, 15 seconds to go. So just past the halfway mark here. John Cayley's in the number three spot. Nicholas Logan in that four spot. Dylan Bontrager. Dylan was dominant in qualifying yesterday. I mean, he was just laying down some phenomenal lap times, laid down the, the fastest times. He was their top qualifier coming into this. Unfortunately, we've seen him flame out twice in this race, and it looks like now Blake Remington may be out of this one as well. So, unfortunately, there for those two drivers. Francis Sosing working his way back around to the front side of the racetrack here. Down the front stretch he goes on to the right-hand side around the ProTech HPI Racing section. Of course, we want to thank our sponsors, Teak and VP Fuels, Team Associated, Live Time as well. And a Divisions Event sponsors, Can-Am, Rugged Radios, Amsoil Project X, and Raceline Wheels. Sosing doing a good job holding on to this one with 19 seconds between him and Michael Forrest. Only 13 minutes left to go, but I tell you what, 19 seconds, that's a lot of race time or a lot of time on the racetrack. But with 13 minutes to go, anything can happen. So right now, Sosing's just trying to put it on cruise control, keep it where it's at. As you can see, he's trying to work his way through some lap traffic, waiting patiently for a way by there, not trying to push it too hard. Michael Force just crossed the line there. 12.45 left to go here. We're following our race leader. John Cayley's in the number three spot. Nicholas Logan in that four spot. Dylan Bontrager in fifth. Good view of the back straight there as they come on through the drop away. As you can see from the start of this race, a little bit of moisture in the dirt when they started this one, but 30-minute uh, race, that's a lot of race time, and this track is definitely getting dusty. It's getting loose on top, losing some of the moisture in some of the key areas, getting a little bit slick here and there. Sosin coming back down the back stretch once again. He's going to drop away. Michael Forrest in the number two spot. Still fast lap on the track. A 28-3 set early on by Dylan Bontrager, your top qualifier, who's sitting in fifth right now after two flameouts. There's Dylan right there, the green and pink buggy. Believe driving the Techno RC car. Down the back stretch he goes, trying to make up those lost laps. He is several laps back from our leaders right now. 11 minutes, 40 seconds to go. I don't know that he's going to be able to make all those laps quite back up. He may be able to move up a spot or two. It'll be close here. Sosing out front here. Forrest still in second. Great shot there from our drone cam of the racetrack. Forrest coming in for a pit stop there. 11-10 left to go in this one. There you see our, uh, our pit lane. That's Graham Hill there. Francis Sosing off the drop away there. One driver flaming out there in pit lane. Not sure who that was. Looks like Sosing may be coming in this time for a pit stop. And indeed he is. Here he comes into the pits. He is in and on the wall. Great shot right there. Using the fuel bottle. Sosing and he is full. He is. Oh no. Sosing is flamed out. And Francis Sosing, your first place driver. I told you he had that 19 second lead. More trouble there for another driver. Sosing backfired up and going now. Sosing back onto the racetrack. 
Here he comes down the backstretch. After the flame out, we'll see where he's going to be with Michael Forrest. He had a 19 second lead. Onto the side of the track there. There's Michael Forrest on the backstretch. Chosen with a sizable lead now as they are stretched out here between first, second, and third. Under 10 minutes to go inside of this one, and from bad to worse right there. Yeah, and Sosing now only out to a 2.6 second lead after the flame out. So there's Sosing on the left-hand side. There's Michael Forrest, not far back from him with only 9.25 left to go here in this one. Can Forrest close this gap up? These guys have been pretty spread out this entire time. Yeah, but what a huge opportunity right there from Michael Forrest. As you talked about, I mean, all of that gap gone now. Two and a half seconds. Back around on the right-hand side. Forrest that time by with a 32-6. Francis Sosing a 29-5. So Francis starting to stretch his lead back out now. Nine minutes to go. Oh, kind of, oh I was just going to say, and that's what we talked about here at the beginning of this race, right? I mean... Because it's sportsmen, they make some mistakes from time to time. And two and a half seconds, I mean, you hit a tube or you lay up a little bit short on one of those doubles and tumble it over, you end up upside down, you need a little bit of help. I mean, it takes up a, a few seconds immediately. I really kind of enjoy it, the imperfection, if you will, of the category. It makes it pretty exciting. I was going to say, the racing definitely some of the most exciting racing you're going to find is in our sportsmen and open classes for sure. Right now, uh, Francis Sosing looking at a possible A main win here this weekend. Coming down Forrest to the not even mark. in the picture here. It says the spread is just a little bit under five seconds. Missed it there, had to single single. Yeehaw. Oh, and I believe that might be Forrest <laughs> there coming goes into Forrest the picture. Going yeah. for his own ride. And Forrest now uh, possibly in trouble. 7.45 to go. These drivers going to make one more pit stop. As Sosing works his way back onto the front side. Sosing going single, single again. I'm wondering, could there be something wrong there with Francis's buggy? Here he comes back down the back stretch. Everything looks to be all right. Just had a full lap there of just going single, single on all the different doubles. Yeah, seems to have settled back in now. Now he's back at it. Needed to settle in a little bit. Yeah, seems to be flying perfectly and landing nicely. Back on the front straightaway. Looks like one of the other competitors are already making a pit stop there. Seven minutes left to go here in this one. We'll see Francis Sosing make one more pit stop. Here comes Sosing down the front stretch once again. Not going to pit that time by. Forrest in the number two spot. John Cayley's in the three spot. Logan in the fourth spot. Bontrager in fifth. And Blake Remington rounding out your top six right now. Of course, Bontrager off to such a great start. Really had a great race going. And some sort of mechanical going on there for him. Flamed out once and then got going once again. Had lost the lead. Fell down there to fifth place. And then it flamed out again. And as you said, we're not real sure what the problem was. But unfortunately, it destroyed his race. Yeah, tough break for him for sure. Michael Forrest in the pits here. Currently in second place. Get in and out of there. We'll see if Sosing's getting ready to come in the pits here this time by. If not this time, I'm guessing next time. Here he comes into pit lane. Yeah, well within the window here, safely. Just a quick splash there. He is off and running. Very respectable pit stop there. See if he can close this race out with just that five minutes to go. Oh, 
I thought there for a second, Ken, I thought he flamed out as out there in the <laughs> fluff. I think he was just spinning and unable to get going. Be pretty cool to walk out of here and say you won the uh, the A main at Visions, right? Absolutely. Sportsman Nitro Buggy Class A main uh, winner is nothing uh, nothing to slouch at. That's for sure. Francis Sosing looking to wrap it up here with four minutes thirty five seconds left to go. Yeah, it's really done a great job the entire race. There was in second place behind Dylan and. Dylan really had a great race going there, but as we documented already, that uh, had a few issues. But since Sosin's taken over the lead, had a had a couple of moments there for sure, but settled in, single, singled a couple of the jumps, got himself uh, set once again, set the composure back to a good spot, and now has settled in to, uh, to make his final pit stop and see if he can't close this thing out. Yeah, we're looking at John Cayley's here, our third-place driver. He is going to be 45 seconds back on the clock from Michael Forrest and 49 seconds ahead of Nicholas Logan. Yeah, and to put that in perspective, the uh, lap times running around here are up around the 30-second range. Three thirty left to go here in this one. So sing Forrest. Kaylee's Logan Bontrager, I don't see a whole lot changing unless something comes up with Sosing and Forrest. Everybody else, I think, pretty well settled in their positions with only 3.30 left to go. Yeah, winding this one down. Pretty long race here at 30 minutes. Certainly the longest that they've had here throughout the three days that we've been at MAO. It's a long time to see, you know, to keep the concentration dialed in, man. It's not, not an easy feat, but another part of the program. Oh. Dylan taking him up high there. And then the shortcut, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Probably pretty bummed out, and I haven't seen him flame out again after those two times, so... I'm with you. I mean, I wonder what would cause it and that they were able to get it sorted that quickly. No, and I'm wondering, perhaps maybe a burnt glow plug or something like that, and they, they put a new plug in there, and uh, now it's running good. Clock continues to tick down this one, this A main here, for our Sportsman Nitro buggies. Down to the two-minute warning. Sosin continues to rip them off. Nice job. Out front, the lead, not a gigantic one here at 2.8 seconds. The top two certainly with a safe margin here over third place, but at least according to timing and scoring, Forrest within three seconds here. Minute 30 to go. Sosing out front, leading the way here. As my oh, hard hit there for Sosing. Able to continue on here, <laughs> man. Oh man, with about a minute to go here, those are just things that make your heart stop. That is what you don't want to do right there, if you're Sosing. Ah ah, tank slapper. Singles that thing up. 45 seconds to go. Keep it calm, man. Keep those hands smooth. Finish this thing up. After 30 minutes of racing, Francis Sosin will need to put in about one more lap, maybe one, two more laps here if he gets across the stripe there where he has to run an extra. But right now has a one-and-a-half-second lead. That's where it's at after wow. 30 minutes. Those are the two cars. This one's not over, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Forrest right there 
trying to close the gap, applying the pressure on Sosi, and has turned this into a late race. Looking for the stripe right here, and they're, they're going to have to run an extra lap. Five seconds left on the clock. They're going one more. Kim, we've had literally nothing to talk about in this race for almost 20 minutes, and here we're down <laughs> to 10 seconds, and they are right there together. We appreciate that. Out and around the bump. I don't know if that was by design, but that's what he did. Oh, no. That's a single, single. Oh, no. They, they land back and they land on all fours and they're oh, back again. No. Pass her up, baby. Get it done. How about this on this last lap for the Sportsman Nitro A main? Unbelievable. Oh, and he hangs on. Wow. Sosin is going to hang on in Forrest right there. 1.3 at the stripe, but what a battle at the end. Handshake between the two. That was wild, man. Wow. It took us 29 and a half minutes to get there, but that was wild. <laughs> that was worth every minute of not having anything going on. That that was in intense finish right there. Wow. Francis Sosi, <laughs> Michael Forrest taking your top two spots there. John Cayley's taking third, Nicholas Logan fourth, Dylan Bontrager fifth, and Blake Remington rounding out your top six. What a race there for Sportsman Nitro Buggy here from 2023 Visions RC at Mid-America Outdoors. Yeah, that ended up awesome. Super cool. <laughs> you never know, right? That said was... it right from the very beginning, especially with these sportsman yeah. competitors. <laughs> Thank you, oh, well, there you see the track crew, Joey Christensen, Aaron Webb, doing a little bit of uh, sweeping there on the start straight, getting the uh, starting positions ready for our next race. All right, get some water laid down here. And once again, yeah, broom through. off that uh, that starting line, and here it is. Last lap shenanigans here between <laughs> first and second place. This right here is getting it done. <laughs> yeah, that. So seen out front, Michael Forrest trying to steal that thing away. And the last lap just could not get it done. Awesome stuff.
And welcome back to Jay, Oklahoma. We're at Mid-America Outdoors for the 2023 RC Racing at Visions Off-Road. Good look at the Lazy River here once again in the big pool area. Everybody stacked up there, side-by-sides everywhere around here to get around this park. Well, one of the players that uh, certainly is the center of attention no matter where he goes when it comes to RC Racing is the Chandler, Arizona resident, and Ryan Mayfield. Had a chance to speak with him earlier. He's a passionate dude. There is no doubt about it, about his racing. He is very, very competitive. Currently ranked third in the world, first in the U.S. A tough, tough player. Finished up seventh overall here one year ago, and we had a chance to sit down with him earlier this weekend. Hi, I'm Ryan Mayfield, uh, 36 years old from Chandler, Arizona. Been racing for 20 plus years. Uh, I race for Techno RC, J Concepts, Hobby Wing, A Main Hobbies, Pro Tech, and VP Racing. When we're doing these kind of special events when we're racing for a lot of money, um, it does change things. It kind of changes the vibe of the race a little bit. Um, seems like, especially when it's like all heads up racing, it's like everybody's out for blood, everybody's trying to win the money on lap one every time we're on the track. And um, I understand it's, it always interests me because we're always racing for money. We do this professionally. We make bonus money all the time. But for whatever reason, when it's like you know you're going to get a big check right then after the main, it just bumps up the pressure, makes the atmosphere a little more, you know, competitive. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's always interesting. It's, it kind of makes it cool, makes it fun. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we all race each other hard, try to keep it as respectful as possible and, uh, you know, have a beer with each other afterwards. Who do I think is the best driver here? Uh, with just straight outright pace is most likely Dakota Fend. Um, I think I have um, maybe slightly better race craft in a long main event as far as just like being able to run the same exact lap every single time. Um, but he's actually doing that nowadays too. So um, I know when I come to a race, I'm shooting for Dakota. Um, and honestly, I'm shooting for whoever's in front of me. But Dakota's been really fast lately. Uh, my name is Ted. And so let's go back and show you what happened here in the invite A main number one. That was Mason Fuller. Ryan Mayfield went up a little bit high there, opened up the door. Fuller was right on his rear wing the entire time for a number of laps, stuffed it down in there. They got together. I mean, really kind of a racing incident. Um, one was down on the bottom taking advantage. The other one slid up a little bit high. But because of that, tempers already heated Mayfield also part of a situation with Ty Tessman a year ago and certainly voiced his displeasure. Well, much the same this year. He voiced his displeasure to Mason Fuller as well. I mean, here, at the end of the day, we're talking about the highest levels of competition. The adrenaline is pumping, man, and it is hard to just walk away. It's hard to just turn it off. Yep, yep, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And, uh, you know, like you say, I think on the racetrack, everything happens so fast as well. You know, obviously, Mayfield's upset about it. We'll see how it all plays out. Whether it was intentional or not, I don't think he intentionally went in there to take him out. But it's it's uh, you know it's tough racing, and these guys are going for some big money. And uh, yeah, this is going to be an exciting one for sure. So invite nitro buggy number two. Starting grid, we'll show you our starting grid here with, how about that, young Long win. We saw him pick up that win, obviously, in the second uh, the second heat race one day ago. Great job for the young man, 12 years old. And it was Ryan Mayfield that walked up to him, shook his hand, said congratulations, by the way. And, of course, Jared Tebow, as we've already documented, not here, unfortunately. We hope he feels better. Mason Fuller, Jared Wiggins there inside of the top five. Dakota Finn, Joe Bornhorst, Spencer Rivkin, Camden Lime and Cole Ogden. Well, again, obviously, all these drivers are great, going to be great to watch. Long win. He did a fantastic job yesterday, but Ryan Mayfield starting second. He's going to be the one to watch in this race. And with Jared not here off the grid, Mason starts right behind him. 
So we'll keep an eye on uh, on Ryan Mayfield here, of course, starting off in that second position right there behind the long win. And we'll hone in on Mr. Ryan Mayfield. As we just heard from him, I mean, as big as they come. I mean, he was ranked number one in the world whenever we were here last year. And, of course, ranked number three now. Always a top competitor. Anytime he shows up, a threat to win. See him up there ready to rock and roll here. Feelong win, never bobbled. He had the pressure of a Ryan Mayfield behind him and brought it across the stripe in front. He sure did. And it was cool yesterday to see Ryan Mayfield head over to and, uh, a lot of those guys congratulating Feelong win on his big win yesterday in the qualifier heat race. And uh, Fee is definitely going to be one to watch for many years to come here in the RSC industry. I've got a feeling. And here we're looking at Ryan Mayfield as they take their warm-up laps and get set to uh, bring him in to line him up for invite race number two. Ty Testman, of course, took the win in invite number one. But Ty, he has got his work cut out for him to go for that uh, three-race sweep as he is starting third. On the grid. Woo. A lot of positions to pass there. Some really tough players on a track that clearly has been tough to pass on. So having a clean sweep here is going to be a tall order today, but never say never when it comes to racing. Yeah, well, we're on the uh, the chess cam there with uh, the King Richard Saxton, pit guy and mechanic for Spencer Rivkin. We saw Rivkin early on as well. And Scotty Ernst, you can see him standing down there at the starting line in the middle of the front straightaway. Let's get it down there to Scotty. All right, thank you very much, guys. We appreciate it. It's time for showtime number two, A main number two. Last round's winner, Ty Testament, all the way in the back of the grid. As we roll to the front, we got Ryan Mayfield starting in the number two spot. Fee Long is going to start on pole. It's going to be very exciting. Starting spot is everything here at Visions 2023. Back to you, Ken and Mike. Thanks a lot, Scotty. 0.21 cubic inches, 2.8 to 3 horsepower, 3,200 grams, better part of 7 pounds there, about 40 miles an hour inside of these cars, and, of course, burning nitro methane. The split there, about 30% or so nitro, 8% oil, 62% methanol. So uh, work all those numbers in there together. That will help you out to, uh, to know a little bit more about these cars, of course. They are incredible machines. And we're ready to start A-Main number two. Here we go. Joey Christensen starting this off here with this one. Cars are down and quiet, and we are off and underway. Into the first turn we go. You two or three Mayfield. wide. A couple of cars oh, going up no. and wide. And a oh. mayhem here on the starting opening lap. Ty Tessman getting caught up that. Adam Drake caught up in there. Cole Ogden as well. And everybody somehow ending back on all fours and able to stay on the throttle and get going here once again. Well, Feelong win, the young phenom there. Young phenom, I will say. And it looks like he's already been passed. It looks like Ryan Mayfield may have got the best of him. So Ryan Mayfield right there just kind of did a similar move that Mason Fuller put on him earlier on Fee. Fee didn't get uh, tumbling, but he put a wheel in on him, gave him a bump, and bumped him out of the line and took it over. So Ryan Mayfield, uh, as his clothing line uh, through Jay Concepts would say, no apologies. He's coming through. Yeah, it's race time, man. The money's on the line. Mayfield driving away here early on, looking for some clean track. We'll go back to 30-lap uh, race here, mandatory pit stop. Well, of course, at this distance, they're going to have to make one. And Fee Long Wink coming right back. How about that? Yeah, Fee not letting him out of his sight right now. Looks like Mason Fuller up in the number three spot, chasing him down. Joe Bornhorst up in the number four spot now. Joe's going to be one to keep an eye on. And, of course, Spencer Rivkin, the one we got to look for. Ty Tessman buried in the pack right now in the 10th place spot. Well, and I think we have to talk about Mason Fuller, right? He had a great finish there, one round to go. And Fuller getting under attack here by Joe Bornhorst. Talked to Joe a little bit earlier today. Oh, oh trouble there for Wynn goes win. for a tumble. Talked to Joe a little bit earlier today. Joe feeling very comfortable with the S-Works cars here this weekend. Trying to put the pressure on Mason Ford. So now this is two and three. Ryan Mayfield trying to stretch out his lead just a bit here in this one. Bornhorst into third. Ribkin will be up into the number four spot. And I believe Jared Wiggins made it up into five. I think uh, we have to think about Fuller being the overall leader going into this final A main. I know this is early on in this one right now, but with a solid finish there in that first A and right up front here again in second place in this second A, if he can hang on to this spot, as I say, we're a long ways to go in this one, but he'd be looking good for the uh, for the overall come A main number three. No, you're absolutely right. I think uh, that's something that we got to keep in mind here for this one. Ty Tessman still buried back in the pack in the 10-place spot. 
He's not moving up very quickly here in this one. So Ryan Mayfield, Mason Fuller, looking good. One and two. Joe Bourne. Oh, Bourne Horse makes a mistake. Rivkin going to be right there behind him. Rivkin not able to make the move, though. Rivkin relentless, though, in that first A main. Was able to really apply a lot of pressure. We'll see if he can do the same thing here to Joe. And here they come back down the front stretch. Keep an eye on Ribkin after the drop away. That's where Ribkin makes up his time. An instant replay here. Opening lap chaos. Wow. And how everybody got, look at, look at everybody crashing. They all end up on all fours and get going again without a single assistance from anybody. Yeah, the, the one that got the uh, short of the stick on that one, Adam Drake, tumbling all the way down the hill into oncoming lane, had to jump all the way back over a couple lanes to get back going. He has worked his way up in the 10th spot now, just behind Ty Tessman in ninth. Ryan Elon Mayfield. Wynn has really tumbled, starting off on the pole and uh, has fallen all the way down to 11th place. Tough luck here for Philong Wynn. He struggled here a year ago after bumping in as well in the A mains. Was never able to get inside of the top 10. Just did not work out for him. He's hoping he'd have a really good showing here. But so it goes. How about Mayfield? Mayfield out there doing what Mayfield does. He gets some clean air now, has four-second gap over himself and Fuller, who's in second. Which, as we've talked about on this racetrack right here, it's hard to put a gap between yourself and somebody else. So for Ryan Mayfield to stretch that out, he's really got uh, the power to the ground. He's putting it down here in main event number two. As you can see, Fuller under attack here from Joe Bornhorst, and they got Spencer Rivkin coming up behind him. Rivkin's going to be another one when it comes to that overall that we got to keep an eye on because Rivkin had a first, a good first run as well in a main number one. Yeah, and with Mayfield being out front, I mean, Mayfield was there inside of the top five in that first a main out front here, so he's going to be right there as well going into that final a main if he can hang on to this position. Again, a long ways to go. As you take a look at second, third, and fourth there, just below our live time and scoring. Yeah, and Rivkin starting to put the pressure on Joe Bornhorst now. Bornhorst kind of caught right in the middle. He's got Mason Fuller just ahead of him. Rivkin right behind him. He's trying to play defense and offense. Oh, Rivkin tumbles. So now Bornhorst can take a deep breath and put all of his focus towards Mason Fuller up ahead of him instead of worrying about Rivkin there behind him. 19 laps left to go here in this one. Ryan Mayfield trying to check out. Looking for an AMA number two win. A little gap there. Puts a little bit of distance there on, on Joe making his first appearance here at Visions. S-Works factory driver looking for a breakout win here in 2023. Ranked 13th in the world, 6th in the U.S., Here yeah, and he is right there, man. He is just waiting for one bobble from Fuller. Mayfield back. just ahead now. Yeah, back around on that right-hand side. Mayfield may have made his pit stop that last time by. It was checking over there. Do not have a time for that, but it uh, it is possible. Showing a last lap at 27.4. That would not indicate it. We'll see what the next lap says. Well, that looks like to be Cole Ogden just ahead of him there. Ogden going to be uh, trying to keep from going a lap down. If Mayfield was able to make a pit stop and get back out in front, it would be spectacular. Last I checked, he had about a four-second lead. That would be a pretty amazing in-and-out effort. The delta on uh, pit road as well. With the pit stops averaging about six seconds or so. A couple of fast ones down in the five-second range. Oh, mistake there for Mason Fuller. Bumps the pipe just a bit. Joe Bornhorst trying to close that gap up on him. Not going to be quite close enough to capitalize on it, though. Through the drop away they go. Bornhorst not going anywhere, man. He is there. Keeps applying that pressure on Fuller. Like a lap car up there in front of him. 15 laps left to go here for these drivers. This time by the line, Ryan Mayfield still out front. Great shot there by Mayfield in and out for fuel. Looks like Bornhorst in and out for fuel as well. Bornhorst with a pit stop there, 6.9 seconds. 6.6 .6 seconds for Ty Tessman. 
How about Tessman making it up in the fifth place? Yeah, Tessman going to work his way. his way right back into being a threat here in that last day. Absolutely. We were, oh, we were so focused on these top three drivers right now, we didn't even notice as uh, Ty is chipping away at it. And that's no easy task here this weekend. There's your race leader, Ryan Mayfield. As he works his way down the back stretch over the drop away. Yeah, that is the one. I mean, this is the A main for Tessman. Starting off in the 13th position, you've got to pass a lot of cars here, and he's been able to do that. Dakota Finn making his way up into the mix as well. I don't know if Finn has made his pit stop yet. And, you know, it's interesting to see all the drivers coming to this. When when we interviewed them, they said, who's your biggest competition? They all kind of said, well, we, you know, Dakota, Dakota, Dakota. Dakota's kind of had a little bit of an Here comes weekend. Dakota right now. It's like he's going to duck into the pits and do a refuel. And I was thinking that same exact thing. He's tucked in behind two really fast guys. He caught them. It was going to be difficult to pass them. Come in, get your fuel, get away from that pack. Get out there and see if you can get some clean laps in and maybe beat them whenever they come into the pits. Once again, that battle here between Mason Fuller and Joe Bornhorst. They got uh, Cole Ogden just ahead of him there. He's going to be a a lap down. Ogden in the 14th place spot. Still Mayfield out front, 27 flat. As you can take a look at the lap times and put a couple of tenths of a second there on Fuller. All of these guys running lap times literally within a couple of tenths of each other. Bornhorst down there, of course, battling with Fuller. Still puts a 27.38 on the board. Behind him, Rivkin, a 27.19. Now Bornhorst goes a 26.9, getting after Fuller. However, Fuller went a 27.1. So the top three drivers there all literally within a tenth of a second there in lap time. And a big ride right there for Joe. That's a tough break right there for Joe Bornhorst as he was right there with Mason Fuller. That's going to allow Ty Tessman and Spencer Rivkin, though, possibly to move up into the third and fourth place spots here. We'll wait and see when they come around to the line. As you can see, Fuller now. There it is. Tessman now up into the top four. Ten laps left to go here. Can, can Ty Tessman move up any further in this one? And there he goes right there. Tries to make a move on Rivkin. They just about collide. Rivkin in the number three spot. Ty Tesman right there behind him in the four. Here they go up and over the short double. I got to tell you, if he can get up into third place, I think he would still have low score here of everybody going Rib- into that final aim aim. Rivkin bumped the inside pipe a bit. Here comes Tesman. Tesman's going to shoot up the outside. Watch this. He's cutting under right here. He's got a hot rod, man. That thing is on. Right on the wing. You got to admire the ability of these guys to drive so close to one another and not get collected up. Oh, simply mind boggling. I mean, that's the most impressive part of, to me. I mean, I, obviously, they're extremely good hitting the same mark time and time and time again, but then to do it in traffic around other cars, that is a game changer. The tie test been falling back just a little bit there. Eight laps to go here. We'll see if he can close the gap back up. Rivkin, no, no slouch for sure, did not bobble underneath all of that pressure. Never opened up the door. Mayfield still out front, followed up by Mason Fuller. Joe Bornhorst, unfortunately, going for a big ride there, was in third place, applying pressure on Mason Fuller for pretty much the entire race, but had that mistake, went for a big ride. Rivkin and Tessman took advantage of it and jumped up a spot. Here we go again. Yeah, Tessman all over the back door right now of Rivkin. Clearly the faster car, right? Able to close up that gap a couple of times. Rivkin getting up on two wheels. Oh, oh, oh what a save for Ty Tessman. He goes up on two wheels, catches the back of Rivkin. Joe Bornhorst now in the wing of Tessman. Tessman gets going here one more time. So Bornhorst picks up one of those spots that he lost, but Tessman is the one. Nope. Did Bornhorst just get around Tessman? He did. Bornhorst has made his way past Tessman. I did not see what happened. I'll be curious to see exactly how that went down. So Joe Bornhorst back up into the number three spot now. The excellent job here, of course, out clear the first two players of Mayfield and Fuller, but quite a battle going on here for third and fourth. Four laps left to go, Ken. I mean, Tessman was in position to have a... Four-point score going into the final A main. Now we'll have a score of five, so we'll have a couple of players in there right around that number. 
Yeah, and Ty is pushing hard here with only four laps left to go, trying to chase down Joe Bornhorst. Instant See if we replay. can find out what happened here, Mike. All right, let's take a look at here. Looks like uh, Bornhorst. Oh, cuts oh. oh, gives him the wing right there. Bornhorst spinning. Now that out. might be a booth <laughs> review, right? I that, mean, that one's a good uh, bit different than what we saw before between Fuller and Mayfield. Joe Bornhorst, uh, no love right there for Ty. Ty's right behind him, though. Three laps left to go. For our producer that was talking about bumpers, that's a bumper. That's, that's giving somebody a bumper that's right there. That's a bumper, there. yes. <laughs> Here we go. I got a feeling, though, Ty's going to retaliate. He's going to be close enough into the 180 corners we go. Here comes Ty. Ty switch backs. See if he feeds a little bit back. Does he keep it clean? Ooh. In your racing career, as we watch out here, just a couple of laps to go, have you seen those spots given back by the booth? I, it, it's rare. It is rare, but it does happen from time to time. I don't know if that one in these circumstances is going to be enough to turn that around. Uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough call. That Joe hanging in, on here. I've got shoes. Winding them down. Oh, he had the spot right there to give it to him. Oh, there it is. Ty Tessman, a beautiful was pass. That, four? that was Mason Ford that spun out that oh. just broke past him. And Ty Tessman gets around. Ty Tessman goes to second. Unbelievable. A first place finish in a second. If anything happens to Mayfield here, he has a shot at a sweep. Oh, Bornhorst makes a mistake. Ty Tessman up into the number two spot from 13th on the grid. A phenomenal drive right now. Mayfield out, and I believe just crossed the stripe here. That is 30 laps. Ryan Mayfield's going to grab the win here. Ty Tessman, next one in line, and he's going to cross the stripe. And second from 13th place. What a spectacular effort there out of Ty Tessman. We will not have a clean sweep nor the bonus that goes with it. But, boy, Ty Tessman is looking pretty coming in to this final A main. And I'm not sure where he starts there, but given the fact that he started in the front and then in the back, I would say somewhere in about the middle of that A main is where he's going to start this uh, this third A main. Wow. What a turn of events right there. That was insane. Great, great racing. And, I mean, everybody has pretty much documented that it's going to be tough to pass out here. Ty Tessman just did it from 13th to 2nd. Great, great stuff here. And some great racing back in there as well for uh, Tessman, obviously, picking four, but Joe Bornhorst and Rivkin and Mason Fuller, all of those really scrapping hard there all along the, the way. Ryan Mayfield getting around Feelong win the very beginning of this race and then checked out. Look at our results here. Ryan Mayfield with the win. Ty Tessman second. Joe Bornhorst third. Spencer Rivkin, Mason Fuller, Dakota Finn, Adam Drake, Jared Wiggins, Camden Lime, Caden Fuller, Ethan Mechanic, Feelong win, Cole Ogden, Brandon Rose rounding out your field there in that one. What a race for Invite Nitro Buggy, A main number two. And once again, we're going to get it down there to Scotty Ernst. He's with our winner. Thank you very much, Ken. Appreciate it. We're here with Ryan Mayfield. And Ryan, you stood him a long 45 minutes, but these sprint races, they're seriously intense. Yeah, uh, that was a good one. Started second again, started second in, in the first main and just didn't couldn't capitalize on that starting position. Uh, ended up fourth in that one. And in this one, I just came up here with a little different attitude. Like, you just got to capitalize. When you start that close to the front, you got to try to win them. So um, that's what I did. I started, uh, got into fee a little bit on the beginning there. He went a little wide, gave him a little love tap. You know, he kept going, got around him, and then just focused forward. And uh, I made a tire change that time, a little smaller pin tire, and the car was a lot faster than it was in A1. So I was able to cruise around. Fuel mileage is obviously a concern with everybody. So I was able to cruise around the track the whole time, basically quarter throttle, um, and just really conserve fuel as much as I could. And um, car felt great. That was probably one of the best cars I've driven in a long time. Did everything I needed it to do. And I uh, can't thank everybody enough. Techno J Concepts, A Main Hobbies, ProTech RC. You know, without these guys, we wouldn't be here doing this. I'll copy that. Well, well done. Good job. Go get them in round three. Appreciate you. All right. But meantime, Joey's got a big check here. $1,500 goes to Ryan Mayfield. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to act. I'm going to. So, Scotty down there getting in touch with our winner. Congratulations to Ryan Mayfield on a great effort there. Mayhem there on the opening lap of A main number two for the invite category. And then, of course, some tough racing in the back there for for Bornhorst, who went for a ride. Fuller, who went for a ride deep. Tessman picking up some spots along the way. It was definitely on there for second, third, and fourth. 
So, once again, we will uh, go back down to Scotty. In the race, but was able to get back up to second. So, I uh, was happy with how everything's going. It's good. I made, tried to make the best of it, and I couldn't be happier with um, getting second out of that. Mayfield ran an awesome race, obviously starting from front. He did what he needed to do. Uh, but, yeah, just thankful all my sponsors again, sticking behind me, my family, and most, most importantly, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, well, good job. You're leading the points right now going into third final. Best of luck. Thank you. All right, there you go. We get Joe Bornhorst over here. What's up, Joe? Joe, first time I got to chat with you, but uh, well done in the second final. Yeah, thanks. Um, got a little lucky in the start. Uh, had a little carnage that I, I was able to get around and, uh, you know, got out the third there. Me, Mason, and, and Spencer were all kind of rolling around and um, kind of sitting behind Spencer, or, uh, sitting behind Mason there for about half the race. There's not really a whole lot of places that we can pass unless we kind of make it happen. So um, I was kind of just trying to make it through the pit stop, stay close, uh, had a clean stop. And then, um, yeah, me and Ty were battling. Um, tried to, like, kind of enter high and then square him up and, he had the same idea, I think, and got a, had a little uh, little rub in there, but um, yeah, not on purpose. But um, then, whenever we got around Mason when he was on the tube, he had the inside. I didn't really fight it a whole lot. It's probably right that that he uh, had the spot back. So um, yeah, pumped on third, had a sixth in the first one. So probably sitting decent on points. Um, have a, a tenth starting spot the next one. So kind of need to get lucky on the beginning a little bit and drive well again and see where the cards fall. All right, well, we just watched Ty go from 13th, you know, to the front, so it can be done. Best of luck in final three. Thank you. All right, there you go, Big Joe. Joe having a good run here in final number two. Throw it back to you, Ken and Mike. Yeah, thanks a lot, Scotty. Yeah, Joe with a great run as well, starting off in seventh, bumping up into third. Rivkin from eighth up to fourth, so some passes definitely being made there in that second A main. We'll take a quick break here, and we'll be right back to MAO. Stay with us. Plenty of great racing yet to come. This is 2023 RC Racing at Visions Off-Road. We've had a great start to this day here. It has been wide open. Some incredibly good racing action, both from our sportsman category. It took us 29 and a half minutes to get there, but the last lap was incredible in the sportsman nitro category at A-Main there. And, of course, our two invite A-Mains have certainly delivered. Ty Tessman sitting in the cast catbird seat here to win the overall as we will eventually come up with our third and final a main in the meantime we want to focus on the number one ranked man in the world he uh he's known as the phenom dakota finn at 25 years of age is back out here back-to-back national champion and making his debut here at visions we had a chance to speak with him earlier today my name is dakota fend uh, 26 years old i grew up in michigan and now live in indiana uh, sponsored by Team Losi Racing, Ultimate, J Concepts, Trinity, Spectrum, Horizon Hobby, Beach RC, Nitro Lux, Stick It One Racing, and Bradley Fine Line Designs. I wasn't here last year, uh, but I was able to uh, watch, and this will be my first year here racing. So last year looked like a lot of fun, very exciting racing, and uh, really just a cool overall event in general. So excited to be here and uh, have a good time. Racing at the Visions race uh, for money with the actual prize pool is a little bit different than normal. Uh, typically, we're just racing for contingency for the sponsors, uh, so this makes Visions a little bit unique as there's actually a prize money on the line from the actual event itself. It's been pretty cool to be ranked number one in the world now recently on the top 25. It's, uh, it's been a really long process. Uh, the last two years have, have just been an uphill battle. We started out pretty, pretty low down and just had some mechanicals and some races that just didn't go well. So they've uh, been slowly dropping off and been replaced with good results. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see all the hard work paying off um, for myself and just from the whole team in general. Uh, it's, a, it's a big, big undertaking from everyone involved. So it's cool just to see it uh, paying off and we're just going to try and keep it rolling. Coming here, I definitely feel like I have a little bit of a target on my back. Uh, it's it's part of racing when you're having a, a good season, a good couple of years. You know everyone's everyone's gunning for you, um, and that's that's part of racing. The level keeps getting raised higher and higher, and uh, you know someone will find something special and be on that top level, and then uh, everyone else is working hard catching up, and that's uh, just a never-ending cycle. 
Just uh, We just came off the U.S. Nationals a couple weeks ago. Uh, we ran two classes there, the truck and buggy class. Truck class had some uh, really unfortunate luck there in the end. Uh, last minute or so, had a, had a mechanical but was able to uh, limp at home and still end up with a podium finish. Uh, definitely, it was definitely frustrating uh, for me and the team to have that happen so late on in, in the main event after how well it had been going. Um, we were able to uh, kind of turn around, bounce back, get our heads back in the game and uh, come out and buggy swinging and uh, come home with the U.S. National Championship in that. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been awesome. It was cool to go back to back on that in uh, 2022 and now 2023 as well. It's definitely interesting uh, telling telling people that I've met. You know what I do pr- do for a living. Um, racing RC cars is definitely a unique profession that uh, not a lot of people are fortunate enough to be able to do. Um, so yeah, it's always always uh, interesting having that conversation, trying to explain it all and stuff. Uh, I found just the easiest way, just, you know, hey, you know, pop on YouTube, watch a video and stuff and uh, kind of explain it that way. But, yeah, it's cool. I enjoy it. I did this as a passion growing up, and uh, I was fortunate enough it turned into something. So I'll take it and uh, just enjoying the road while I can. This weekend, my wife is going to be uh, pitting me in the Nitro Buggy class, uh, so it's it's always a good time being able to do it, you know, as a family and en- enjoy the hobby together. Um, you know, she grew up in the industry as well, just like myself, and uh, it's cool uh, cool to have her here. And we make a we make a good team, and you know, when the time comes, we're able to uh, go out there and uh, make it happen and do our best. Who do I feel is uh, the best racer here? Uh, I'm going to have to say myself. I, I think at this level, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your ability and your program. And uh, know that when the time comes, you know, you have you have all the tools to be able to make it happen. Great to, to spend some time there with the Phenom as you take a look at him. Uh, considered one of the fastest, most naturally talented racers in the world. And great to have him out here at Visions with us. Pretty cool. I mean, when you see a number one ranked driver in the world come out here and volunteer some time to help out, this is going to be the sportsman e-buggy A-Main coming up here next. But I'm always impressed with that. You know, I mean, these are guys that don't have to do it, but they remember when they were there and come out here and, and help out some of the sportsmen as they're going to have their A-Main. Yeah, sportsman e-buggy, here's our lineup here for our A-Main for these guys. This is going to be a seven-minute race. It's going to be Dylan Bontrager starting first, Nicholas Logan starting second, Boomer Wheeler starting third, Michael Forrest fourth, John Cayley's fifth, Taylor Janda sixth, Brad Langley seventh, Bucky Bachman in the eighth spot, Frank Columbia in the ninth spot, Jason Moore will be starting, Ian Moore, I should say, will be starting in the tenth spot, Jason Moore in the eleventh spot, and Francis Sozing rounding out your top twelve. And taking a look at the overhead there. We're off and underway here for this one. Oh, oh, oh. All sorts of carnage. I believe that was Boomer Wheeler that got caught up there in that one. Boomer developing some fans just one day ago for no other reason but because of the name. Trying to get this one off and running. couple of players out oh. front. And, man, was sitting in third place there. Got up on the tube and eventually rolled over and needed some assistance. And we'll see if Dylan can have a better outcome here. It was in the nitro category, and it flamed out on him twice. It was leading, looking really good. He's been solid all weekend long, probably right on the cusp of maybe starting to enter some of the open events. Yes, absolutely. You're right. He's uh, he's in that kind of that gray area, maybe a little faster than uh, than you want to be for sportsmen, but maybe doesn't feel quite confident or fast enough to be in the open division. And that's a tough spot to be in for sure, especially when you attend a race like this and uh, trying to, discover, to figure out which class you need to be entered in. Got some good battles going here midfield right now. Bontrager out front. Nicholas Logan in the number two spot. Janda, Bachman, Forrest, Kayleys. Oh, trouble there. That was Michael Forrest getting spun around. Here they come back around on that right-hand side. Bontrager already out to a 4.7 second lead. Logan in the number two spot. Janda in the three spot. Bachman fourth. Ian Morey up to fifth. Now, Ian Morey. One of our bump-up drivers from 10th on the grid is already up to 5th place. Yeah, great run. He and both Jason had a good run there of finishing 1st and 2nd in that B main. Oh! Fortunate right there. Landed back on all fours and goes for another ride. Loses a spot this time. Oh, oh. (laughs) just about took out Gord there. Ty's dad (laughs) out there corner marshalling. Bontrager going to be still out front. Logan in that number 2 spot. Oh, more trouble here. I believe the blue car there, I think, is going to be Jan. No, Jan is there in the yellow car. Here they come back around onto the front side. There goes Bachman and Janda. Taylor Janda, winner from last year. 
Ian and Jason Morey both moving forward very quickly, both sitting in fifth and sixth place after coming out of that B main. And it looks like now Ian Morey trying to work his way up past Jan to not quite close enough here. Bachman stretching out just a little bit on Janda as he's trying to close the gap up on Nicholas Logan in second. This is Logan we're following here in the red, white, and blue. There's yeah, Bachman. How cool with that for father and son to uh, to get on, on the podium here after coming out of the B main. That would be amazing. Oh! I believe that was Ian Morey that uh, tagged the tube. Got spun around there as they work. Oh, hard hit there. He was coming for the inside line. Just took it a little too far inside. Who put that tube in the way? 355 left to go here in this one for our sportsman E-Buggy A-Main. Oh, nice pass there off that left-hander down the straightaway and right back at him. How about that? Great racing here. Quick tag and another pass. Two, three wide there for a moment. Ian Morey going for the two-for-one special there, going all the way now up into the number two spot, I do believe. Out of the B main. Dylan driving away. Dylan with a nice 12-and-a-half second gap over second place. Logan going a bit wide there. Bucky Bachman move up. Here comes Taylor Janda. So Ian Morey, your bump driver, up into second now. 13 seconds back from your race leader. Somebody getting tangled up over there. Not sure who that was. Jason was keeping Ooh. up with Ian. Oh! oh, just barely made that double there and flipped it over. Oh, Jason Morey, who was right there with Ian. And again, a big moment, uh, but not able to keep up with Ian. Ian, as you mentioned before, charging up to second. And Jason falling back down to eighth now. Yeah, tough luck there for Jason Morey. They come back across the line. Bucky Bachman up into the number three spot. Taylor Jand in the four. Logan dropping back to the five spot. A great overhead <laughs> shot of the track right there. It is so cool. They, they hit the tubes, slows them down. The car behind them hits them, slows them down. Everybody just keeps charging. 220 left to go here in this one. I believe this is going to be Taylor Jand. Or we're following here the number four car sitting in fourth right now. Janda started sixth on the grid. Yeah, winding this one down here with just two minutes yet to go. Bontrager out front with a huge lead, but the battles back behind him here for second, third, fourth has been pretty intense. Yeah, that was Michael Forrest there. Nicholas Logan unable to make that double Forrest doubling over the top of him there, so he works his way into the top five now. Yeah, Forrest and Sosin were uh, in the thick of it in the Nitro battle, a little bit deeper down on the field here. Only a minute 30 left to go here for these guys. Forrest bumping up here just a little bit into the fifth spot. Sosin still in seventh. Bontrager out front. Ian Morey with a great run out of the B main, starting off tenth here up into second. And just one minute to go in our sportsman e-buggy, A-Main. All trouble there for somebody right before the big double on the right side. Back to that battle here for Nicholas Logan. That may be Francis Sozing there trying to close up on him. Boy, Nicholas having some trouble over that double. Two laps in a row, maybe three laps in a row, and able to do that little double there. Oh! Oh, no! What a save. Crossing lanes there. Uh... Off the jump, always a recipe for madness. 30 seconds to go here. Dylan Bontrager is still going to be out front. He's got an 11-second lead over Bucky Bachman in second, Ian Morey in third, Taylor Janda and Michael Forrest, your top five. Again, uh, just love the imperfection here of this race as positions just constantly change back and forth. Only 10 seconds left to go. We'll see if we can find Dylan Bontrager on the track. There he is right there. Green and pink. He's going to go one more time around. Yeah, got to the stripe there just ahead of the clock. So one more time around here. Dylan Bontrager having a great run 
with a 13, now 14 second lead over second place. Should bring this one home after leading in the Nitro category and having a flame out. Had a huge lead there as well and had a couple of flame outs. Was not able to get it done. And there we go. He done it here in E-Buggy. Dylan Bontrager taking that one. Ian Morey taking second. Bachman taking third. Michael Forrest Ford, Taylor Janda in the number five spot. And in that seven-minute race, Dylan Bontrager, the only one to go 15 laps. Wow. That is a solid effort for him, yeah. Uh, He's getting close to bumping up there to play with the big dogs. As we take a look at our final results here in the Sportsman E-Buggy category. Yeah, Dylan Bontrager, another big win there for him. Ian Morey taking second. A fantastic run for Ian coming from 10th on the grid. The bump-up driver all the way to second. Bucky Bachman third. Michael Forrest, Taylor Jan to round out your top five. Followed up by Logan Sosing, Jason Morey, John Cayleys, and Frank Columbia. Good battle here. Nice size class there. Boomer Wheeler, unfortunately, tough go of it here in the A main after having some success here off and on throughout the weekend as well. Once again, some highlights here from our Sportsman E-Buggy A main as everybody got off and running. Yeah, no shortage of action inside of this one as we anticipated. Always a lot of fun to cover the Sportsman. We'll take a quick break here one more time, and we'll be back on the other side with some great racing here at Mid-America Outdoors. Connect with the Wild is about off-roading with your buddies. Connect with the Wild is about going to Moab and conquering new challenges that you didn't think were possible. Ultimately, Connect with the Wild is about enjoying the outdoors in your vehicle as best you can. We're treating it like we know it's something special that everyone will remember. And once again, we welcome you back here to the 2023 RC Racing at Visions Off-Road. This brought to you by A-Main Hobbies and HPI Racing. We appreciate all of our sponsors. Also supporting sponsors are Tinkin, VP Fuels, Team Associated, and Lifetime. Thank you very much for everything that you do. And without them, this would not be possible. Beautiful overhead shot there. And one of our young guns has been very impressive here this weekend. Unfortunately, struggled in A-Main number two, but actually picked up a win in his heat race one day ago. Just at the young age of 12, he uh, he did make the show. He bumped in in 2022, ranked 19th in the U.S., and we had a chance to spend some time with young Philong Wen. Hi, my name is Philong Wen, and I'm 12. They usually call me Yoda Bump, and I'm from Louisiana, and my main sponsor is HB Racing. And usually I've been racing for about four years. 
Lately, I have been to big races and drove, driven with top guys in the world, and I have been like very happy to drive with them and nervous. Well, just have fun. That's it. As you can see, I drive a stick radio, and it's different from everybody else. The reason that I drive the stick radio is because the regular radio, I couldn't reach the trigger or the brakes. I do this racing with my, with my dad, and I feel happy and thankful that he does it for me, and that uh, we're having fun, and that's all it's about. I think the best driver here is probably the Dakota fan or Y Mayfield. Maybe test one, but I think the Dakota fan. Perfect. <sighs> you did great. That only took like 20 tries. Yeah, but that's okay. You should see me sometime, Fee. <laughs> That is great stuff, man. We love having him here, and as we talked about, grab that heat race win, and uh, really cool for somebody like Ryan Mayfield, a, a highly ranked world-class driver, to walk over and shake the young man's hand. And uh, You know, the veterans love to see the sport change over, and the young guns come in here, and at uh, 12 years of age, he's already playing ball with these guys. He's going to be a tough one to beat. Oh, absolutely. A little changing of the guard there, you might say, and it was... Uh... I, I love his honesty. Fee's honesty as a, as a young kid, especially when Scotty interviewed him at that rest, last race. He said, what do you have to say about that race you just won? He said, nothing. I got nothing to say. <laughs> the innocence of a babe, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, Here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> he did think uh, about it for a minute, though, and he gave Scotty some good answers. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, yep. it's good stuff. Well, we're, we're winding good. things down here. We have a couple of races left. Of course, all A-Mains pretty much from this point on. Another E-Buggy A-Main. This will be the open division, so a lot of our invite drivers will be playing ball here. This is a high-level race in terms of talent for sure, including Ty Tessman. And the Phenom Dakota Finn will start off in the second position. We'll see if he can grab a win here. It would be his first of any kind here at the Visions event. He's been scrapping, though, and certainly very capable. However, Ty Tessman has been on fire here today. Caden Fuller, Spencer Rivkin will also be inside of this one. Born Horse, who was just in the thick of it. And Mayfield, of course, grabbing a win just a couple of moments ago. So good stuff coming our way here before this one is over. Yeah, these guys get a couple laps. This is going to be a lot of these guys, not a lot of them. Most of their uh, last chance get on the track. Dakota Finn, obviously uh, everybody that we've interviewed so far, when they ask who's going to be the guy to beat, it's going to be Dakota Finn. Well, here he is out of Angola, Indiana. The Nitro uh, Roar National Champion here for the United States this year for 2023. He has been on fire and hasn't had quite the weekend, I don't think, that he was hoping to have here in Visions or that anybody expected, but... Uh, We'll see if he can do it here in the e-buggy class. Yeah, and uh, as we take a look at our starting lineup here, I documented a number of those guys. I saw one car. It looks like it's going again now. But, uh, yeah, talked about the top five guy, five or six starters there. Mason Fuller, Jared Wiggins, Brandon Rose, and Philong Wynn, who we just featured a moment ago, all inside of this one. Ethan Mechanic uh, was scheduled to be inside of this one along with Adam Drake. See if he uh, if he makes the call. So a stacked up field here in the open e buggy. We should also have open nitro a main coming up here, and of course we have our third and final invite a main. So some big time races yet to come here before this one is done. Yeah, this is going to be a good race to watch, and I'm sure a lot of these guys. Heading into that third and final invite race, they're using this right here. Obviously, they want to win this. There's some money to win here, too, as well. But they're using this for kind of a final test session to get uh, any final uh, adjustments or tire changes or anything out of the way before they head into the uh, the final invite, which is their main focus this weekend, obviously. Just an absolutely gorgeous day here at Mid-America Outdoors. We're in Jay, Oklahoma, just outside of Tulsa. Big money on the line here. We've been talking about it the entire time. Everybody lining up for this A main here. An E buggy, open E buggy. Getting resorted here to get within the lines, I guess. Maybe hedging just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ty Tessman going to lead us out with Dakota Finn right there behind him. 
Only a seven-minute race here for these drivers for our e-buggy division. Green and flag flies. Here we go, man. Yeah, we're Clock off. Clock is running. Oh, trouble in the back. Jared Wiggins getting caught up in that one. Looks like Ty Tessman leading us out here. Dakota Finn in the number two spot. Pretty clean start for our front runners here. Tessman sliding up high Ooh. there just a little bit. Might be learning here. Maybe the, the track has changed just a little bit. Have to get a groove on for that momentum into those turns and prepare for that car to slide just a bit. And I did not see there. Rivkin made a mistake. I didn't see if he got a little bump and a little help with that from behind or if that was a uh, mistake on his own. But Rivkin dropping back there into the number seven spot. Ty Tessman out front. Dakota Finn going to be right there behind him. Finn looking phenomenal with the e-buggy here this weekend. Yeah, he is keeping pace with Ty Tessman. No question about that. Matter of fact, closing the gap here just a little bit. They got Caden Fuller there behind him in third. Joe Bornhorst in fourth. Of course, Caden Fuller, he uh, surprised us all with that TQ in round number three of qualifying for e-buggy, open e-buggy earlier this morning. Oh, Ty, Ty, Ty Tessman getting a bit wide. Dakota Finn looking over the inside. Not quite close enough. Tessman racing for near 20 years out here, feeling the pressure from the number one ranked guy in the world. However, he is no slouch coming in here ranked number six. So a couple of top world players going at it here in this E-Main A, I'm sorry, A-Main E-Buggy. Joe Bornhorst in the mix as well in the number four spot. Ryan Mayfield in the five spot here. 525 left to go. Dakota Finn. Just patiently following him right now, and I got a feeling that uh, Finn just kind of trying to test the waters out, see where uh, see where he can possibly make a move, and trying to maybe rattle Ty Tessman just a bit into making his own mistake to make this uh, this pass easy. Yeah, I don't know if Tessman's the guy you want to idle behind here today because, man, he has just absolutely been on kill. Done a great job with the Nitro car, of course, finishing up in second after starting 13th in that second A main, winning the first A main. He has a groove down, and we've talked about these cars. Oh, Small little bobble there out of Fend. And if he's not careful, he's going to get past Caden Fuller, by the way. That is Caden Fuller. We've been talking about Mason the entire day, I feel like. But Caden Fuller now threatening Dakota Fend. Yeah, Caden, is uh, he has been on fire with his e-buggy as well here this weekend. The HB Racing J Concepts driver as he heads back around here. Caden Fuller, by the way, one of our bump and drivers in the Nitro category won the second open heat race that got him uh, bumped in to the invite category. Down the back stretch they go right now. Ty Tessman trying to stretch out his lead just a little bit here. Dakota Finn in second. Yeah, the top three spreading out here just a little bit now. Seven-tenths between our leader and Finn. And then it was a half second between Fend and Fuller, but now a little bit larger gap. And then a little more than a second back to Joe Bornhorst. Ryan Mayfield, who started off in sixth, has moved up one spot. The big mover right now is Ethan Mechanic from the 11 hole up into seventh. Yeah, good run for Ethan here in this one. Ethan, of course, our final bump-up driver in the Nitro Division from the Open class into the Invite class. Only 3.30 left to go here in this one. Ty Tessman. Looking strong out front here. Dakota Finn in the number two spot. We have to give props to uh, to our executive producer who just walked in with pizza, by the way. That was our pay raise for the day. Hey, that's right. We're going to feed you here. That's right. <laughs> Good stuff, man, for sure. As we watch this A-Main here, and great battles going on. Ty Tessman still out front. Dakota Finn there in second, keeping pace. The split here, just about two seconds. And then a second back to third place in Caden Fuller. Special thanks to Brandon Rohde. Yeah, two and a half minutes left to go here in this one. These guys uh, kind of settling into their positions. No real uh, wild action up front anyway. Ty Tessman, Dakota Finn, Caden Fuller, Joe Bornhorst, Ryan Mayfield. Oh, Tessman oh. completely sideways, hit that hole, completely redirected the car. Of course, he gathered it right back up because of who he is, but it was a moment to say the least. Well, here he comes back down through the center section. Two minutes left to go here for Ty Tessman. 
Testman down the front stretch. Dakota Finn going to be 1.6 seconds back from him right now. Caden Fuller still in third. A fantastic run for Caden. So Caden's already got a $1,000 check from going from open uh, nitro buggy to the invite nitro buggy. If he finishes up third here, he's going to take home another $400. Nice. Good weekend for the young man. And this one isn't over, so who knows? Boy, I just think Ty Testman is on here this this weekend. He's going to be a tough guy to beat, man. I'm really curious to see. I just don't uh, I don't have the results from our heat races in front of me right now uh, from one day ago. I'm curious where he starts in that final A main. Clearly has a shot at the overall on that five grand. Looking to win this one here and pick up some money. I think a uh, thousand dollars here. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it looks like our open class is a thousand dollars to win. It's a nice little. Uh, added on top of uh, what he's already made for winning the uh, first open nitro or uh, invite nitro main. Yeah, 1500 bucks in his pocket already. Oh, look at that, man. That was a beautiful back it in, slide it through that left-hander move. Great anticipation. To remember each and every turn and what you need to do before that turn to get through there at speed is also very impressive. Thirty-five seconds left to go here in this one. Joe Bornhorst up in the third now. What happened to Caden Fuller? Fuller, I believe, is out of this race now. Oh. He what has fallen happened? Fallen like a rock down to the bottom of the field after a spectacular run up until just about the last minute. A oh, heartbreak there for Caden Fuller. Perhaps one of the best uh, runs he's had with some of the best in the world. And he was running right up there with him, and now he is out of this race. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. We'll have to see. Maybe Scotty can find out for us. Well, if nothing else, much like Katie Roxbury uh, said before, at least he knows he can do it now. I mean, he just ran with world-class drivers. He was all over Dakota Finn there for a moment. And there it is. Ty Tessman is going to take the win here. This one, Dakota Finn coming around for the number two spot. Here comes Joe Bornhorst coming around for the number three spot, followed up by Ryan Mayfield. And there is Mason Fuller. That's going to do it. Open e-buggy. So Ty Tessman, your race winner here in this one. Great battle with world-class drivers. We love it no matter what they're driving here to watch them come out there with their expertise and put on a show. Ty Tessman, a tough player here today. Dakota Finn was on him there for a while but couldn't get it done. Uh, unfortunately for Caden Fuller, who spent most of the race there in third place, right behind Dakota Finn, was not able to fi finish this one. On the throttle, Joe Bornhorst will take over third place. Ryan Mayfield bumped up into fourth because of what happened to Caden Fuller as well. Jared Wiggins, Spencer Rivkin, Ethan Mechanic from the 11th spot up to eighth. Brandon Rose, fee long win there. Started 10th, ended 10th. Adam Drake, and then the heartbreaker is Caden Fuller, who ran around the entire race there pretty much in third place. So great effort for him that ended up short. Let's get it over to Scotty. All right, thank you very much. We're here with Ty Tasman and Ty Electric's only to kind of the support class for the big show, but still a win to win. Well done. Yeah, it's still it's still just as hard to win. Uh, my car again ran great all weekend. Had some really good pace later in qualifying, and just kind of just tried to maintain the lead in, the, in this race. Um, it was a little bit dustier in the line than the nitro cars, so it got a, a little bit crazy sometimes. But I was able to keep it, it together and uh, just keep a comfortable gap to Dakota. I uh, just couldn't be happy with how the weekend's going, how my stuff's been running, uh, how the tires have been working. Just everything's been going really, really nice this whole weekend. Any change in tires from the last Nitro to this e-buggy? Any change at all? No, I've been running the same tires all day. I'm uh, making a fresh set actually for the last Nitro, so hopefully we have the, the most grip possible. All right, best of luck. you got one more to go. Thanks. I just want to thank all my sponsors again, uh, family for all the support through the years, and most importantly, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, best of luck to you. Thank you. All right, he's the points leader going into the invite division for Nitro, so he can show, he can do it. He fended off the battle from Dakota Fenn, so now he's got one more, maybe, when the big check here at Visions. Back to you, Ken and Mike. Thanks, Scotty. And once again, a great run there as we uh, recap, show you some of the highlights there from that A main and open E buggy. We'll take a quick break here. Some big racing coming up. Don't go away. We still have our open A main for the Nitros. Stay with us.
Uh, my name is Ted Tesman. Uh, I'm 30 years old. I'm from Cypress County, Canada. I've been racing for 18 years. Uh, I drive for X-Ray Racing. Um, so I won the World Championship in 2014. Uh, I had multiple national championships, uh, but the chance to be able to win the Visions race again is pretty cool to be able to come back and fight for that again. Um, it's it's a pretty awesome whole event where it has like the racing, everyone everyone's racing kind of at once. Uh, to be able to race in front of spectators is really awesome, and then also uh, the pressure of racing for money, which, which, which we don't really have that many many options to do or opportunities to do that. Um, so being able to work so close with my dad, being the mechanic down in pit lane, I'm super blessed to be able to have someone like that that cares about me more than just on the track. Um, he's always looking out for me, for my best interest. Uh, being able to have someone consistently with you at the races, I think, is very important and a very big benefit on my end that I can count on him. We kind of know each other, how we're going to react, uh, what to expect out of each other. Um, just have someone consistent like that when you're racing at this level, every little bit counts and just having one less thing to worry about, like if, oh, but is my pick guy going to fill my car up? I never have to worry about that. I can always count on him to do a 110% job. Um, so I think it's a really big benefit and I'm very blessed to have him there. Uh, so who do I think the best driver is? It's really hard to say. Um, obviously Dakota's been on fire lately. Uh, Mayfield's always a contender, especially in heads-up racing. He's very, a very fierce competitor. Um, but you have so many guys like Spencer now. Um, it's just so many guys to try to pick one each weekend is very difficult, but there's definitely a few, those few guys that I kind of look at and um, maybe compare to and practice more than some other people. Uh, so it's going to be interesting with the heads up racing. We don't get to do that a whole lot other than main events um, at normal races, but having three mains here and then also the three or whatever qualifiers to compete in the mains is going to be really cool, I think, to be able to race that closely that many times in one weekend. That is uh, Brittany you hear talking in the background, by the way. She is in the booth with us, and uh, she is quite a resource, I will say. She was last year. She is again this year. She is also the lovely wife of Mr. Mike Garrison, who's sitting right alongside. She is switched on, knows what's going on, and we love having her in the booth. She's hired. I don't know what you're getting paid, but I'll hire you. <laughs> we'll give you a piece of pizza. How about that? Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> good stuff here. Uh, as we were just taking a look at the starting order, I've been talking about that, wondering where they were going to start and what the points were. So that's what Brittany was working on. I thank her for that. Ty Tessman will start in the sixth position in our final A main for the invite category, right behind some guy named Ryan Mayfield. They are number one and number two in the points. Ty Tessman with three points, Ryan Mayfield with five points. So it will be on at the very front of that race right off the bat. And, of course, a lot of talent back there behind them as well. I believe Spencer Rivkin is third in points with a total of six. Mason Fuller with a total of eight, if um, if I didn't miss something in, in here as well. So great battles here against some great drivers. We'll look forward to that third and final A main for our invite category. In the meantime, we have our open nitro buggy. This will be a much longer race, our longest, uh, our last long race, I should say, at uh, 30, minutes in, 30 minutes in length. Yeah, and our lineup here is going to be Spencer Heckard starting first. Just missed out on the invite spot. Spencer Klein starting second. Reggie Tung starting third. Joshua Vigil fourth. Braxton Culley fifth. Brian Givens sixth. Garrett Martin followed by Shelby Parker. Graham Hill, Jacob Vigil, your top ten. Followed by Santos Rodriguez starting 11th. And Barry Rowe the third starting 12th. These drivers taking the track now for their warm-up sessions. And as you were talking about, coming up next, right after this race, is going to be our final invite race, and it's going to be an exciting one for sure. Another driver to keep an eye on, as you said, Spencer Rivkin. He's only got six points, so he's sitting third in points right now going into this one. But he starts second. So that uh, that could be a good spot for Spencer Rivkin to get started. Of course, Mayfield and Tessman are going to be starting right there together. And then Cole Ogden, who's a little bit further down in the points, He's going to be starting that number one spot. Oh, these guys are already hammering on one another on the right-hand side, and the race hasn't even started yet. <laughs> hey, you see the turn marshal there. Settle down. Settle down. Sprayed the water, uh, sp sprayed the track down just a little bit here, a little bit of moisture in a couple of areas here to try and uh, slow down some of the dust out there on the outside. Grip up here just a little bit on the inside. About a minute left in this warm-up session. So a big category. These guys just at the uh, the verge of 
you know, making it up there to those world-class marks. And you, you talked about a couple of the uh, – was it Spencer Heckett, I think it was, that was so close in there. Was, uh, was it Ethan Mechanic? Yep, Spencer uh, Heckett and Ethan Mechanic. Yeah, that, that were battling. I mean, so the fourth – the fourth bump-up driver, there were there were four bump-up drivers. Three of them were all winners in their heat race one day ago to get up into that invite category. And then there was a fourth bump-up that was based on time, lowest elapsed time and points. And, it, I mean, they, they spent a little time on that one. They had to get the calculators out, take their shoes off, and you know, use the fingers, use the toes, and, and figure it out. It was close. They sure did. It was uh, Spencer Hecker and Ethan Mechanic. They were tied on points. It came down to time. It was a time tiebreaker. And... Uh, Ethan Mechanic made it into the invite show. Spencer Heckett will be starting first here in Open Nitro Buggy. But as we said, uh, if Hecker can start out front and get a clean start and uh, run away with this one, he's going to be taking home $1,000 for the uh, open class win. You'll see uh, 30 minutes. That's a long race. So any one of these drivers really has the talent to be jumping up front there. So should be interesting to see as these drivers all lining up on the front straight with the pit crews. Yeah, and we've had some strange things happen here where cars that were out front looking really dominant, very comfortable, and then, you know, have some sort of issue. Maybe it's a flame out. Who knows uh, what the case may be. So, uh, as in all forms of motorsports, it's never over till it's over, man. Anything could go wrong out here and probably will. Well, just the way it goes. That's right. That's just racing for you. you. See the grid lined up there, ready to rock and roll. Once again, the driver's up top there. I believe a uh, 11-turn track, if I'm not mistaken. A number of double jumps in here as well. They'll refuel these things uh, again. We'll get them all topped off here and ready to go for this 30-minute event. And, of course, that will uh, also incorporate a couple of pit stops along the way, which is always interesting. Getting set Crew to members. go. Yeah, ready to set them down. Set them down. It's on here. Let's see how this start works out for oh. these guys. Oh, one car tumbling. Two cars tumbling. Not too bad, though. Spencer Hecker going to be out to that clean start that he was hoping for early on here in this one. I believe Spencer Klein may have dropped back a few spots, if I'm not mistaken. It is amazing to me how many times uh, you see how many of these cars tumble and go for a big ride like that and end up back on all four tires. It's really astonishing to me. I'm not going to lie to you because every time I do it, it never happens. <laughs> it always ends up just upside down. But yep. great stuff here as Heckard, uh first one across the stripe there, followed up by Klein. Reggie Tong with a shot at that one here. He's in the top three as it sits right now. Braxton Culley and Brian Gibbons here early on. Yeah, good start for these guys here in this one. Heckard out to an early lead early on here. Already a one-second lead over Spencer Klein, the Kyosho driver in the number two spot. Reggie Tongue in that third spot. Braxton Cully in the fourth spot. Givens in the five, followed by Vigil, Parker, Martin, Hill, Rodriguez, Rowe the third, and Vigil. Oh, a little bit deep there. Braxton Cully got into that tube, and I uh, thought Brian Givens might have an opportunity to make the pass, but was not quite close enough to get it done. Well, looks like now Spencer Klein trying to chase down Spencer Heckert. They head on to the right-hand side of the track, down the backstretch, into the dropaway. Be a nice consolation prize. And he wasn't able to bump up after being so close into that invite class, but if he could walk out of here with a grand, that would uh, put a smile on his face, I'm sure. Back around to the front side here. Fast lap on the track. That time by 27-8 for Spencer Heckert. Spencer Klein with a 27-9 fast lap. Everybody else in the 28, 29, and 30-second lap range for their fast laps. Track with a fair amount of changes that uh, that hole that developed over there doesn't seem to be getting much worse now. It's kind of found its spot. And maybe that's because most of the drivers are trying to stay out of it or drive around it, whatever the case may be there. The step down, I'm wondering if they actually adjusted that overnight because that has not been near of an issue as it was there the first couple of days. So right there is what I'm talking about. So maybe the uh, the dirt crew there adjusting that just a little bit because it was pretty violent on the cars there early on on the weekend. Oh, oh Spencer Heckard. darted that one. 
Catching a uh, kicker there on the face of that one. Good save for him. Spencer Klein to be still right there in that number two spot. Reggie Tuck in the three spot. Braxton Coley and Brian Givens rounding out your top five here. Here's that battle now. Oh, Braxton Coley trying to make it inside. Oh, oh boy. The glove's off, baby. I tell you what, that's Reggie Tung and Braxton Coley right there. Reggie Tung uh, using some it, NFL moves there. Maybe a stiff arm right back to Braxton Coley. Right he goes, He's been yeah. in the thick of the fight a couple of times, right? Probably won't intimidate him too much. Wow, flicks that thing right in there. Here they come back around. Braxton Coley tried to set him up last time right here. He's going to try it again. Oh, oh, wow. I'm not sure how that happened. But he started <laughs> off on the inside, flew over the top of him, ended up on the inside again. What a crossover move right there for Braxton Coley. We may have to get an instant replay of that one. That was pretty wild. It might be worth a double instant replay. Slow-mo replay. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. Well, as you can see, Braxton Coley now making that move over to the number three spot. Starting to stretch out that gap on Tongue. And he's going to be trying to catch his way up to Spencer Klein in the number two spot. Wow, he is driving away now from Tongue. Put some distance between. Look how far much further ahead he is in already. Yeah, that last lap. Once he got clear Reggie Tongue there, he's now going to clicked off his fastest lap of the race, 27.499. You asked for it, Mike. Here it comes. Let's take a look at this replay. Watch this as they come into this double section here. Braxton Coley, the green yellow. He starts on the outside, jumps across. Over the top of Reggie Tung, lands on the inside and makes the move right there. Oh, wow. Reggie went from inside out. He went from outside <laughs> in, and, uh, and it just worked out perfectly. <laughs> well, maybe not for Reggie, but no, it worked uh, out. Nobody yeah. crashed. Let me put it that way. Well, there you see Braxton working his way through some traffic now. Braxton Coy chasing down Spencer Klein. They are going to be 3.7 seconds apart right now for the number two spot. Spencer Heckard out front with a 3.1 second lead. It's still anybody's race here with 25. Oh, oh trouble here for Braxton. What a save. 25 minutes left to go. By the way, hats off to our production team here, the camera uh, camera crew, and, of course, the people inside of the truck giving us those instant replays. Great work here all day long. We've had some great racing and, uh, and some spectacular coverage. A lot of times I yell at these guys. <laughs> Credit due when credit is due. They've done a great job here today for sure. A little trouble there in the infield. I'm not sure who that was. Looks like that may have been Rodriguez. There's Reggie Tung in the number four spot. we got Joshua and Jacob Vigil out on the track here. Joshua in the five spot. Jacob in the sixth spot. In between them, there's Brian Givens. Yeah, and again, the consistency out of the drivers here, clearly evident uh, as the bar is raised from the sportsman category. And that's where I think like a Dylan Bontrager is is getting really close. His consistency, his ability to put together the fast laps is really equivalent, certainly with some of the back markers here, if not mid-pack guys. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Spencer Heckard, he's, uh, he's showing right now that obviously he has what it takes to, uh, to get out front and stay out front here. And this one, oh, comes into pit lane right there, missing the uh, corner marshal. He is in and on pit lane there. He's got Camden Lime pitting him in and out. And there's Spencer Klein. That's Spencer's dad, Roger, right there, making a pit stop for him. Spencer's in and out. Braxton Coley will be making his pit stop here, I'm sure, either this lap or the next. So you have about um, six and a half, six minutes, between six and seven minute mark here. They've been on track. There goes Braxton Coley. Coley into the pits now. Reggie Tung in fourth. Joshua Vigil in fifth. Givens in the sixth spot. Twenty-three minutes left to go. Digging hard here. Curious if a couple of those guys came in here a tick early. I'm curious to see if they're going to make it there at the end. I mean, with just tinkering with that six minute mark, uh, six to six and a half minutes, I was like, ah, it might be a tick early. I was trying to do a little mental math there myself. A few of those guys, uh, like you say, did come in a little bit early for uh, if they're pushing the fuel mileage. Maybe they're not. Maybe they uh, they feel confident, but 
Might be a little close for comfort. I believe this could be Shelby Parker we're following around right here, if I'm not mistaken, the Miyako driver. Coming down the front stretch here, indeed it is. Spencer Heckert still out front with a 5.5 second lead. Spencer Klein in second. Braxton Coley in third. Brian Givens in fourth. Reggie Tung in fifth. Joshua Vigil. Graham Hill. Jacob Vigil. Santos Rodriguez. Garrett Martin. Shelby Parker. Barry Rowe the third. That left-hander there still developing some ruts there on the outside, but it looks like down on the race line, pretty nice. That hole upsetting that car there just for a moment, put him into a bit of a tank slapper, but uh, gathered everything back up and kept going. Here comes Hecker down the back stretch, your race leader, the S-Works driver. Back around through the infield. Spencer Klein still in second. Yeah, I was just going to say the level of concentration, uh, no different than somebody that's in a big car, a big road car, or off-road car, if you will. Uh, just absolutely dead nuts on, on the pipe there the entire time to stay focused and not make any mistakes. And for a 30-minute race, I mean, that's uh, pretty intense. I mean, it's easy to, to blink your eyes for a brief moment or let your brain wander for a brief moment and, and make a small mistake that could cost you everything. It's also, on that same note, it's also easy not to blink your eyes. And uh, by the end of that race, your eyes are hurting and watering pretty hard. <laughs> Something to that, for sure. Oh, a little bit sideways right there. Got it gathered back up. Eckert has been spot on here. He's really driven a great race. Has a nice size lead because of that. At seven and a half seconds over Spencer Klein. Spencer about four seconds ahead of Braxton Cully. The battle right now, Reggie Tong and Joshua Vigil, separated by just three tenths of a second. These drivers, yeah, all uh, separating themselves out, like you say, Joshua Vigil, Reggie Tong. That's going to be our closest battle right here. Reggie trying to hold on to that number four spot. Joshua going to be right there behind him in the five. Vigil's tough, man. Oh, oh, big moment there for Reggie. It's going to cost him a spot. Oh, oh, another hard hit for Reggie. But he get it going, and now he's stuck, loses another spot. A lot of racing time in here, just underneath 20 minutes. Third of this one done. Yeah, as they're working their way around, Spencer Heckard out front. Winner of this race. Going to take home $1,000. And somebody there uh, tagging that, not able to clear that double there as well. And again, Reggie kind of going back and forth there, just struggling here for a couple of laps. Putting these cars through their paces for sure. Heat of the day out here. Reggie working his way back down the front stretch here once again. Everybody starting to spread out again here. Yeah, Spencer Heckert, our open classes, a win, $1,000. Second place, $600. And third place, $400. So Braxton Coley still looking at a possible $400 uh, paycheck here today. Vigil up there into fourth place after getting around Reggie. Still showing Reggie there in fifth place. So I'm not sure if a couple of those cars that got past him when he was doing his stunt driving were possibly <laughs> a lap down. But he did not fall a couple of more spots there. Really has not fallen another spot since Vigil got past him when he initially hit the tube. No, look at the timing scoring, though. We may have trouble here for uh, Spencer Klein. Spencer Hecker working his way around after the pit stop. Bugs flying around here in the booth. The door's cracked open a little bit. And one of them crawling around on Miss Brittany over here. <laughs> An exciting moment here in the booth for us. 
Spencer Heckard still out front. Braxton Coley in the number two spot. Now Joshua up in the third. Don't know what happened to Spencer Klein. Possibly a flame out maybe in pit lane. I knew he, uh, I believe he came in for fuel. Maybe they couldn't get the car back started or something like that. He dropped back to fourth. Reggie Tung in fifth. 17 minutes left to go here in this one. Yeah, I might have pushed it right to the very end there. I mean, an 8-8 eight eight would be 16 minutes, so that would definitely be pushing these things if they could go that far. Uh, again, keeping an eye there on Spencer Heckert and go back over there. They get that thing refired and send it back down. There goes Heckert onto the right-hand side of the track there. Down the back stretch he goes, dropping down, coming into some traffic here. He has a 17-second lead, so a pretty comfortable lead here with uh, 16 minutes, 25 seconds left to go. This is what happened, though, in our sportsman buggy. Everybody kind of spread themselves out. We didn't really think there was a whole lot going on. Then 10 seconds to go, and somehow they all ended up together. So I think if those guys are pitting around the six-minute uh, six mark, it would be a four-pit stop race and would get them to the 30-minute to the mark. Should be safe in there. Ooh. Yeah, Heckert working his way back around here. I mean, the point being is I don't think you can do it on three. So I, I just don't I just don't see that happening. I mean, even, you know, no way they're going to go nine minutes, you know, in, in, on a on a full fuel load. That would only get you to twenty seven. Yeah, especially not on this track. Here's the battle right here between uh, Spencer Klein and Joshua Vigil. Both of them in the red, white, and black cars. Oh, I believe that was Joshua taking a tumble there. Spencer Klein in the Kyosho car. Joshua Vigil in the Techno car. Down the back stretch he goes. 15 minutes left to go here in this one. We are halfway. Eckert's been out front since... Early on here, starting off on the pole position, has yet to relinquish that lead. Has a nice 21-second lead over Braxton Cully. Has really put together a nice race, but as you talked about, just front half done, and that pays nothing. Yeah, as they work their way onto the back side of the track here. Trying to reel them in a bit. Last time by, Vigil had a 28.1, Spencer Klein a 27.7. Klein in that number three spot now. Joshua Vigil still back there and fourth, followed up by Reggie Tung to round out your top five. A little deeper down in the field is Givens. Jacob Vigil, Graham Hill, Santos Rodriguez, Shelby Parker there inside of the top ten. Yeah, Braxton Coley up at the number two spot. He's only got a two-second gap on Spencer Klein right now. 345 left to go. Those two drivers, I think, have raced together quite a bit over the years, especially in some of the RC Pro Series events. Joshua Vigil just ahead of uh, 13 seconds ahead of Reggie Tung. Brian Gibbons, Jacob Vigil, Graham Hill, Santos Rodriguez, Shelby Parker, Barry Rowe the third, and Garrett Martin, your running order here. 30-minute races, a long time to go here as we talked about. A number of pit stops along the way, a couple of spots being traded right there. A little bit past the halfway point. Everybody trying to stay focused here. Your hands start doing weird things. Fingers start doing weird things. By the way, we talked about uh, Fee Long Win a couple of times using the joystick radio, and uh, finally we had a reason for it after listening to that bit on him. His fingers just weren't long enough to work the brakes. So what do you do? You find uh, another way to skin the cat, right? I don't know if you're allowed to say that anymore, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he, there, uh, no, no cats have been harmed in this broadcast. That's right. <laughs> Uh, feel on wind, definitely uh, stick radio, wheel radio, however you want to do it. He uh, He's getting it done, that's for sure. And there's a good view, exactly what we're talking about. So on the, uh, if you're new to RC, you're looking at Spencer Hecker, your race leader here. As you can see, his right hand is working the steering wheel, right and left. 
And that trigger that he's pulling, when you pull it back towards you, that's your throttle. When you push it forwards, that's the brake. There you see he's on the brake. Obviously, he's on the gas more than he is the brake, but uh, back and forth he goes. Another great shot. That's Reggie Tung right there. Great shot of him working the uh, throttle and the brake. On the steering side as well. You can see the steering wheel a little bit. It looked like he was talking as well. Did you see that? It did. It did. <laughs> he's talking to himself. I'm not real sure what the deal was. You know, they did an interview with Paul Wolf. A phenomenal. Oh, big moment right there. Oh, I believe that was Joshua Vigil, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and he flames out. And another one going for a big ride. Yeah, they had Paul Wolf up on the uh, up on the desk there for Speed Sport 1 here who competes in Ultra 4, and he was telling us the story. He had lost all radio communications as far as he knew. He had ripped the radio antenna off. However, the mic was wide open. Everybody could hear him. He just couldn't hear anybody else, oh. and he was talking all the way through the race to himself. So uh, <laughs> pretty funny stuff there, how it goes, but... Everybody's got their own thing. By the way, he did win it. So whatever works for you, brother, just stick with it. Wow, coming off pit road and stuffed it in the tube. Yep. We mentioned that before. Oh, no, it flamed out, it looks like. Another flame out there. I'm going to say he went upside down, was there for a while. He's probably got some air in the line. Then get that uh, air out of the line. Maybe, maybe not. And you're talking about tire wear. Look in there. It was a little hard to tell, but those tires looked pretty worn. Yeah, these things make some solid power, and they have a bit of weight to them. They're buzzing these tires hard. I'd love to see what these things look like uh, at the end of one of these 30-minute races. Getting down here, uh, two-thirds of this one in the books. I believe that was young Caden Fuller out there. Yeah, another flame out there. That may have been Santos Rodriguez. Looks like trouble for Spencer Klein as well as he's dropped down to the seventh place spot now. So Braxton Coley, Reggie Tung, second and third here in this one. Yeah, still a huge lead here for Spencer Heckert, putting together a great effort here in this open nitro buggy in the A main. Reggie Tung moving up into third place. And we'll get it over to Scotty. You've got more on Vigil. Uh, Joshua Vigil having some trouble there, coming up on some back traffic. Says he got collected with a back marker, broke the front end of the car, and unfortunately that Vigil is done for the day. Ah, so that's what happened there. What a tough go there coming off of uh, Pitt Road. And Scotty had talked about that before. There's a, there's a, a bump down there towards the bottom. Maybe that one bit him. Not real sure as we watch our leader here once again continue on. Impressed with the efforts here out of Reggie Tung, who was down a little bit deeper in the fifth or sixth range, now picking his uh, picking his way back up into the top three. Yeah, and Brian Givens not out of this one either. He's only 7.6 seconds back from Reggie. Nine minutes left to go here for these drivers. Going to be coming up next, our Nitro Invite final race of the weekend here from Visions RC. Really nice line there for Heckert. That's pretty much uh, what the invite drivers are doing. Of course, he was right there with the lap times of the invite drivers. This, as we've documented before, oh, so close to bumping and About as close as you can get and not make it. So very talented for sure. You can see the line there a little bit tighter, right down on the bottom of the turn. Definitely running the short way around. Nice on the inside there of that left-hander, steering clear of the ruts and the bumps. One of the cars that flipped over there right in front of him. Uh, does not phase them at all. They run a little bit wide, maybe by design, to uh, show a little bit of respect for the race leader. He dives right down underneath them. And, again, just keeps hitting those marks. Yeah, that's going to be Braxton Culley right there behind Spencer Hecker, but they're a lap apart now. So Braxton in second, one lap back from your race leader of Spencer Hecker. Reggie Tung in third. Brian Gibbons fourth. Jacob Vigil. Graham Hill. And they Graham make Hill. it look so easy. Yes, they do. Graham Hill working his way up at the number five spot now. Well, it looked like that thing lifted up the inside rear tire, which would give a good indication of just how well that chassis is working as it transfers the weight over there onto the left side. Uh, picked up that inside right rear tire. Plenty of grip there in that particular section of the track and the suspension doing everything it needed to do. Yeah. 
7.20 here left in this one. We talked about the uh, the damper program for a number of these drivers. They do not have shims inside of them like a big short course off-road car. Somebody inverted there looking for a little bit of assistance to get back over. However, um, you can get a blank uh, piston shaft, if you will, piston to put inside of that damper and, and drill it as you would prefer. You talked about Jared Wiggins, and one of the reasons they call him the wizard, he's very, very good at that, has the, a preferred way he likes to do it. It can be done a lot of different ways as well, depending on what you're looking for. There's also some flaps that are available that allow the uh, the fluid to blow through them at a certain rate of speed. And, of course, different viscosities of fluid. So there's a lot of opportunities there alone just in the damper program. Yeah. Not, oh, man. Not to mention, on top of all of that, uh, one of the most common changes you see, guys, is also making springs, too. Different, uh, yep. different rate of springs and all sorts of stuff. 6.15 left to go in this one. Spencer Heckert. Coming in for a final pit stop, it looks like. Yeah, coming in for that uh, one last stop. He's got Camden Lime there, his pit guy. In and out he goes. Yeah, right at that 24-minute mark. So that seemed to be the uh, the ideal window there, about six minutes. Everybody should be safe there. Depending on where you're at in traffic, you probably hedge that, uh, you know, half a minute to a minute one way or the other. Back around, back to the front side once again. Braxton Coley still in second. There's Braxton Coley in and out for fuel. His dad, Jared Coley. Heckert just launching that car. I mean, just pitching it sideways into that left-hander. Well, the final five minutes of this race here. Spencer Heckert, I believe, trying to put a lap right now on Reggie Tung. Reggie in that third place spot. How about that? Lapping the entire field with the exception of second and third as it stands right now and all over third place. Yeah, this may actually, uh, looking at the laps, this might be the second time he's lapped Reggie. Uh, looks like he is a uh, lap ahead of Brown. Yeah, that is true. He's on lap 52, Reggie on lap 50. Yeah. He is really moving here, Spencer Heckert. Locked in here for another four and a half minutes. Look at a thousand dollar paycheck. Yeah, so based on the uh, number of laps here, Heckert has lapped the entire field, has a lap on Cully as well, which uh, Cully 32 seconds behind. They're running 28 second lap times. Makes perfect sense here. Absolutely. Really putting one together. 4.15 left to go here in this one. Heckert, Cully, Reggie Tongue, your top three. Givens, Jacob Vigil, Spencer Klein. Heckert working his way back into the infield right now with 3.55 left to go. Braxton Coley in second. Reggie Tung in third. Givens in fourth. Vigil in fifth. Spencer Klein in the number six spot. Hill, Parker, Rodriguez. Joshua Vigil. Once again, we thank A-Main Hobbies and HPI Racing for their, uh, their support here as we are coming to the close of this 30-minute open nitro buggy A-Main. Heckert has been the class of the field, to say the least. Based on this performance, maybe they should have given him a provisional into the end. Right? Yeah. Right? One provisional. Yeah. Four bump ins, one provisional. Yeah, absolutely. Three minutes left to go here in this one. Two fifty-five left to go here. Spencer Hecker going to be out front. Braxton Coley in the number two spot. Reggie Tongue in third. Brian Givens in fourth. Jacob Vigil in fifth. Spencer Klein, who we saw running up front there. How about that, man? Got in the pipe there in that left-hander, and it hiked up the inside front tire that time. Just heeled over, got a bunch of grip, and... Cool stuff, man. 225 left to go here in this one now. 225. 
Eckert working his way down the front stretch onto the right hand side of the track he goes Braxton Coley still in second a good run for Braxton Coley he started fifth on the grid here and this one worked his way up to second yeah if you take a look at that Jacob Vigil how about him starting off in 10th and worked him worked his way into the top five so passing a number of cars there congrats to him this thing now is down under two minutes Hicker just driving away, man. Definitely in a groove, no question. A minute 40 to go here for them right now. Not a whole lot of action at this point. Spencer Klein and Jacob Vigil. That happened right there, I believe. Was that Reggie? Yeah, I believe uh, so. Right there in front of Reggie. He's currently in third place. Count them down, ladies and gentlemen. 60 seconds left inside of this 30-minute race. Starting now. We'll see if Spencer Heckert can hang on here for a couple of more laps. Should be able to bring this one home. Certainly has given no indications that he can't. Should have plenty of fuel in him. Came in with six minutes to go. Look at these guys, nose to tail. Oh, oh, Braxton Coley getting in the back of Reggie Tongue there. That is second and third. They're a lap apart. Yeah, Braxton in second, by the way. Reggie in third. Braxton with a lap on Reggie. Actually looks like almost trying to put another one on him. It's been behind him here for a couple of laps as the clock is winding down here. Just 15 seconds left. We'll see where the uh, where the checkered flies at in relation to Spencer Heckert if he'll have to put together another lap. Made it just at there the it line. Is. How there about it that? Is. Timed that one up perfect. He did. He did indeed. Oh, and the battle right there, I believe, between uh, Brian Gibbons and Spencer Klein. So Spencer Heckert going to take this one. Open Nitro Buggy, a main win, start to finish for him. Braxton Coley going to be coming around in that number two spot. Reggie Tongue, your top three here. Brian Gibbons, Spencer Klein, Jacob Vigil, Graham Hill. Nice little whip there at the end. So the 30-minute moto is done. Open Nitro Buggy A main is as follows with Spencer Heckett putting together an incredible race there. Total of 63 laps. Puts a lap on the entire field including Braxton Cully. Two laps on Reggie Tongue there in third place. Reggie uh, pulling one together there as well. Brian Gibbons, Spencer Klein inside of the top five. Yeah, Jacob Vigil, Graham Hill, Shelby Parker, Santos Rodriguez, Joshua Vigil rounding out your top ten. And, of course, Barry Rowe the third, and Garrett Martin stepping out of that one early with uh, with some problems there. So, well, Ken, coming up next is going to be our uh, our final race. It's the big one. Yeah, the big A main. Of course, we'll uh, we'll get things all put together there. Before we talk about that, though, Scotty is down there with our winner. All right, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate. It. We're here with Spencer Hecker and Spencer. A solid run, dominating run there in the open uh, thirty minute final. Yeah, it was good. Uh, my my stuff's been good all weekend. I've just been making silly mistakes on my part, so that's on me. But yeah, that was that was a good run. Didn't make any mistakes finally, so I'm happy with it. You, you answered my second question I was going to ask already. Some tough luck and things like that. That's all part of racing. Obviously, you know, you were one of the favorites to go in and bump into the, the invite class. But still, walking away with a $1,000 payday, that's not a bad day at the racetrack. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, obviously we wanted to get into the invite and do some racing with the big boys. But it doesn't always play out in your favor. That's racing. And, uh, yeah, stoked to get a, a fat check. So. Absolutely. And speaking of that check, Joey from the dirt, he's got $1,000 in his hands for you. So a well done, open 30-minute A-main win for Spencer Heckard. Well done, partner. Very, very good job. Well done. 
All right. So we will uh, see you again on the podium. But again, great job. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys. All right, man. Well done. Spencer Heckert, not the uh, full day he wanted to be able to bump into the invite. But, man, $1,000 check. That'll sure change the attitude and put a smile on your face. Back to you, Ken and Mike. Thanks, Scotty. Yeah, congratulations to him, man. Really, really good racer. He really strung one together after uh, getting so close to that invite category. Okay, we'll take a quick break here. We'll be back with the final race of the day. We're going to bring the invites out here. Who's going to win the big money? Stay with us. We'll find out in just a moment. Welcome back to 2023 RC Racing at Visions Off-Road, sponsored by A-Main Hobbies and HPI Racing. Appreciate all their support. Once again, Tekin, VP Fuels, Team Associated, and Lifetime, also associated sponsors as well. We appreciate that. One race yet to go here, ladies and gentlemen. It is our third and final invite, A-Main, and the top two players here, are going to come down to a couple of big dogs. Ty Tessman has been absolutely on fire, won the first A-Main, started 13th in the second A-Main, worked his way up to second. He'll be squaring off against Ryan Mayfield. They will actually start right uh, right in line with each other, fifth and sixth. So Ty Tessman with three points, Ryan Mayfield five points, and of course you can't help but think about one year ago when things got a bit heated. Ty Tessman won the last race of the 2022 Visions event, but that win didn't come easy. And Ryan Mayfield let him hear about the tactics. Well, we Let's see who finished third. Let's see who finished third. It's a battle. Let's see who finished third. Wiggins getting by Tebow on the last lap for third. Tebow left by who knows? Four position. Spencer. All are finished. Mason Fuller both. These two professionals are just that, professionals. They've since reconciled and are happy to move on from the incident. There's some tempers and stuff, some, some stuff that uh, was pretty exciting for the viewers, I think. I kind of got in his face and uh, probably went over the line a little bit, but um, it was, we're racing for a lot of money. Um, you know, there was a, a lot of emotions flying around and, uh, you know, I was just kind of waiting there hoping that he would at least acknowledge the situation and be like, hey, I don't know whose fault that was. And I respected his wishes for trying not to come in contact with him too much, because that's what he asked for here. But eventually, um, he did come over. We had a, a conversation. We discussed, we apologized to each other, and kind of just made made good again. So that did go on a little bit longer maybe than other times, but it, it did, definitely didn't affect how we raced on the track. It's just in the pits, we were kind of different from each other, just for a few races until we finally figured it out and discussed it, sat down, and kind of cleared the air, I guess you could say. You know, it is what it is. You know, there's when there's money on the line, which there is every weekend we race, um, but for whatever reason, when there's an actual cash prize on the line, emotions are high. So uh, we've worked it out now. We know we we talked it out. We were in Spain and we uh, we 
I pulled him aside, we had a little conversation. As far as it comes this year, we're not holding any grudges against each other. Everything is um, forgotten about and we're moving forward. That's kind of how the racing industry works is you, you uh, maybe have a problem with someone in the one race, but by the time the next race comes, the time is healed all wounds and you just kind of start fresh and try not to hold any grudges and uh, just race the guy like you would anybody else. Um, we're all good and uh, we're here to race again. Try, uh, hopefully that doesn't happen again, but if it does, it is what it is. As Ty Tessman said, Time heals all wounds, or does it? Well, they will be put to the test here, starting nose to tail with each other. Both of them in the hunt for the overall. We don't want to eliminate some of the other drivers that certainly have a shot at this as well. Spencer Rivkin, he's going to start off second and has a total of six points. Comes in here third overall as it stands right now after two A mains complete. So. He's going to have a real shot at that as well. And Mason Fuller will start a little bit deeper behind Dakota Fend. He'll be in the eighth hole and currently has eight points. So Joe Bornhorst also nine points there. So uh, we'll see how things shake down here. It, uh, again, it's going to be a, a long race, uh, 30 laps if I'm not mistaken here, I believe uh, is what we had there in the first two. So a little bit of warm-up time here for them, and they're already stacking cars up. Yeah, this is going to be an exciting race, no doubt about it. And like you say, got to keep an eye on. They're leading the points right now. Ty Tessman is your points leader. Ryan Mayfield in that number two spot. Those two guys starting together. Obviously, they say they, uh, you know, they put everything behind them from last year and everything. But once again, you know that's got to be in the back of the mind just a little bit. And Ryan Mayfield isn't the happiest guy right now after a few little tangle-ups in uh, A1 there. And uh, they may have a little, had a little contact there in A2 as well. Here's so, a look at how they will start off. As you can see, Cole Ogden will start off. At the beginning of this one, Cole Ogden with 20 points over a year ago, finished up third overall and was second in uh, the second A main. So Cole Ogden can certainly get it done. Spencer Rimkin is the one I think we really got to watch here. He's got a great starting spot, comes in here third overall in the points. Be fun to watch him, see if he can get up to the point and then let the cards fall where they may fall. Adam Drake, B. Long win. Ryan Mayfield there inside of the top five. Ty Tessman, of course, as we documented, those two guys with the least amount of points. It is low score at the end of the day. The Phenom there in seventh. Mason Fuller, Jared Wiggins, last year's winner in the ninth slot. And Joe Bornhorst with just nine points back there in the 10 hole. Ethan Mechanic starting 11th, followed up by our bump up drivers, Camden Lime, Brandon Rose, Caden Fuller, and unfortunately not on the grid here. And this one going to be Jared Tebow, who left this event ill earlier this day or uh, earlier this morning. So unfortunately, we will not see him out there. So I'm with you. Racers have really good memories when it comes to racing incidents, and uh, I applaud those guys for saying that they put it behind them, and Ty Tessman might have put it behind him. <laughs> Mayfield, uh, I promise you it's still in the back of his mind somewhere. So if something does flare up, it will immediately have an impact on this because there will be no love lost instantly, and uh, retaliation I can see being a part of that program depending on just how bad it gets. But... At the end of the day, you've got to race them as clean as possible. Why? Because that's the fastest way around the track, and that's how you're going to win. And both of those guys realize that. So to get in a fighting match out here with the cars is not going to do either one of them any good. No, you're absolutely right. And like you say, Spencer Rivkin right here, he's going to be starting second in this one. I've got a good feeling Spencer Rivkin could very well come away with the win here in this main if nothing goes wrong right off the start. I mean, he's starting in a great spot. He's got Cole Ogden right ahead of him, and Cole could pull away with this one as well. Cole hasn't had exactly the weekend he's looking for, but he's got the talent for sure. And once again, Scotty down there in the middle of the front straight away. He's been busy all day long. Get us up to speed. What are you thinking here, Scotty? All right, thank you, guys. We are down here where it's all going to happen. Two mains in the books right now. Three guys looking like they got a chance for the overall win. Ty Tespin, Ryan Mayfield, and Spencer Rifkin all poised for a chance to win the big money here at Vision. It's all going to be decided here in final number three. Who's going to be able to do it? We'll find out here in just a few minutes. Back to you, Ken and Mike. Okay, so thank you very much, Scotty, as we take a look at our players up there getting ready to go. There's Mayfield as well, standing right in the middle, and uh, we'll take a look at our players. There's Phenom. Ty Tessman there. 
Yeah, Ty Tessman there as well. Everybody running here. Joey Christensen, the man behind building this racetrack here at Mid-America. Here we go. Off and underway, our final invite, Nitro Buggy AMA number three. This is going to be an exciting one. Trouble already for Camden Lyon right out of the gate here. And this one, Nicole Logdon out to a good clean start. He's got Rivkin right there behind him. And Drake up at the number three spot. Nice clean start here on this opening lap. Everybody in line here. We know that it's difficult to pass, but they will stay close here and try to take advantage of anybody that makes a bobble. Well, keep a lie right now on Ryan Mayfield. Ty Tessman, they're right on the back wing. A fee long win over the right side. They go. Fee goes a bit wide there. Here's Adam Drake in the number three spot. Thought Ripken, uh, well, thought. Uh, you know, you just don't know how it's going to shake down, but Ripken not right on the rear wing there of Ogden. And get up there and get that lead early on and check out would be a great opportunity. However, Cole Ogden thinking, uh, yeah, I'm not so good with that game plan. And as they're working their way around right now, as it sits right now, unofficially, I think Spencer Rivkin would be your overall winner. But we got 28 laps left to go here in this one. So Ryan Mayfield and uh, Ty Tessman, they got to start making their moves and start moving up as quickly as possible. They got Fee right there ahead of them and Adam Drake just ahead of them as well. And Ryan Mayfield looking for a way by Fee. Long win right there. Not able to make it happen. Fee holding strong here. Mayfield up the inside. Not going to be close enough. Mayfield's going to try and set him up onto the back straight. Dive to the inside. Into the drop away. He's got Ty Tessman all over his back door. Oh, oh no. Huge Trouble wreck there. there. Up in the front oh, of the Oh, no. Mayfield, Tessman. Tessman getting beat to death here. Wow. In the midst of all of that, Mayfield somehow managed to get away with it. Wow, that was complete chaos up at the front of the field. And that was Joe Bornhorst there, unable to make the double. He goes from, I believe, six to almost dead last in that one. Unbelievable turn of events right there. So Rivkin in the number two spot. Mayfield moves up a bit here. Ty Tessman, he has got his work cut out for him here in this one. Oh, there he gives Mason Fuller a little bump there. You see Ty trying to make quick work here. 26 laps left to go. There's Ryan Mayfield working on Fee Long win. Is this a good time to bring up the fact that Ty Tessman started 13th in the last A main and finished second? Yeah. I mean, he could certainly get up in there. He's proven that. Mayfield now all over the back of Fee Long win. And he's looking for a way by right now. And Fee, I tell you what, Fee is unbreakable at this point. Only 12 years old. Here comes Mayfield. Mayfield's going to try and set him up right here in these S sections. Not going to be close enough that time. Oh, gave him a little bump there. Fee goes sideways, unable to make the double. Mayfield goes by. That's exactly what Mayfield needed right there as he's now set his sights on Spencer Rivkin. Yeah, and, uh, I don't know if we'll get a chance to see that one again, but uh, it really looked to me like Fee kind of opened up the door there, maybe just the smallest of bobbles, and Mayfield was right there. A little bit of contact there, and uh, that just kind of finished it off, but that was not a Mayfield bullying his way through there. And Ryan Mayfield right now, look at Fee. Fee has not let him go. Fee says, I'm coming back for you, Ryan. Yeah, good for him. I mean, he's got plenty of speed, no doubt. And he felt the wrath of a Mayfield in the heat race one day ago and never bobbled there. Here they come onto the right-hand side of the track. Spencer Ripken in second. Cole Ogden is out to a five-second lead here in this one. Ogden not necessarily in the running uh, with points for the overall, but still Ogden uh, looking to maybe take home a check for at least a main event win. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on that as well as Spencer Ribkin, I thought, would stay right on the rear wing of Ogden. But clearly, as you say, five seconds away there. And Ogden and Ribkin really drove away from that pack. But then with all the shenanigans that went on back behind them, it created a little more gap. Uh, Ribkin, um, I don't know if Ribkin was part of that or not. I thought he was clear of it, to be honest with you. But with Mayfield only a second behind, it would indicate that he might have been the instigator of that moment. Well, and as you know, they worked their way around last time by, it was a 26-7 for Rivkin, a 26-9 for Mayfield. Here they come back this time, 27 flat, a 26-6. So that time, Mayfield makes four-tenths of a second up on Rivkin. These two drivers, both from Arizona, they race together a lot. So if I'm looking at points over there, uh, the results, it looks like Rivkin at, uh, would have the overall lead right now with Mayfield just behind him. 20 laps left to go. So it's showing Tessman, Mayfield, and Rivkin. 
uh, as it stands right now, as Ripken was three points back of Tessman coming into this. 20 laps left to go here. This battle right here is going to start heating up a bit. Ty Tessman is back up into the number four spot. So as you talked about, Ty Tessman working his way back up in there. There's the points as they run right now. Ty Tessman would have the overall with 65 points. Mayfield with 63. Ripken with 62. So Mayfield right now needs to get past Ripken and possibly catch up to all. Here comes Ty Tessman now. Look at this, Ken. Ty Tessman, after that huge pileup, has caught back up to these guys. I got to say, I think Ty is probably the fastest man on the track right now. 26-3. I think he just proved that. He laid one down, no question there. 26-7 for Ribkin. But that 26-3 is the class of the field here so far. Yeah, everything just working exactly how Ty needs it here in this one. The X-Ray RC America driver coming back around here. He looks comfortable with that car. Ripken trying to hold off two of the absolute best. Both of them really fast. Tessman trying to get around Mayfield. He is applying a lot Ooh. of pressure. Just a bit of a bobble there out of Ribkin. He's going to open up the door. Mayfield stuck the nose in for a second. Ribkin right now, he has got the pressure on him. He's got Mayfield and Tessman behind him. Mayfield, now he's trying to offense and defense here as he's trying to make the move on Ribkin, but hold Tessman behind him. Here they come down the front. Street. A three-way battle for the overall here, Ken. Yeah, these are the three players, no question, and completely inverted, by the way. Ooh, and Ty checked up right there. I don't know if you saw that, but he had the opportunity to put a wheel in and send Ryan flying, and he did not. Well, I saw the same thing out of Mayfield. In fact, I saw him really hit the brakes and unload the rear end of the car to stay out of Rivkin at one moment. So everybody uh, really driving respectfully oh, here. Wow. They all dive into the pits at the same time. I don't know how that, uh, how that was planned, but... Uh, all of them coming in and out there. Did anybody get out in front of the other? That's what. Oh, uh, Mayfield the flamed is. out. Ryan Mayfield has flamed out. Mayfield headed back into pit lane now. Oh, he will be absolute livid. Trouble there for Ryan Mayfield as they try and get that car back going. He is back on the racetrack now. So that is going to knock Ryan Mayfield out of this one and any chance of an overall. Well, we'll see. I mean, a lot of racing yet to go. Anything could happen to those top two guys. Let's get more from Scotty. Uh, thanks, guys. As they came into the pit, it was so tight. 65, 63, 62. Advantage Testament over over Mayfield and Ripken now. With Mayfield having problems, that's going to mix it all up. That should continue to keep Ty Testament out front. The pit stop for Ty Testament at a 6.71. Cole Ogden, our leader, a 6.16. So leading that battle. Of course, unfortunately for Ogden, not in the hunt here in terms of points. Yeah, right now we're looking at Spencer Rivkin. And what Rivkin needs to do right now is somehow hunger down, catch Cole Ogden, put Ogden between himself and Tessman if he wants any shot at this overall. As it sits right now, Ty Tessman would take the overall with the 65 points. Rivkin has 62 points. So he needs a little luck on his side and a little bad luck on Tessman's side. 12 laps left to go here. You got to hand it to Cole Ogden. He got out front early on, and he has just said see you later from these guys. Only 1.9 seconds ahead of uh, Rivkin right now, but still flawless race for Cole Ogden. In terms of having a great race here, uh, congrats to Joe Bornhorst starting off in the 10th position. has picked up four spots there. Camden Line starting off 12th. has picked up a couple of spots as well up into the top 10. Oh, it's was... all about this overall and a $5,000 payday at the end of it. On For Ogden, uh, he's hoping to pick up a $1,500 check for winning this A-Main. It would be a great, uh, great day here for Ty Tessman if he can hang on for sure. That was trouble there for Ryan Mayfield. Mayfield may be out of this race completely. In not the in... thick of it once again, but uh, does not go his way, talking about Ryan Mayfield. Well, there's Mayfield right there. He's back on the track. One lot and possibly take home some cash himself. Tessman's lead uh, extending here as he bumps up another position. He gets around Adam Drake, 
and extends that lead now. Total 67 points to 62 for Spencer Ribka. So Tessman just needs to bide his time here. Be smart about what he's doing here in traffic, and I'm sure the seasoned veteran understands all of that. And nine laps left to go here in this one. There is Ty Tessman. It's certainly got- worth mentioning that he finished second overall a year ago as well. It I is. mean, he was right there. And as, uh, as I recall, it was changing on the last lap last year. Yeah, he's on his A game here in this one. He's trying to close that gap up there on Ripken. As of right now, Ty has got the overall wrapped up, even if he finishes in the third place spot. Seven laps left to go. Oh, it was the leader, the leader. Ogden just had a big moment. We saw a car spinning there in the big double on the right-hand side, and it turns out that was Cole Ogden, the HB Racing driver. So Ogden now throwing away the lead. That allows Spencer Rivkin up into the number one spot. Ty Tessman now going to be moving up into that number two spot. Here they come onto the right-hand side. Indeed, so Ogden into third now. Yeah, and in terms of points, they stay about the same because Tessman and, uh, and Rivkin both pick up a spot here. It'll be a nice day for Spencer Ripken, who's been panning around in the front as well. Getting down to it, just six laps yet to go. Coming down to it, five laps to go. And no point, Tessman's got to know this at this point, man. No point really pressing here, aside from trying to pick up another 1500 bucks. But it's one of those situations where you run your pace and... If the guy gives it to you in the front, much like Ogden just had a moment, then you want to be there to take advantage of it, but you certainly don't want to risk everything to get it either. Well, we just saw there the fan votes, 53% going to Ty Tessman to win this thing overall. I think for Tessman, the concern is going to be Cole Ogden back behind him because Ogden's going to be hungry to get back up there to the front and try to win this thing, but has no bearing on the overall. You're absolutely right. And look at this. Ogden has closed the gap up on Tessman now. Four laps to go here. They're going to cross the line. This time only three laps after this one. Adam Drake. Let's talk about him a bit there. Adam Drake up at the number four spot. Joe Bornhorst from 10th on the grid up in the five spot. Bornhorst looking at a potential third overall as well here. Winding this one down here, as you talked about, coming around with two to go. About a 14-minute race or so is what the uh, previous A main was. First and second place right there. Final two laps. Tessman now closes the gap a little bit on Rivkin. Has gapped himself a bit from Cole Ogden. So no pressure behind. Here they come one final lap to go. Cross the line this time. They're going to get the white flag this time by. Down the front stretch, they go one final time. Ty Tessman chasing down Rivkin. Rivkin right now has just got to hope for something to happen here with Ty, but Ty looks strong. I tell you what, I think this is uh, this is Ty's race. Ty's been hot all day long, no question. Won the first one. Came from 13th to second in the second one. Started off sixth in this one, right up there into second. And he almost is right there to win. Oh, the my God. And he gets wow. it. Wow. He steals the win in the last turn, picks up another 1500 bucks. He wasn't playing anything safe. Last lap, I'm throwing down, man. I am absolutely going for it here and thinking I'm not going to crash. I mean, worst thing that happens is I finish second. But he steals that win away. From Ribkin, at least, is what we're thinking as we look at the stripe. If we look at time and his scoring, it says Ribkin has crossed first. So we'll wait for an official call on that. Wow. Visually, it looked like Ty Tessman got it. I'm not real sure where the loop is inside of the dirt there for the transponders. According to time and scoring, it says that Spencer Ribkin was first one across the stripe. And the difference was point one five four. <laughs> yeah, man, that was that was wild. A page out of the sportsman's book. <laughs> I was going to say that was something wild right there. What a turn of events. 
We're gonna tell you, we gotta take a replay there of that uh, crossing the finish line for sure. Because, like you say, judging as you're, if you're a driver up at the driver's stand, looking at that finish line line, I mean, that's a tough call right there. Yeah, Tussman's gonna walk out of the thing, and he got it. Of course, uh, eventually they'll see where that timing loop is. But exciting stuff there. And once again, we'll go back down to Scotty. He is with our overall winner. Great weekend. All right, man, a man, it came down to the last race. You know, the point structure here makes it very, very exciting, and it came down to the final few positions, and congratulations, you are the overall Visions champion. Thanks. Um, just want to thank all the, the crew for everything making this whole event happen. It was a really awesome race. Um, it's obviously better when you win, but it's really a cool event, and you couldn't be happy with how my stuff was working all week. Uh, I was like to win the last one. I tried for it last last corner, but I also was trying to conserve and make sure I made the whole time because fuel's always been close. So I'm happy with the win. Would have been nice to get the last win, but you know what? Spencer drove really good. The last race was kind of chaotic, and I'm happy to finish second in that one. So yeah, just happy with everything, how everything went this weekend. Um, yeah, just thank all my sponsors again for all their continued support through the years, through the thick and thin. Um, my family for all their support and love through the through the years. My wife back home, and uh, most importantly, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Last year, obviously, we had the, the major drama and everything like that. You guys had overcome that. You finished last year with a win in Final Three. You kicked it off with a win. This has just got to be a, a great feeling. Yeah, for sure, to be able to, to put that behind us and race. I mean, we all race really good uh, at the front. So having a clean race, no drama is always a good thing on our part anyway. Um, yeah, just happy with everything's gone. Um, kind of get some momentum for the rest of the year, hopefully, and see where it goes. All right, well, well done. Congratulations. Joey's got a big old check here for you, Ty. All right, Ty Tessman, your overall invite winner. Excellent job there for Ty, man. Absolutely on kill here today. No question about that in all, right, all three A mains. And we'll get it back right, down we're to gonna Scotty. Cut right to second. Overall, Spencer, this was an absolute duel that you guys all had. Many guys had a chance at this. Take us through that last final. Yeah, I mean, the track was changing a lot. People were kind of questioning what tires they should go out on. Um, I ended up taking an audible, going out on some blue reflexes. I've been running triple Ds in blue all weekend, so uh, track kind of changed. Um, my pit guys down there below, Richard, uh, did an amazing job. The guys here uh, with Jay Concept, Jason, came out, helped out for the tire stuff. Um, cars worked good all weekend, and, um, yeah, I really have no complaints. It was, it was a hell of a race. Ryan had a terrible thing happen in pit lane with the flame out. Um, everyone was super close on fuel mileage. So, yeah, you got to you gotta race till the end and keep, keep it in there and hope for something to happen. You know, you'd hate to see your buddies go out, but it's part of racing. Um, we were having a hell of a battle, me, uh, Ryan, and Ty going out. I know Ty was leading, but he was in third, and he knew he didn't really have to do anything. So it, it was a good race. Um, last year was a pretty pretty bad, disappointing race for me. Um, I'm glad we came back. The guys put on a great race, J Joey and the crew. You guys coming out, uh, changing up the dirt a little bit. And a big shout-out to the Visions, um, American Outdoor Visions event for putting on a good event. So. Take us through that last corner there with you and Ty. Yeah, I mean, I kind of knew where the line was. I know, like, from your guys' perspective, the, the finish line that they drew down was not really the loop. I knew it was actually more of a diagonal um, across the apex of the corner, so I just kind of wanted just to go straight. Um, he kind of got into me a little bit. I, I mean, he basically drove kind of on top of me, but uh, my transponder must have been just a couple inches further than his, so I'll take it. Absolutely. Well done. Yeah, thanks. All right, Spencer Riven. Joey got a big check here for Spencer. He also gets the race win, so that's $1,500 for taking final number three. Well done to second overall, Spencer. And there you go. It's official. He got the big check, man. I'm not giving that one back. No, he's, uh, <laughs> he's taking it. He is taking it for sure. Even if he didn't beat him to the transponder, he was blocking the transponder if Ty <laughs> Tessman was on top of him, right? So exciting finish for us anyways. Great stuff. And once again, we'll get it back down to Scotty. Uh, a tough go of it here. Ryan Mayfield, certainly a player here all weekend long, but laid up a little bit short here in this last A main. All right, we're here with Ryan Mayfield. And Ryan, A number three, it was going well, then just had some tough luck there in, uh, during the pit stop. Yeah, not too sure exactly what happened. I don't really want to blame my pit guy, but... Um... I, it seemed like when you get raw fuel on the pipe after it's so hot, the car will shut off. And when I went back out, um, I didn't have any brakes. So, like, if you spill fuel in the car, it gets on the brakes, gets on the pipe. So it's an easy mistake to do. It is what it is. I, I'm not sure if that's exactly what happened or not, but that's kind of what it seemed like. But, yeah, the car was really good. Um, 
I got a, a decent start and just kind of was trying to pick my way through traffic. And, um, yeah, kind of a bummer. I mean, I don't really understand how I still got third overall, but I'll take it. I mean, um, I figured I, I kind of went back out there after I flamed out and had a couple crybaby laps and just not trying. And then at the end, I'm like, just go get as much as you can get. So I actually ended up passing a couple guys. Um, and I guess that's how I got third overall. So, um, but yeah, thanks to Live RC, thanks to Visions, thanks to, for everything. This is an awesome event. Um, it's been pretty tough luck for me the two years I've been here, just weird things happening. Um, but at least, hey, I got something to show for it this year. Got on the podium. And um, yeah, we'll reset. We got a bunch more races this year. And uh, thanks for everybody watching at home. Thanks to everybody who supports me, my wife, my kids. And uh, awesome event. All right, best of luck uh, the rest of the year, and thanks for coming. Uh, tough luck, but still, way to salvage a third. Yep, thanks, guys. All right. Ryan Mayfield, great racer, one of the best in the world. Had some tough luck, able to uh, salvage a third spot. You can you can hear the disappointment in his voice, but still, these guys at their level of, of competition and commitment and skill, they want to stand on the top of the box. There's no doubt about it. So third for you and I, Savage guys, we're stoked. Him a little disappointed, but still going to take home some cash and a, a good finish here at Visions. Back to you, Ken and Mike. Thanks a lot, Scotty. Great job all weekend long. And, yeah, at that level, man, it's win or bust. That's uh, that's what you're happy with. You don't care about second or third place. It's been a great weekend. Once again, second uh, annual Visions event out here. And, boy, it was bigger and better as we anticipated. Mike Garrison sitting alongside. Yeah, it was a fantastic week. I tell you what, the track was bigger. The turnout was bigger. The racers were, were on it. Some action-packed racing. I think everything just went fantastic. Yeah, certainly had a great time being out here covering all the action. It's always cool whenever you had world-class drivers out here and when they're battling for the big money. Quick shout-out to the entire production crew for a phenomenal job here all day long. They did make one request. I'll give it to them. EA Sports, get in the game. What's that about? I don't know, but it's a lot of fun. For Scotty Ernst, Mike Garrison, I'm Ken Stout. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the 2023 RC Racing at Visions Off-Road.